men on men adult videos as he does sometimes you get a virus and that happens to the best of us it happens to jay two to four times a week so i think he's the best of all he's the winner of the chicken dinner if a chicken dinner is dudes on balconies in san juan having public intercourse with their dads <laughs> hi i hope you guys are doing awesome i hope you're doing amazing i had a bad sexual experience last night but i'm recovering all right it's a movie quote it's a movie quote that's not true i didn't have any sexual experience last night <laughs> as as per the usual uh no i am here today to talk to you about our lord and savior jesus christ and if you don't know there's a story and it comes from a book and that book can be found in the hotels across America. And it is placed by the Gideons. I don't know who the Gideons were, but it starts with G. So I imagine it's guys. And the way that the book was formed is that two guys would go into a Hilton or Marriott or whatever your favorite hotel choice is. And they would go in the room together and one of them would say, ouch, my back hurts. And then the other one would say, well, I've got really strong fingers and I feel the need to do something with my fingers. And then the other one meets the other guys on the, on the single bed. They ordered double. This wasn't on purpose. And there was only a single king size bed. And he goes to, to do what the other one thought he was going to do. And he goes, that's not my back. That's not my back. And then they found the Bible and they, they stopped because that's not of God. You know what is of God? <laughs> hey, Hello. guys, sorry. Sorry, I was late. I was deleting all the gay porn. I mean, all that straight, hot, sexy porn off you. my computer. God, it's crazy. You. There's so much stuff. <laughs> so much stuff. By the way, speaking of gay, uh, Ryan Seacrest is taking over the hosting duties of Will of Fortune. He's a really happy guy. I've never seen him sad. Yeah, I think he's got the Ricky Barton syndrome. I think he's like, you know, he likes the pole suck, but, you know, we just haven't heard about it yet, which is nothing wrong with it. I just think he needs to come Dance. out. Stop beating around the bush. Go ahead and sing wow. your soul. But yeah, Sting, uh, live in the Vita Loca. It was so weird. Uh, Pat Sajak is retiring. And then he, he was I, I kind of embarrassed because he's like, oh, me and Vanna White are a package deal. So when we retire, we'll retire together. And then Vanna's like, fuck that shit. She's going to stay on. She's re renegotiating her contract. But here's what gets I me. I can bang Seacrest. Yeah, but I'm staying. No, secret. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about Vanna White. I was like, I heard about, so she, I thought she was, she's acting like, she's like, I haven't had a raise in 20 years. I was like, you are a fucking pageant win winner bimbo. That's what you were. You push hey, the you goddamn respect, button. Vanna. You push the goddamn that. button on Wheel of Fortune. And before You'll I push the that. button, you just do this. Here's the thing. She said she hadn't had a raise in 20 years. So everybody was like, oh, she must be so poor. She's worth $85 million. She's worth 15 more million dollars than Pat old uh, good Sajak. And as she said, she wants a raise. She gets paid $3 million a year to push a fucking button. At, hey, least that's Sajak, not all she does. at least say, at least say, oh no, she's pushing a lot of other things, a finger into a cracker or whatever. She, but it takes a lot of work to look that. But at least say, Jack went to school like he was a fucking meteorologist and knows how to work the crowd. He knows how to talk to the people. <laughs> Shit, all you do is sit up there and like wear shiny dresses and push a button. You get three million a year. She gets three million. That's amazing. That's for just that's, doing that. Who watches that? Who old still people. watches that? Well, that I do people. sometimes, but I mean, old people usually. Those it's Joe Namath old. commercials, I guess, it's pay blaring. a lot of dividends. You could drop by a nursing home and you hear that shit. Old people screaming out what the fucking word <laughs> old is. Old people burning. Up. Old people burning. Put Let's your hands mess up. up. <laughs> oh, me. But you anyway. know what? You woke up, Jay, you woke up today and you fucking, that was the first news story. So I said, what the fuck is this? I know, I did, no, Someone I, better put her in check. I was, it was, it was actually I what know. happened was, is I was uh, watching Will of Fortune with Big Dad. And he was like, how much is that old Pat Sajak worth? That always asks me how much celebrities are worth. So I look up like celebrity net worth <laughs> and I was looking up. He goes, how much is that old bitch worth? Ben and white. So I looked her up. He's, she's like, he's like, do what? I was like, yeah, she's worth 85 million. Pat Sajak's worth 70 because apparently she married a guy that was a real estate mogul. And because of real estate investments, she's worth 85 million. See, so she, her husband made those investments for her. her how do you know? Because it said on the fucking you celebrity fucking network. You misogynist pig. No, it's you not. Misogynist no misogynist pig. If it's, if it's misogyny for telling the truth, then fuck me silly. I guess I'm a misogynist. <laughs> I'm going to go stand and tell it on a mountain. 
What did Hannah White do to you? Is it Hannah? Hannah. Hannah? Hannah? Yeah. Who's the misogynist? Yeah. All women look alike to you, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I respect women so much. I completely stay away from No, them. but it was, it, I, I, I don't know about, you know, I just feel, I don't watch Will of Fortune, but there was something about Ryan Seacrest. I just don't feel like he's going to bring, they're going to try to update the set, make it cool and slick, like a TikTokery type of thing. And it's going to look, it's going to be shitty. Like when Drew Carey took over, the price is right. I'm not saying he did a bad job, but you know, you're not going to beat fucking old, uh, what's his name? I want to say Burt Baccarat. <laughs> not Burt Baccarat. No, God damn hits. it. Uh, Christ, <laughs> the Bill, what the fuck's his name? You Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, Bill O'Reilly was on there. That would be interesting as shit. I'd love to see Bill O'Reilly hosting Jeopardy. <laughs> like, if he was Bill it. O'Reilly hosting Jeopardy and he said something, he goes, that's something the queers would say. Let's hear somebody that's not gay. <laughs> you, sir? <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, he would never last the day on, on a set with Vanna. He'd be like that sexual allegation before he even got to the goddamn. Speaking building. of sexual, uh, Kevin Spacey's trial starts today in London for sexual assault or or whatever he's in charge yeah. with. Yeah, I hope that I hope that he goes free, whether he did or not. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I love House of Cards. Yeah, everybody uh, that, did. And then all that shit came out. I, I think they they canceled the season, or they probably had a few more seasons left, and then they canceled they killed the rest. Him. I yeah. think they killed them off. They killed him off, which, you know, I still haven't finished. I've only had three seasons in, but I, when I found out that they don't even finish the show, I was like, I can't do all this whipping around, not even knowing, you know. Celebrities are I, so stupid, dude. Like, you get paid millions and millions of dollars to go pretend to be somebody else and like <laughs> on an acting gig, and then you fuck up like that. In his defense, he was trying to touch men in their crotch regions long before he was famous I feel like. but he tried to play but he tried to he tried to play a little slick uh, slick uh slick johnson with that speaking of johnson's because he said uh he what well, never he got charged with it then all of a sudden he came out and he said i'm gay i was like so you waited for you to get charged and then you wanted to use that as an opportunity to tell everyone in the world that you were gay as in like what you were trying to see that excuses it i was gay <laughs> every time I'm not, i did not sexually assault men because i'm gay and they I were gay I pull the same thing every time I, I get pulled over. And you know what? Sometimes I don't get a ticket. But as soon as they walk up to the window, like, hi, I'm gay. Yeah. And Mike doesn't get a ticket as he's wiping his mouth off. Thanks, officer. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, yeah. I, I deserve, I, I really deserve this. Uh, but, but to be honest, I, I, I scream that at, at anybody who walks up to my car window. You know, you got to play the numbers in this dating game. If you're going to, by the way, did you guys some... hear about the rumor that I don't know? I think we talked about it once before that Keanu Reeves is desperate to play a Jedi. In a, in a star wars movie like he i think he'd come out and said he wants to play a jedi master or jedi knight i was like dude that he would fucking fit a hundred percent yeah, oh, yeah he doesn't have to get a haircut no dude he's already got the qui-gon Jin going and then on top of that yeah. he can he could use his john wick training and so when the lightsaber doesn't work you can just pull out some fucking guns and do some kung fu shit that's true yeah i think everybody would yeah. want to see that that would probably save star wars and they need it dude he should um... be a, he should be a jedi master with a lightsaber and then he should use like a blaster gun too so he has both yeah, that's bad ass right there imagine he, has John... that, he has that fingerless gloves and he's keanu reeves so he's gonna wear a suit even if it doesn't exist in the galaxy far away he'll make a suit Did you, it, he always honestly, wears a suit i would actually watch it like it would actually get me to watch a star wars movie again banner uh is it smoky by the way where, wherever you fuck guys yeah, are dude. because yeah the, the uh air quality yeah fuck canada fuck those canadian assholes <laughs> with their goddamn tree bush burning shit no yeah it, actually it's weird we live in kentucky and i'd heard about it in new york and stuff but I looked out like where I live, it's out in the country. I was like, somebody burning trash? Because <laughs> it's because it, it's typical where I live or in the country part of Kentucky. People go out and burn the trash and beat their wives and drink the natural lights and things like that. And I, there's a lot of farmland. Yeah, it's all American. Because we're fucking and, uh, Americans. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, but I was like, oh, is it smoke? Like someone's burning something. It's like, no, it's the Canadian. It's the Canadians are invading with their fogginess. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. shit. Goddamn La, 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 La Paps. Justin Paps Trudeau. Ribbon. Trudeau bullshit asshole you guys think you can get free health care mm -mm. not my not my watch no, that's that smoke is all from the bodies they're burning because they can't save them with the free health care that's what they're yeah. fucking doing the pieces of it's shit weird, they though. did it all we were supposed to take the kids to the pool today and that's not a use vision for me having to poop uh we were actually supposed to take the kids to the pool and i had to be like no nah, we can't do that because the 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 weatherman Sit. Pat say Jack says that it's dangerous to be breathing all those fumes in. And I seen a bunch yeah. of people in Canada were like, I work in that shit every fucking day. That's just life over here. You guys are a bunch of pussies. And I was like, well, fine. This is off topic. Sorry. But I, I got this. Um, I got this like a few months ago. I forgot to show it to you guys. Check Sex this change? shit out. Dude. No, look. What, fucking pain. That, 
Is that from the Star Wars? No, it's RoboCop 2. It's Kane. Oh, shit. That looks weird. It looks like what? one of the square heads from... Um... Well, that's what his mask looked like when he uh, when he broke into the warehouse. He starts shooting that. He goes, he was bigger than you. Oh, there it goes. I can see it better now. Yeah, and then he was like, that kid's like dying. It really sucks, does he? He goes, yes. <laughs> RoboCop's like, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> now... Kane. Kane's bugging me. I love you probably that. got that from Canada, too. <laughs> yeah, they definitely did. By the way, I always thought Thanks, RoboCop, Canada. not RoboCop is two is better than RoboCop one. But Cody and I were having a conversation the other day with my brother. It's like, what sequels are better than the uh, the originals, or at least, yeah. And he mentioned RoboCop two, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. Like RoboCop one is classic for a reason. RoboCop two is good though, but I don't think it's better than Go RoboCop one. Terminator yeah, two, no. I think T two surpasses Terminator, but. I like RoboCop 3 the best. It's the best film, and everybody knows that. If you're no, that's actually like getting a RoboCop cinephile. from Wish.com right there. That's a piece of shit ass movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like going under the sea with a Logitech controller. Who would do something like it's that? It's like making not a me. mermaid black and calling it li li Little Mermaid. What the hell is going on? Yeah, why would you? I can't, yeah, you not idiots. on my watch, buddy. Not oh, on my watch. By the way, I, speaking watch. of shitty movies that I don't want to see, I have to go see Haunted Mansion with fucking Luke Will uh, Owen Wilson. You have to. Yeah, because April wants to go see it. And she's like, I, I, she thought it was coming out Thursday. I'm like, fuck God, no, please. And she's like, well, we should go. And I'm like, God damn it. And I have to go because she went to see The Flash with me and she didn't want to go. So, I, and then I, she was like, oh, it doesn't come out until July 27th. I like, thank God. I've got a little bit stay of execution. I, yeah, I'm just going to get drunk and just like sleep. What week does that come out? Next July, week? It, I think it's July 27th. I don't know. I'll be on vacation. Uh, That's actually the truth. I'll be on vacation. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's July 27th. It's a Thursday. I don't know, um, man. I, I just had no desire to see Haunted Mansion. I, I don't give a shit about that movie. It I thought like the crap. trailer looked good. You thought it looked good? Yeah, it was funny. Mm -mm. What's, what's is that the one? Is it based off the Disney World ride? Yeah, the, yeah, it's the same oh, one. Okay. Yeah, I actually thought it looked kind of funny. Where I think are I just been burned coming from? Because... I washed my butt today. <laughs> it's got to be your dirty crack. Jesus dirty Christ. crack. It's a dirty, dirty, dirty pop. Dirty crack. Uh, no, I, I think I don't know. I guess I got like a PTSD from the Eddie Murphy piece of shit, Haunted Mansion. Katie was saying she hates that too. I remember thinking I thought I thought Haunted Mansion, like the one with Eddie Murphy, was good. I don't I, I don't remember watching it, but I thought it was widely considered as good. I don't I think it flopped. Did it really? Fuck, I, I didn't so. know that. Well, shit. Fuck me in the ass with a spoon <laughs> and a fork mm -hmm. and eat it. And an actual toaster strudel. Sinister Creation says, I need Dr. Chalice and Dr. Loomis to duet all night long from Elm Street 2. Okay, we'll get right on that, Jim. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you say that, though, I think, all night long. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like, too. That's, I, how does it, how does it even... me, baby. Yeah. Drive me crazy. Touch me. All night, all night long. long. Stupid asshole. Turn it off! Watch. What are you doing Turn dancing in your room like that, you stupid asshole, Michael? Go do your chalice. Stop playing with your wiener going through I your drawers can't. like you have things you don't have anything child of the corn butt says yo fellas what's good i dug growing up during the remake surge in the 2000s top five evil dead 2013 texas chainsaw massacre 2003 or titty cunt massacre friday 13 oh, 07 and Jones. house of wax with five in my opinion though 82 i wasn't older. finished you were to today, Junior. Got any more <laughs> brain busters? <laughs> I'm not finished. <laughs> okay, uh, buzz. <laughs> oh no, bunt. B U N T in perfect but. cursive. Got any God. more brain busters? Oh, I as in R, are you going to the mall later? <laughs> buzz. Uh, those are Z's. Oh, those are look like R's to me. And what he's talking about, getting to the point, quick to the point, to the point, no faking. Uh, that's not the thing I wanted to share. Fuck, where'd it go? Shit. Fuck, fart. Um, here it is. That's the list. I got a big one. And also, mm. a long list. Um, I went ahead and just took the liberty of putting Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street where we had them in the last yeah, stream. Uh, I'm yeah, sure... Let's just not waste time talking. Yeah, people want to see us talk about the same movies over and over again. Because we don't do that at all. <laughs> that's like the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> who who, who does do that? that? Who, who would like do keeps, something like that? Who keeps going back to the well and doing the same shit over and over again because it works for their channel? Not us. Maybe Dave McRae or something. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> one of those guys. One of those guys. Not, not, uh, God, not, no not, not We're you original shit. No. <laughs> uh, head to toe legit. Uh, couldn't be us. Uh, Chris Fold said, Chris just stole my twink. No, you have to say it like the kid. He just stole my twink. He's like, what, Eugene? He's like, Chris just stole my twinkie. 
<laughs> that was a great scene. Well, I never learned to read. So you never I had, actually... you never do the Monster Squad. I wish that was a remake so we could put it on the list. That would be a fucking old timer to me, but it's not. I I'm reading in Braille, actually. I don't know if you guys know this about me. Uh, it's been a long issue that I've been dealing with for a long time. Um, I have to read all of your super chats in Braille. Uh -huh. And it's not because I'm blind. It's because I never learned to read. I can only read with my fingers. That's the dumbest thing. Because everyone here is dumber for having listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Nighttime says, Julian Sands, dear God, why? Loomis, cheer me up. That was sad. Yeah, I don't know how you handle yeah. this one. But yeah. I hope you do it with respect and a, a soft touch. <laughs> I laugh. It's the, um, oh, shit. Julian, Julian, you went up on the mountain. No. You died in the freezer and came out like a, I saw you died. You shouldn't have got up there in that goddamn hill of mountains. It was snowy. What are you doing? Yeah. Julian Sands was a great actor. He once time, he one time played a warlock. He was, uh, he did magical spells and stupid shit like that. He was also in Rose Red. He also had a part in arachnophobia. He was a tarantula expert. Or something like that. Good guy, it seemed like. Uh, just got caught up in the cold weather. You're not, you, you know, you know, you're not Sylvester Stallone in Cliffhanger. I just don't understand it. You shouldn't have done it. But God be with you. All right, Pete. Uh, at least you didn't get oh. killed by Michael. I was actually going to go for a I rhyme. I wasn't here for any of that. I was going to go for a rhyme, but then I, I quickly decided not to do it. I because just, I couldn't yeah. rhyme. I no, I was. I, I meant to say Julian Sands. I thought I was going to rhyme something with Sands, but then I was like, I'm not going to do it. Because you get caught up in the character and you're like, yeah, I shouldn't have said that, but I did. <laughs> Austin said, would you have Cyclops powers without the need for a visor? But every time you use them, you had to say optic blast. I'm glad you say it. <laughs> God, that is the gayest oh, thing. No, I would love it. <laughs> uh, you... Optic blast. <laughs> yeah. You know, God. like he's really pissed that they like they someone smacked Jean Grey on the ass when he's like, optic. I think, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and point this out here, Austin. I think stealth missions are out, out of the question for Cyclops at this point. <laughs> it's like he, if he has to yell optic blast, that motherfucker's going to give his position away quick. Uh, yeah, That's I actually think... what I do during cornhole, by the way. Every time I throw it, I go optic blast. <laughs> and then hopefully Somebody think that, I'm cool. that does optic blast is like they're optic blast. And then like their laser. <laughs> that's the same guy that karate kicks the, the refrigerator door closed at night. They're like, ah, optic blast. Yeah. I That's that, that was my business. I do it too. Do, uh, April was uh, actually saw me do it the other night. She's like, Why do you do that for? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, Because I watched you Jean Claude Van Damme. She's like, Yeah, what you That's, you right. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I used to do when I worked at Ryder. I would, I'd be alone in the in the break room, and they, they you know, how the, they have those fancy vending machines now, and the thing that like, like arm goes up, it's like, oh, and it yeah. grabs it, and it's like, and it drops it i would stand outside of it and pretend that i had like the force and i would like move the hands uh -huh. so i'd be like mm. you're like that little boy in that car commercial that was trying to move shit and then the car starts on its own and he's like yeah oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was basically me and then someone would walk in the break room and i get really embarrassed and i would just have to suck their dick to get out of that situation mm. dogma says what's up did you guys see the five nights at freddy's full trailer i'm so excited for mm. it i think did so you I, watch think we, that? I think i i think i've seen it i think it was in uh there's a new one. There's a new one. Just oh, you know, I just saw the teaser then. Yeah. I never played the games. I know what Five, Night, Five Nights at Freddy is, but I've just, I never played the game. I think I watched like a couple of streamers play it for, you know, their, their scare compilations or whatever. But it always seemed like, I don't know if I'd get into it, but. I did, I did a, I did a, a, a trailer reaction for it, but I just put it on the, Was on the Nicolas Cage? Is, is that the guy that's in it? No, you're thinking of Willie's Wonderland, which was mm. like a, a sort of thing. Uh, Matthew Lillard and Josh Hutchinson are in this one. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. yeah. No, I did. I did the trailer re reaction to it, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, this shit looks like shit. <laughs> it's always the worst. So it's like, oh, please see it. It looks so good. You're like, all right, and you watch it. You're like, I don't want to be mean, but god damn, I'd rather yeah. have a root canal. Than yeah, watch no. That again. I, I wanted to think it was cool so that I could get as excited as everybody else did. But mm. truthfully, the trailer just didn't show anything cool at all to me, except for Matthew Lillard. So I was just kind of like, ah. Eh. But then on the flip side, and you know Blumhouse, Blumhouse always shows the best parts of their movies in their fucking trailers. Mm -hmm. So if Blumhouse puts out a trailer and it doesn't have a bunch of cool shit in it, then the movie is probably just going to be, you know, uh, uh, Adam Sandler farting on a snare drum. So uh, that's an air, Airheads reference. If you don't, if you don't watch movies, you, you're on What's an there. Airhead? Are you talking about the candy Airhead? Airhead. Oh. Uh, uh, but yeah, I didn't. I don't. I'm going to watch it. That's I'm why gonna... I don't do the screen videos because I don't want to be like, whoop de doo. What does it all mean, Basil? Mm. <laughs> I don't want to be that one guy that's faking excitement for something I don't give a shit about. Like, yeah, you got to. I don't care. do it. You got to care. You have to care. You can't just be like, 
all these other YouTubers talking about shit. They're they're, they're they don't want to talk about. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. I like to you can't apologize. Pretend to be a, the Grace Randolph of the world, where you have all the insider information <laughs> and you know everything about anything. So I know that he beats women on film and oh. has a has is actually has murders on his record but notice that he is wearing the flash ring that yeah is, pretty much that's grace randolph that's right there spectacular like sorry me. i wasn't listening i was beating my wife what'd she say yeah he's where <laughs> uh edward santiago says hello wham fam been a while since i caught one of these hopefully the cream clears it up ah yes we hope so well God be I with hope you. everyone comes. God be with you. Eduardo to Santiago. The party at 9 p.m. that we're having. Dude, if I, if, you know what, Eduardo? If I were still a pharmacy tech and you were like a patient, I would do that. Every time your medicine was dropped, it's like, Eduardo Santiago. <laughs> the DMX comes on. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, uh, uh, what's the then, fucking. Uh, Eduardo would get up out of the waiting room chairs and he'd like come up and be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. <laughs> Bounce it up, ready to go. What's the what's the popular DMX song? Oh, uh, party! Yes, gonna give it to you. Gonna no, give it to you. The one, the the one that was like more commercially friendly. That's what I was thinking of. The uh, uh lose, bitch. Uh, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Oh yeah, well, up in here. Wasn't, wasn't, move, move, bitch. Wasn't DMX? Was it? No, move, that was move, mystical. mystical. God, Jay, they're not all the same. You fucking racist piece of shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's just racist. <laughs> Crash Blue says, "What's up, Mike and Gay?" Oh, hey, shit. he spelled That's your so name right. I took nope. your name and I rhymed it with the thing gay. <laughs> Nobody ever spells Jay's name right. I'm so ha happy someone finally did. Hope you both good. Got a simple question. Unlike last time, what's a movie with a good idea but bad execution? My birth uh yeah that's true uh no i was gonna say your joke crash blue but we're just gonna move past it i think uh no i a good movie with a bad execution um here's a well it's not a good well i think it could have been a good movie if you hadn't had the halloween time i mean i'm gonna go ahead and say it rob zombies halloween 2 i think that without it being i think honest to god i swear to god and we've talked about this before at length if you didn't put halloween in the title it's not a bad film it's a weird movie but it's not that bad it's a hobo killer it kind of makes sense but I feel like the execution was awful because the first 25 minutes of that movie are fucking some of the best Michael stuff ever. Like this in the hospital, it's some of the coolest shit, 25, 30 minutes. And then it just goes straight down to Pony, you know, uh, the white unicorn horse shit express. And then it's just a terrible movie. I would, I, and that's just the one off the top of my head. I'm sure there's other ones that are way better than that. But yeah, I, it would be Halloween too. There's a ton. Yeah, there's so many fucking movies that fit that bill for sure. I'll, I, I, I'm going to uh, just panic 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 pick i'll say haunted house like haunted house if it was funnier and like better made oh, and ooh, then then they maybe could have started they could have started a whole fucking new scary movie well, situation did. oh haunted uh, house with marlon waynes yeah never mind yeah i, yeah, I was thinking yeah. i was actually thinking scary movie for some reason yeah or like movie 43 like i love the idea of like the movie parodies coming back but when they don't when they don't land they just don't fucking land you know yeah but that's just because i i I also I'm think uh, what's stupid. a good idea of a bad execution is, is all the mainstream news channels. Good idea, um, bad execution. Also, all biased bullshit. News is something you need um, mm -hmm. until you, you until it ruins the entire world and makes us all hate each That's other. That's why I get my news exclusively from Reddit, as you should. I do. get all mine from 4chan, and 4chan. And, <laughs> and 8chan too. Yeah, super Nazi surplus dot com. That's where like, I. That's that's how I know Marjorie Taylor Green is a superhero. You know what's weird is like they literally made eight chan because somebody was making too like something so risque. It was too good. It was too bad for four chan. It, that's how fucked up eight chan is. It's only gonna get worse, Jim. It's only gonna get worse, Jim. Um. By the way, did you hear that Elon Musk and uh, James Gandolf? No, don't you fucking sully James Gandolfini's name, Mike. Um. That other fucking weirdo that they made the uh, the Facebook guy, Mark Zuckerberg, are going to oh, do a cage, have a cage fight. Yeah, it's stupid. I, I, yeah, how the anything, fuck? Anything for attention. I'm like, who cares? I don't give a shit to watch like two fucking assholes that are billionaires fight in the cage. I don't I'm coming. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to watch it. Just I'm going to watch like, it too. Them... I'm just saying I don't care, but I'm going to watch it because I want to see somebody get a bloody nose. But I know it's going to get embarrassed. Happen. Yeah, I think Mark I... Zuckerberg is actually like a judo guy or something. I don't know what. Uh, well, now, now Elon Musk, not to be outdone, son, can't be undone, is out there saying that he's got some, some, some training. He actually said he sounded like Napoleon Dynamite. By the way, he was like, he was like, I have some training in judo and uh, uh, no rules street fighting as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I keep, nunchuck, I keep nunchucks in my locker, but I shouldn't have them <laughs> in school. <laughs> Shut up, Napoleon! Give me some of your thoughts. Whatever I feel um, like, it. God. <laughs> 
<laughs> I will watch that though, just to hope that one of them gets. Yeah. Uh, well, if they're gonna put it on pay per view, I'm not paying for it. I'll get it on. Crackle. I would just like the only response at all to either Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg challenging you to a cage fight is, no, I think I'll spend that exact amount of time, you know, curing fucking poverty. And I'm not talking about socialism. I'm just talking about fucking anything. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, I'll just not do that fucking thing. Yeah, well, he, I, has, he has a simple solution. Like, don't be poor. Be a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell you that the guys. Men I, do. I, 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 dude, I heard these. Fucking ones. be a man. This shit, this shit is so funny. Listen, <laughs> he's like, "Hey, if you're happy, get depressed. Be a man." <laughs> and then there was like, and it was like this guy was like, "Never wear sandals. Real men hide their feet and their emotions. Be a man." <laughs> <laughs> I just. If there is the small offhand chance that anyone in here right now is new, which that just doesn't happen. So I know it's 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 rarer than, you know, um, uh, Taylor Swift keeping a boyfriend. But like mm. if there's anyone here that's actually new, I promise everything we're saying is completely bullshit. We're just kidding. It's all joke. Yeah, it's not, Don't get we, it. we only act like this when the cameras are off for real. We're just joking with you guys when the cameras are on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we, don't worry we, about we, it. No, the footage of us do, the other day at the Proud Boys March was that a was joke. Just, like, we did that because we knew that, you guys. No, would that, see no us. let's not be. That was AI generated. We would never wear what we were wearing in on in those days. Like, there's no way it was AI. Yeah. The By the way, day, uh, time I out. I'm going to Antifa. Morrison. What? Zach Morris, time out. Time out. Remember in Zay by the belt? Don't tell uh, me what you fucking do, Jay. Make, sh make sure no, just make sure you <laughs> like the video, by the way, because that does recommend the video to other people. So we were talking yeah. about getting newer people in here. It actually helps with YouTube recommending it yeah. to regular YouTube, you know, other people that are just surfing YouTube. No, except for the gay stuff. That's a hundred percent true. Th those are we actually oh, are yeah. dead serious about that. We yeah. actually met um at a men's uh single dating tournament it, it, it it's not like a thing it's not like a, a thing it's not like a singles thing it's actually a fighting tournament where gay people fight and 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 then like the hottest sex that comes out of the fighting are the people who get the chance and then they start them a youtube channel and then they 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 set it all up for them and that's actually how the, we, the channel started we met at a a, a, a gay fighting dating championship yep. and uh i won because i came first well, uh, losing the Bible Belt support in five, four, three, two, <laughs> one. Back to you. No, we'll just put up one of those weird billboards that are like, Jesus hates gays. And then we'll be right back in the thing. Yeah, you know? we'll just do a we'll flip flop. Every different live stream, it'll be one. It'll be pro one thing or pro the other. <laughs> Brandon Riddle said it's called butt fight. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, instead of instead of a cockfight, it's a butt fight. Yeah, that's what it my, is. My my favorite thing, by the way, uh, we're vacationing. We always vacation over South Carolina, Florida, all that shit like that. Like when you're driving that fucking Bible Belt Road, those those goddamn those billboards, dude. Jesus Christ, they're like have anxiety or AIDS because you're fucking gay. Find Jesus. It's yeah. like, it'll fix it all. You're like, they've, what? Did I got read the, that? They got the billboard. If you go down to Tennessee, if you're on your way to Tennessee, they have the same kind of billboard. I think there's one right across the street from a big porn shop. It was like Jesus hates <laughs> porn addiction. Get right. <laughs> yeah, and then two fucking miles. Or no, I think it's like, like, yeah, and then Gary's like, porn emporium. Yeah, it's like the titty twister from Dust Till Dawn with the, all the fireworks and candy. And <laughs> you just you just passed Jesus looking at you that said God hates porn and got Jesus like into the yeah. got milk. And then you're like, I do love you, God, but titties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna for, I'm gonna ask for forgiveness as soon as I'm done. I swear to God, it's they right, better. It's the last time. Hey, as long as they don't sell any Bud Light at Gary's Porn Emporium, then I might as well. It may as well be a spiritual landmark, in my got opinion. Got no time for that. As long Ain't as they don't sell no fucking time. Bud Light. First off, if you're looking, at I movies, got standards. If you're looking at movies, who gives a fuck what you're drinking at the time when you get drunk? You're not going to give a fuck what you're putting in your mouth. <laughs> Garth Garth Balls says we should get back to the show, and I think he's right. Gargle Balls knows what he's talking oh, about. Oh yeah, I'm he sorry, means yeah, business. We, we get you know, people get mad. He's not wrong. Thank All you. Right. Except for when he was gargling the balls, it sounded more like oh, God, my club, my club. Yeah. Uh, but hey, I understand you because I also <clears throat> gargle balls on Saturdays from between four and seven p.m. in the afternoon. Let's start with this one: the Invisible Man. I think it's fuckable. You know what, Jay? I don't. I mean, listen, it was a good movie. I liked it. It was slick. It was new. It, it had a cool like uh, thriller element to it. I just feel like it, it like. It was just a standard. It was a good movie. I, you know, I know it was a, it was supposed to be part of a larger universe. They were rebooting the Universal Monsters, and that didn't come to fruition. But ultimately, it was just a 
I don't know. It kind of reminded me of uh, it was a li- like it was a little bit better of a Hollow Man movie, like Hollow mm-hmm. Man with Kevin Bacon. I like that. I actually like that movie for the corniness. But that it, this is like a better put together Hollow Man movie. I stick it in at the right time, and I I would say that honestly, like yeah, I agree with you that it is fuckable. But I mean, like it could be real awesome. I think that that's by the way we have a Patreon commentary coming up for that because that was a Patreon request. Is that we do a commentary for it, and we've been very slow about it. I apologize for well, that. I'm gonna be the Invisible Man when we watch it because I don't want to watch. <laughs> I'm the Invisible Man. I'm the Invisible Man. You know the Queen song. Mm-hmm. I'm the invisible man. That up. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I just think it's good. It's good, but like once you've seen it, you've seen it. And then you're like, I know exactly yeah. what happens because it's pretty standard. It's shit. like sex it's with just... either one of us. It's like, oh, we've had it. It's one hundred percent. That is the don't need best to do it again. That was the use of mism. Yeah, it was the best. That wasn't even good. It was just like I saw it, it was decent, and then that's it. Yeah. I don't want to do it again. Everybody knows Jim it's mm-hmm. all I, I'm just kidding with you, Garth Ball, Ball Mall. By the way, I'm just playing. Yep. Uh, I hope you, I hope you understand. It was a jokey joke. You're right. We should, we should, we should have got to the fucking. Is he? Show. In the, is he offended? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't look. I didn't look. Uh, I but don't I just be offended. Want you to know. That just gargle the balls. Let's get it. Just having a laugh oh, with you. Busting yeah. each other's balls, I, maybe licking them. I know where I want to put this, and I know you're gonna disagree. I think I it's real fucking awesome. Do it, Jay. I, I think it's real awesome, dude. I love this movie. I, I think it's fun. Right. Uh, in the places that it needs to be fun. I think it's scary, kind of, sort of. But I think it's overall, like, there's something about this movie. I don't know what it was when I first watched it. I loved Willard in it. I thought he was great. And the guy that played Monk, and I can't remember that guy's name, he's a great actor. But there was something like a Ghostbuster f- vibe to this. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was, like, the very interesting ghosts, and they all had mm-hmm. backstories, and they had, like, a personality, and they were, like, distinguished in their own yeah. way. And it wasn't just, like, a generic, like, woo booger monster coming in at your asshole in the middle of the <laughs> I night when that happens uh, yeah it's the worst i know i should never sleep with those 7-elevens but uh <laughs> all those, but yeah I, uh, I i love it dude i think it's real awesome and, and and by the way on the on the dvd that extra content where you get to know the backstory of each ghost if you watch the bonus features that's fucking badass dude i love it i, I yeah. just think there's it's a cool vibe man it's awesome it's got great soundtrack i'm not gonna argue with you tonight i'm not gonna do it I yeah I, I'm gonna put it in real awesome you know I'm gonna because like I know that's it I'm not even put it to vote because I know exactly where it's gonna go it's just one of those movies that like I you know me I you know my fucking love for Matthew Lillard but I just feel like in the, those fucking ghosts are cool by the way the yeah. idea of the movie oh oh dude this answers the dude's question from before in my opinion 13 fucking ghosts I think it's a mm. great fucking idea but I think it's terrible execution that's actually the perfect guy it was right under my fucking nose the whole time no you can't go back and triple stamp a double like, stamp you can't like when people do backwards step. blowjobs where the girl lays on the yeah, bed yeah. and the guy puts you know what i'm not going to get into it yeah. their balls Stop end up on their nose about your gay porn addiction Stop, i'm sorry uh i'm gonna put it in real awesome um even though i think i think that it could have been so much fucking better i think it's That's great just, i i you know what and also um what's her name that plays the daughter from american pie she's hot as fuck what's her name shannon elizabeth yeah, I love Shannon Elizabeth. She actually is a decent actress. She's so goddamn hot. But there's something about it when she's driving in the car or like she's in, I, there's some lines that she delivers that are so cringy. She's like, are you, the, the guy from Monk is driving. He's like, are you excited? She's like, yeah. <laughs> like, stop it. <laughs> uh, and I hated that kid, dude. The little brother. I hated that kid. Oh, yeah, no. I hated that kid. Dude, that movie, like, honestly, like, if you have anxiety and you've just taken eaten a fucking brownie drug, do not watch 13 Ghosts because that camera's like, <laughs> it's like, there are it's ghosts downstairs, Walter. Like, goats? No, ghosts. <laughs> like, as a, a, a spring melody, ghosts. Okay, ghosts. 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 Uh, this piece of shit. Uh, did did you watch? Did, did you watch, watch this? Th- I did not watch Cabin Fever remake. I don't feel like there was a need to. I feel like Cabin Fever was still new. It is the most pointless fucking movie I've ever seen in my cocksucking life. And that says a lot. Uh, no, it, dude, it was literally, they took, I think it was, uh, I believe it was Eli Roth. Um, it, uh, I love Cabin Fever. Eli Roth original. directed this? No, not this. Uh, oh. the, the, the original, I do believe. No, I know, but. But it was so fun, and it was I love that movie, and it's such a blast, and it doesn't give a fuck. And then this guy, Travis Zar, Zar uh, comes in and is like, I'm going to make that movie, but I'm going to take – I'm going to suck zone the fun out of it and just was like, I'm going to take it seriously. And then yeah. there was absolutely nothing good about it. It was ass. It was pure trash. And he actually, when I reviewed it, the director actually like commented below. like He made a comment. He's like, well, 
Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. like, like, do you don't know watch that? It's like uh, he was like William uh, William Defoe in Spider Man. He goes, I, I started this company for like, Do you know how much I sacrificed? <laughs> he was William Defoe in Spider Man. <laughs> if you gotta go and comment under a random YouTube video, fucking criticizing your movie, goddamn crazy. Who gives he a didn't shit? even have a, he didn't even have a good reason for himself. He was just like, well, I. I made a movie, <laughs> uh, but like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Why would you make the movie to, for the nougat? Uh, I'm sure people, I mean, I'm sure there was like, you know, five or six people that enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, still. yeah, his mom, his dad, and, and his and seven cousins uncles. and aunts and uncles, like, you know, like Christian Slater movie that made like $18 in the theater in the, in the early 2000s or 2000. That was the saddest thing I ever heard in my life. Christian Slater literally released a movie. I don't know. It was like 2014 or 2013. It came out in the theater. <laughs> it made like twenty five dollars. I'm not sure with it. It was the lowest. Uh, it was the lowest like a movie that or the movie that brought in the lowest amount of money ever. Was it like Out of the Darkness? Yeah, I don't know. You, I it's on. Thing. You can Google it. It literally is so fucking terrible. It's like you made twenty five bucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, uh, the Blob. Mm. The Blob. I, I like this movie, dude. Um, I I never really uh, remember watching the original Blob, but I remember renting this as a kid uh, when I was younger. Um, my mom and dad, well, my stepmom and, and dad used to uh, rent movies for Halloween when we were kids. Uh, and probably movies that we shouldn't have been watching, eight or nine or ten years old. And I remember The Blob was one of those go-to ones. Uh, it was fucking gnarly, dude. Like, it, as a kid, I should have been watching. It's, like, got some gross-ass shit in it. it was gory as fuck. I liked it. I don't think it's bad yeah. at all. I think it's a fuckable movie. I, I, I think I enjoy it. I would go, uh, honestly, it's it's so weird. Like, I we just reviewed this. Like, mm-hmm. we just did a Patreon review for this, and I'm having just the worst time. I remember it has fucking uh, uh, Matt Dillon's little brother from Entourage. Yeah, they look just alike in it. Uh, just yeah, alike. I think Fuckable's okay. I think it could possibly real be real awesome in a lot of people's I don't think it's eyes. That, I don't think it's that good. I'm not sure. I can't remember it. So just to just to let you guys know, if any of you guys are new here, this is something that we do sometimes. I will put it to you guys just so we can make sure it's in the right fucking place. No, you piece of shit. I just said I no. Remember it. God damn it. Fine. I'll put you know, it in fuckable. I, shit. No, whatever. You know what? I'm I hate of, you, Dad. You know what? I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. Fine. Drop it in. No, no drop it in no. there. You All wanted right, it. Now you got it. Okay, you call down the thunder. Let's just do everything that you want to do. <laughs> Funny how you call when you need something. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have plenty of votes to go to. I got to return some more videotapes. I got to go. <laughs> uh, this one. This is interesting. I don't think we've ever tier listed this movie at all before. That, that's the way you look at the microwave waiting on your pizza rolls to get done when you're talking. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, it's true. I think, uh, yeah, I think the first, the, the It remake, um, it's real awesome. I, I, I don't think there's any kind of debate about it. You know, it was good. It was uh, They did a great job of bringing the Stephen King novel uh, more to life in a way that, while the miniseries was great and Tim Curry is legend, uh, you know, uh, Skarsgård does awesome with the new take on, on Pennywise. And I and the kids weren't. I, I actually like the story of, of it taking place in the '80s. I like that whole vibe. I like the the feel of it. Yeah, I think it's real awesome. I think they did a great job. It actually, do remember you and I? Don't think we saw it together in the theater, but that, that it, it was funny that you and I both talked about it. It gave us both panic attacks when he comes out of that fucking projector. That dude. shit was fucking scary, <laughs> dude. Yeah, he, he like comes out. He's like, ah! I was like, God damn it! No. Like that I was some nightmare it. fuel. Uh, well, because they, you know, it. and I thought and they didn't, you know, they showed just enough in the trailers to get you interested, but they didn't show that projector yeah. screen. That that yeah. moment, that was fucking scary, dude. I think it has gone down in the public's eye somewhat because, like, neither Jay or I enjoyed it part two. We just did nah, not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were sitting there like halfway through that movie, just like we'll just fucking go get a beer. I'm like, we can't. <laughs> yeah, I we want were, to, but we we're such can't. losers. We're so good at uh, what we do. <laughs> hey, yeah. we'll just like we'll just exit out like halfway and go we get didn't. a beer. And tell everybody that we saw it. <laughs> we stayed strong. We stayed yeah, we, true no, we to stayed our values. Um, but unlike Taco Bell, taking off the Mexican pizza, putting the Mexican pizza bask on. What do you want, Sarah? But uh, no, I agree with you, man. I think it's real awesome. I think it was it was it, like a Miss Andy Machat, um, like bad CG that he sometimes does. Mm-hmm. I think that there's there's enough. It was too long. They should have taken twenty it was minutes like off. Two of hours it. and something, yeah. Yeah, but we're talking about Stephen King, so they're all fucking too long. Yeah, that, but that like, book's um, like huge. Something that'll never be said about us, uh, too long. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's there's enough moments in this that actually scare the dicks off your dicks. 
little... that projector screen, dude. That projector scene is like, yeah. <laughs> Like and here's the thing, I know it probably doesn't look as scary now if you watched on on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever. In the but theater, when you that saw it, when, you, when you saw it in the theater and you didn't know what was coming, that shit was like, God damn it! It's like yeah, that felt dude. like a that felt like the personification of a panic attack. Like it felt yeah. like a panic attack. And you're like, oh, I gotta go breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go like breathe. Motherfucker turned into Goldberg right in front of the fucking mm-hmm. projection light, but he was a stepdad about to beat your ass because yeah. you talk back to your mom. It was scary. It <laughs> I know a legit. thing or two about a thing or two. It's fucking uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, not Al Pacino, the other one, De Niro in uh, This Boy's Life. Coming out oh yeah, uh, dude. I, yeah, I just yeah. I just watched him in uh, Red Lights, which I think is an underrated fucking movie. Um, you should watch it. I don't. I don't watch Red Lights. I your... just run them. Crap! Sh- <laughs> that, that was such a, was such a, was such a dad, dad joke. joke. I know. I was like, such a dad joke. Fucking caught me unawares, man. Yeah. Um. In the meantime, fuck! I went to the wrong dingling ding dong. Look at this mother! Look at this shit! My fucking finger butt's not working. What's going on here? Hang on. Give me a second. Scrolling down. By the way, this right here, it was a pimple. Is it nose? I- yeah, but no, I was trying to pop it, and I was trying to scrape it. Now I look like a fucking nose ring. I look like, uh, what's her name, Joan Osborne? What if God was one of us? <laughs> but she just had that stud, which, by the way, turned out to be fake. And I know that because I watched pop-up video on VH1, and it was like <laughs> the nose ring that she used in the video was actually fake. And people were like, oh, no, my dreams are crushed. I thought Joan Osborne had a real nose ring. Like, nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> there are people, yeah. No, they like, were like there. There was you know, Ortega I, smoking. I went to the comments under the. Po- I'd seen. I watched that pop up video when it was real on VH1, real and true. And then I watched. I watched the YouTube video and people were talking about the pop up video and they were like, "Yeah, I just kind of like crushed my soul a little bit that Joan Osborne is so fake that she had a fake the stud ring in her nose." I'm like, "Who gives a shit, dude?" Yikes! Uh, did you see that? Uh, there was a video on Twitter today. Uh, this guy was like. It was like John Cena shuts down fan. This motherfucker, John Cena's sitting at like a fucking Hooters or some shit. John it looks Cena. like a Hooters. The wrestler, John no, Cena. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was kidding. I know. <laughs> Can't see me. Yeah. This, that's this what, I, is that's what, I, what I do with my taxes. Can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's what I do it when it, in bed when I, when I finish and she hasn't finished yet. I just go, so where'd you go? I, it stings yeah. if I keep going. It tickles. The creditors um, that come after me in my IRS. So <laughs> this, this dude posted a video of him john cena sitting at like a two top like it's basically you and me uh every time we've ever gone out at like a two top at like a fucking hooters just sitting there having a conversation and this mm. guy from like 10 feet away is like uh eh, john cena and he turns around <laughs> he goes and the guy goes the guy goes so can you like not see me or what oh and he's God. like filled with him and john cena goes actually i'm i'm trying to enjoy uh some company with my friends if you don't mind and the guy goes oh sorry and he goes mm-hmm. and just turns around and continues and like it's <laughs> so such an asshole embarrassing they go, mm. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. Dude. I know, but he and was it, like, "Well, I, to be fair, I mean, I know it's an asshole response. Like, you go, mm. it's such a dismissive tone. But if somebody's yeah. like waving a fucking phone in your face, acting like a dickhead, and he I mean, didn't make sense. He was like, so can you like not see me because your thing is like you can't see me.' Is this Robert Downey Jr. while he was drunk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, this guy posted it online, and I think he wanted it to be like the internet to get mad oh, at victim. John Cena. Yeah. But like, everybody was like, "No, dude, you're a fucking dick. He's not a fucking monkey. You know what I mean?" Yeah. It's like, dance, funny man, dance. Like, um, I, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, like, if you approach a celebrity in public, and if I mean, if he went up, was like, "Hey, have some respect. Have some, yeah." Respect. They're human. Yeah, if you were just like, hey man, I'm a, I'm a really big fan, and like I just I know you're can I just like take a picture with you or something like that? And John Cena was like, mm-hmm. That'd be one thing. Well, but no, like yeah, already say, filming him and then being be like Michael Bean. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but you know, well, here's the thing about that. I actually saw um there's uh, there was a thing about there was actually another uh, scenario that happened with John Cena in the exact same way. And John and Cena, John Cena seems like he's a stand-up guy. He actually seems like he's very respectful. He was in the Marine Corps, so he's got some he got some respect on him. Um, mm-hmm. he was at a he was at a uh, clothing shop, and this was years ago, but he was walking around this fucking dickhead, had his phone out, and he was following him around the store, and he was just like shopping, just doing his own thing. And then he came up and very like normal and, and very like respectful. It's like, hey man, I'm just trying to shop. Could you please not follow me around and film me? And the guy was like, Well, what do you want? And he was trying to ask him questions. He's like, man, I, I don't want to answer any questions. I'm just here shopping. Can you leave me alone. And the guy like kept continuing. He was a dickhead. And the guy, this, this this guy, no, not this guy, but another guy. He posted it online. Like he was like, "I'm the victim." 
I'm like, dude, yeah, you were nah, literally dude. following this dude around. He was looking for like, he was looking at goddamn Lee's or Levi jeans and just trying to have a day off. <laughs> and you're fucking filming him while he's walking around like yeah. a creep. Like, goddamn, have some have some respect, man. Have some and respect. I, and I bet a thousand bucks, dude, if the dude just walked up without his phone on and was mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm a huge fan. Could I maybe take a picture with you? Or would you maybe sign like not not one of those fucking people who walks up with a stack of like maybe. eBay yeah. fucking things. But like I guarantee he'd have been cool. Like and that's what I was having a conversation with somebody on there. Like, I mean, obviously, like we don't get recognized very often. Or whatever. I, <laughs> I, don't I never I've probably been recognized like by people who've seen the channel in public, like maybe 20 times. Tops. My mind's like five. That's but, I but I don't go out in public. <laughs> I stay at home. <laughs> that's that's on the high version. And I've even had somebody come up to me while Katie and I were eating, mm-hmm. and like he was so nervous about like coming up because he knew we were eating, but he was so nice, and his wife was like waiting for him by the door. She's like, I don't give a fuck. They're on YouTube. Who, who cares? Yeah, what are you doing, yeah, Steve? Yeah. Uh, but I'm always like, No, this is fucking awesome because like sit down, have a dinner. Can I actually come over your house and like uh, start a, a, a nice fire for all of us? Like. It's mm-hmm. like in our situation, it's one thing, but if you're like a John Cena or something like that, and it's happening fucking 37 times a day, yeah, uh, dude, it would be hard. Like if people don't come up to you with respect at all and like just start well, I, like, I, I actually, I feel you. like I, I feel like I'm already prepared because I, if anybody starts approaching me in public, I think they're going to like come at either. They're going to say you owe money or that they're going to try <laughs> to punch me in the face for something I've said online because That's we were it. at the Halloween premiere. And I was with my brother and Mike, and this guy was walking up to him. He was a cool guy. He was actually a fan of the channel. And he was walking up, like, he maybe just the way that he was walking or the angle, it was aggressive. And I'm like, oh, this is a Rob Zombie Halloween fan. <laughs> and he was a big dude. So he walked up to me. He's like, hey, I know you guys are Halloween. Love it. Good stuff. I'm like, I knew it. Because the first thing, I, I, I like kind of started hiding behind Cody a little bit, my brother. And then I was going to push Mike. On the Jay, other yeah. side, if, if but any I, I didn't crazy know. fan ever tries to stab us, you guys, I guarantee you, the headline. Would I'm be not going like, to get stabbed because I, 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 I know, the, I know the border. Shoved him. Now I know the uh, yeah, I stab. I, I threw you. <laughs> I was like, Here, that's what you want. There's Mike. That's the guy that 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 said all that nasty stuff about your your favorite hero. Not me. I not me. Not yeah. this guy. Jay's I like, love Rob nah, Zombie. I, he's <laughs> like, I just yeah, I don't even work here. <laughs> Like I don't even like I'm not even. No, but I, I, but I, I've only been recognized a few times. Usually at scary, but it it always is like a when you do get recognized, though it's humbling as fuck. It really is. I I I couldn't even imagine being recognized on the scale that those bigger celebrities get. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine it. But you're you also got to realize that when those guys get recognized and the amount of pressure they're under, like to maintain a face, which they don't yeah. want to do. Like you can't live life like what the, what's your persona? Your, if your persona is like. You're this really awesome, you know, laid back dude like Jason Momoa. I just surf waves, dude, and smoke weed. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Look at my long hair and my sexy abs. I also drink liquor all the time in front of waves. And, like, people think that's what you are, but in real life, you're just not like that. You, like, go to the golf co- course, and you're like, you're, like, the most regular average white dude ever. And then they're like, what the fuck, Jason Momoa? I thought you were against this shit. He's like, what are you talking about, man? This is the downtime for me. So I'm my day off. Yeah, I, dude, I, I, always, would, I would hate it. Anytime ever anybody, someone ever comes up to me, I'm always like, "Where are you going?" And they're like, "Well, I got my picture." Like, I'm like, "But where where are you going? You don't want to yeah, hang out? You want to go Hooters? Have That's some scary. wings?" <laughs> I become their fucking fan. I start following them to their house. Like, no, I yeah. want to make sure they got a good experience. Uh, but yeah, dude, I mean, if you ever approach somebody in public, like, I think that's fine. I think they sign up for that 100%. But like, mm-hmm. there's just a way to do it. You you don't film them before you speak to them, you know? And like, you, you, you don't go, hey, do that funny fucking line. <laughs> I hate your dick. Like, that would be weird, <laughs> that's right? A, hey, if that's all you want me to do, that's cool. I'll do it. <laughs> Show me your dick. I was like, um, no, if, that, if that's it, you're like, hey, say God damn you, Mike, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it for you because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but yeah, it would be annoying if you were like, if you went up to someone like Tom Cruise, like, hey, do the line. He's like, what line? Do the line. Need for speed. Do it. Do the line. Which he's one? like, no, Tom Cruise. Show me like, your wife's tits. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. I've been in a lot of movies. Like, do the line. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. But anyway. The the kid in uh in wedding crash he's like who cares funny man just make it he's like you want a balloon you want an elephant what <laughs> Norris says what's up my homies hope y'all are doing well looking right. forward to Scarefest will you guys be playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game yes. this August also any idea why John Carpenter is so angry all the time <laughs> take care fellas thank I, I you I think Norris. the answer that thank you man I think John Carpenter is angry all the time because he realizes that his hair can't grow any longer than it is and the ponytail doesn't look that great and also he 
I think he's like off and on a smoker. So he has like bouts of where he's like fighting the nicotine addiction. So he gets kind of pissy in interviews. <laughs> Uh, that, I just think he's an old fuck. Well, no, he's yeah, a I mean, well, he wants to smoke cigarettes, and I think that he just likes to smoke cigarettes. And when someone's taking up too much fucking time, and he's like, they're talking to him for a half hour, and he's like, bitch, I want to go out and smoke a cigarette. But you said I couldn't smoke during this interview, so fuck you. Yeah, the only John- guy with balls, Christopher Nelson, who we interviewed, he smoked them cigarettes when we were interviewing him. And I was like, you could do that, Christopher Nelson, because you didn't care. But well, not, not John Carpenter. John Carpenter did. You mentioned that, by the way. It reminds me of that uh, that country song. It's Tim McGraw's. Like, I don't know why you gotta be angry all the did time. You hear about, speaking of, uh, oh, I was thinking of Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks actually uh, finally blocked Tom Segura on Instagram, the comedian Tom Segura, because he he's had this running joke with uh, with his fans that Garth Brooks is secretly a serial killer. And it, like he kept posting shit about that. that, and then he was like, "I can see that." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Garth finally blocked me today on Instagram." I guess it finally got to him. It's not. It's not Garth. It's Chris Gaines that's the serial <laughs> killer. It's not actually Garth. Uh, but no, dude. Yeah, we can't wait to see you. And, and I, I really, I, I would really love to do something with Leatherface or, 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 or like with whatever with like the the video game. We've never figured out video games on this channel. Well, we talked about we, doing it uh, in August, but we talked about it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we will do something. If not, if even if it's just a Patreon play along or something, we'll do yeah. fucking something, Norris. And thank you, dude, because you're fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, back to the list. I got a dude. I got a fuck in my fucking basement. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this is fucking like uh, what was that? This is Pulp Fiction Part Two. <laughs> <laughs> they call me. He's got Bing Rams down there. He's like, just close the door and walk away. <laughs> Oh, the old oh, man. Uh, yeah, suck my ass, Steve. Suck my butt, Steven. It was a fucking terrible movie. I it's do all like for that you, the- Dave. Even though I did like Julia Stiles in this, she's barely, she's not in it enough. And everything, Liv Schreiber's great too. But there's something about this movie, it feels so corporate. It feels so quick. It feels like I'm trying to, you know, press down on the slot machine to get that fucking 777 across so I can make money off of it. It just soulless. It's a soulless fucking movie. I, I feel like it's such yeah. a easy ass thing that they did. Yeah. And it, they didn't care about any of it. Look, look, you got the thing, extended scenes and a hellish alternate ending. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> cares, Sarah. Nobody cares about you. Go away. Nobody cares about your baby shower. Like, Nobody's coming. Uh, no, your your parents will love you. You're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that it says 69. <laughs> you put your finger over it and it says 69. It dude. 69, dudes. Yeah, uh, totally. Like, it had Leave Schreiber in it. And it yeah, still and yeah, great cast. It, so... just, it was terrible. Yeah, it sucks my butt, Steve. That's another, totally that's another movie. Great idea. Poorly executed. 100%. Oh, me. Uh, 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 <laughs> Welcome to the all-timer list, old man. We hope you have all the comforts you deserve because you're gonna going to be right in. You're just gonna going to have right all in. sorts of beer. Hey, let's just do them. On your lap. Okay. Let's just do them both at the same time. Yeah, dude. The Thing, 1982, Kurt Russell, John Carpenter. It's one of the best horror movies ever it's got a it's got a game of who is it you don't know but then it's got the horror element to it it's got a great badass fucking soundtrack it's got kurt russell it. it's got some drinking. style it's got some action it's got some horror Scott. let's just dabble everything in that pot and call it a day the thing yeah. is by the way dude it's fucking weird uh, i have to watch I, I i love this because april's never seen it i have to watch it again and that's always great when someone's never seen it fucking awesome. your dick yeah no she's never seen it it's so Man, small. It's, like she really, I, like I, I tell her you're really like, edging her on that, I was like, Yeah, you? something's in you. And she's like, Really? I was like, he has a strap on. But uh <laughs> but no, don't but look no, at it. But don't see, look dude, at it. listen, I love watching this movie that people have never seen it before because it, it's fucking mind blowing. It's so mind blowing when you finally get into the nitty gritty of the story. So good, yeah. so awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's an easy one. There's no question, there's no choice. Uh the thing the remake original. sucks. The re the actual remake of the remake. It's theory. crazy because if you told me Joel Edgerton in a the thing remake, I only watched it once back on Redbox when I was like 19, which was 47 and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh so I honestly can't remember anything about it. So I, bad, I give this dude. one to you, dude. Fuckable or sucks my butt, Steve. The remake sucks yeah. my ass. Like get, get out. Get out of here, you crack addict. How go. dare you try to make a fucking movie with your recovering, you know, at your halfway house? Fucking go. Yeah, you do disrespect. Yeah. You you didn't put no respect on the, it. Was fucking awful. It's so you bad. Don't deserve the CG to is awful. It's it's not even the same. The movie. air. Yeah, the air. <laughs> that's what I felt like <laughs> when I watched it. 
<laughs> you should be. <laughs> That's how I felt when I watched it. Uh, that, 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 that'd be uh, real awesome to me. Uh, I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna fucking stick it in. Mm. It's finally time for a goddamn vote. Stick I've been hoping it's it one of these. I think I think Evil Dead the remake could go all timer. I feel like we Whoa. owe it some money. Oh, I feel like we owe it some money, Stephen. And I feel like it is one of the gnarliest movies of our time as adults. Uh, and I think I I would say all timer personally. So I'll put it to a vote. And this is the beautiful beautiful thing about this show is that at the end we do full frontal male nudity. Yeah. But the second most beautiful thing about this show is that it's also Friday Night Fights because you guys vote on the things that Jay and I disagree about, which I will go ne- gladly now into your homes and I will go into your mother's drawer where she keeps her sex toys and I'll smell them and then Jay will taste them and then together we'll decide whether or not to send them away to PSA. I would do no such graded. a thing. You yeah. Even- they- we send your mother's sex toys away and then they come back with a PSA grade. Like, like how damaged is this toy? Is that a 4.5? Like how much is it worth? What Can the you fuck you talking about, dog? <laughs> <laughs> your local fucking comic book store or no? Oh, we were talking, you were talking, this is, I was this waiting is how you meant. send that to the vote and you're talking about us sending away like vaginal juice for PSA grading. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! Uh, come to my window, see about me. Melissa uh, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the. There's been a lot of gay moments on this channel, but I think at the top there's Melissa Etheridge. Yeah, that was the, that was the uh, the Wolverine of gay right there, <laughs> Melissa Etheridge. Yeah, I'm the best there is at what I do. Oh, what I so do good. is men. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! Oh, that's the hardest I've laughed in a, in a minute. Um, that was Yo, good. The, the way that she looks in this cover is like literally how every dad in America looks when they have to look at their credit card statement and what they spent on Christmas because cool. they fucking love their kids but they hate their life. <laughs> my, my son, my son, what have you done? Um, okay, I gotta go pee soon. Go I'll pee now. The, I know I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one more. We, we got do one more. List. We got an hour. All right, all right. We, we fucked around for a half hour. Fuck around, find oh, out. Man, I ain't even touched this fucking racist ass shit right here. All right, <laughs> take that racist shit and fucking move it down the line. All right? Christmas should be for everyone, not yeah. just blacks. What the fuck is going on in America today? All right. Oh wait, I was confused. I'd like to apologize. I thought we were on the Tucker Carlson Gosh. show. <laughs> no, this movie sucks though. That movie sucks ass. It, it really. I call suck. it fuckable, dude. I would say you, you like that. Fuckable. I thought the- it, it's entertaining. It's I, entertaining. I thought, I thought it was garbage. I thought it was When's the last time you've seen it, dude? Like when it came out, it was garbage then. It's garbage <laughs> now. I don't need to see it. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't remember much about it. I want to rewatch it. It's like, no, it's it's all it's I, all it's about, dude. It's like it's clean. It's not like the original at all. It's like I, let's just let's just do one we can agree on. All right, for now, we'll go back to it because there's already a vote going. Let's do, do the, the Black uh, Christmas because <laughs> that it sucks my butt, Steve, dude. No, I love this movie. Yo, this is your oh that was this is your favorite movie of 2020. I love it. It's so good. Oh my god, look at the pink writing. Can you can you believe it? No, it's fucking actually yeah, it can stick in Steve's asshole. I do like the writing though, because the right the way that the picture looks and the writing, it kind of makes you feel like you're gonna have like an 80s ride. And Mm -hmm. and instead you just have like a ride to the jail (laughs) of wasting your time. I saw this fucking opening weekend. And oh Sucks my to god, be you dude! <laughs> it's one of the fucking worst horror movies you I've ever seen. Through that in the theater, you have to tell yourself I did. that. I I'm paid not... good fucking money. That's how you know we're you legit. Paid twenty bucks to see a piece of shit. Yeah, I paid for this shit. Legit, didn't even sneak in. Uh, it was a good idea. Like it started out all right, and then they were like, literally, it was the baseline for just terrible. This movie could be the epitome of the awfulness of that time period where they were just like. Listen, we don't need to make a good movie. We don't need to make an entertaining movie. We just want to make it to where everybody can come in. And then as long as we say at the end, like, women power, oh, men God. suck. So there's a virtue signaling. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. I know. I do remember that. Dude, now. It's there, the there's fucking virtue. light the beam of virtue yeah, signaling. It was, the, it was the Jedi Knight of virtue signaling. Yeah. My God. Rash. He, and you know me. Chosen one. <laughs> yeah. You know me. I get so fucking bored of the woke conversation, all that shit. But this shit is what gives people with sane minds a bad goddamn name. Because this is the kind yeah. of shit they this were talking gives, about. This, this gives uh, Donald Trump another voter. This, this created, this movie <laughs> no, single handedly created I'm Tucker Carlson. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
yeah dude, I, I do but yeah it looks like it looks like a fucking album cover for like that that band it's like you don't gotta go to work 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 but you gotta do the work work what are they the pussy cat dolls i don't know what pussy are those cat dolls. no it wasn't yeah. i don't it, spice girls i don't know all right way, I'll be back. i gotta go drain the lizard i'll be back soon all right all right if you guys want, I'm down. If everybody wants to start, if anybody wants to start a 90s pop cover group, but it's all dudes and we're called the Spice Dudes and we just play Cisco's thong song uh, 10 times in a row at your local winery. Um, and we're not in shape. If you have apps, you're not allowed to come, but it's just a bunch of semi chubby dads in thongs performing Cisco's the thong song on loop at a winery. And we're called the Spice Dudes. Who's in? We're looking for investors. Possibly you. It could happen. It's my idea. Anyways, as your all's vote goes, Evil Dead is an all-timer. You agree with me? Because I'm the smart one. Yeah! We got our second all-timer. I'll tell Jay that when he gets back, just so it makes sure I, I rub it in that I was right and he was wrong. And his wiener tastes weird. Because it does. Trust me. I know. I know what's happening right now. Michael Parton said, has Dr. Lewis and Chalice ever been to a gay cruise together? Would they go on one with me? I'll let Jay answer that. Um, Cause I don't know what a gay cruise is because I'm a Christian. Uh, Anthony Jackson says, hi, Mike Jay. Not much just to say thanks. Hey, no, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot. The thought is enough alone. Anthony Jackson really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Chris's chicken fucking fritters. Chris's flick flies. Quick. Chris is fucking fluting. Chris says, hey, Wham, love you guys. You two really know how to make me laugh. Just wanted to put my channel out there. Chris's Flick Files, you, you marketing fucking guru. Honestly, it's you and fucking Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Good for you, man. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Hey, he fucking paid for it. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Um, and I hope your channel does well. Everybody subscribe to Chris's Flick Files. Fucking do it for your dad and I, or we won't we'll stop sleeping together and then we'll get divorced christopher says thanks buddy by the way he says what do you think about the anaconda reboot at sony i did not know that was a fucking thing says it's reported that paul rudd and pedro pascal are in talks to star and jennifer lopez may return would love to see creature features make a bigger return yeah um i asked jay about this too i had no idea that that was a thing paul rudd pedro pascal i don't care if jennifer lopez comes back or not anaconda movie i'm fucking day one i'm there that sounds fucking awesome actually like that's the first i've heard about it but yes yeah paul rudd and pedro pascal could tag team sell ketchup to a, a woman in white gloves i think i got that wrong ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves i don't know uh, dan murphy says can lou michelle get back to that one because that's not for me to read <laughs> christopher sampson i want to talk to Sampson. Fly me to the moon like that bitch. Alice Crampson says, good evening. Jay, thoughts are with you. I will make sure I relay this one to him as well. My friend, Mike, you're the hardest working man on YouTube. Dude, that's very sweet of you to say. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your super sweet fucking super chats. You're a goddamn um, kind human being. Uh, Evil Dead Rise seems like they recycled scenes. My dog just hit my camera. I swear to God, I'm going to call the fucking pound and tell him that he's escaped from here. Nice job, Kate. Nice job. What you do? Give him lessons? Did you give him driving lessons to escape? I'm yelling. I have headphones in. I'm sorry. What? Lick my lick your ass? KY. Oh. You did not. How dare you? I'm not. I'm glad you all like me because my wife doesn't. Says uh Evil Dead Rise seems like they recycled scenes from other movies that did it better. Uh Tarantino should direct uh a movie about gun violence hashtag canada yeah you know fucking can canadians and their smoke blowing it over here on our livestock now oh, my 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 pet chicken is coughing <laughs> i don't know i bet someone is mad about that somewhere but no um yeah dude thank you very much for saying that that's very sweet of you to say um it's not work if you love what you do <laughs> but um yeah, man, I, you know, I agree. I'll be honest, as much as I do like Evil Dead Rise, we just did a commentary for it on the Patreon. And like, I like it a little bit less every time I see it. 
like, and it's not that I like it a little bit less. I still find it fun. I'm glad it exists and it was a good time. And I'm glad Evil Dead Rise is is a part of the pantheon of the fucking movies. But like, yeah, I do find it less and less original each time I watch it. There's a little bit more CG than I noticed before and whatnot. So I feel like that was a built-in franchise to make a really good movie. And they, they were set up really nicely and they did a really nice job. But could it have been better? Fucking sure. Sure. Um I agree with you on that. I do. And I love you, Chris Sampson. Thank you, man. That was really sweet. Luke Weber says, got the day off for my son's second birthday. Congratulations on the son, on the second birthday to your son. But I'll hang with these guys while he's having a nap. Love from Australia. Boys night. Yeah, dude. We're going to take, that's what dudes do. That's what we do. We we get together. We turn on WCW SummerSlam 1997. We break out some, some drinks. Right, we get some fucking tequila to get us loosened up, and then we start to have the competition who can rub each other down in oil faster. And then we rub each other down in oil, and then we watch SummerSlam, and we start taking shots of tequila. And then we get fucking like, don't wake up the kid though. So we're like whispering, we're like hyping each other up, just a bunch of dudes in their underwear and oil, and we're fucking screaming at each other, but we're whispering while we do it. So like, you're fucking the best dad, dude. No, you're the fucking best dad, dude. No, dude. You fucking, you got those TPS reports in on time. I was like, I know. And then respect me. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah. And then you start fucking doing the rope. There is no actual rope. So you just suck and you start sucking your friend off. And whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'd like to apologize. But congratulations on your son's second birthday, is what I was trying to say. And uh, you're a good man. Good man. You got to party while your kid's sleeping. That's how you parent. Parents can party too. You just got to do it while the kids are taking a nap. Hey, man. Hi. It's good to see you. Could you be the most beautiful girl in the world? Oh, could you be? Jiggle, jiggle. Plain to see. Hey. God hey. made a girl because of ye. That's not how it goes. Hey. Dan Murphy said, can Lewis shout out my boys Ben Dover and Jack Mehoff? Those mm. are wonderful names, Christian mm. names, I believe, from the Bible. Uh, it's Is it me, or are there no horror movies to look forward to this year? Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely not you. I don't, I don't, is there? I don't think so. I mean, the boogeyman. I do feel less excited than usual. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's not, yeah, well, I mean, it's not just because Halloween's not on the horizon. I, I, I or, or Friday the 13th, or there's not, I don't, I don't know if it, it does maybe, feel sort maybe of like indie, maybe there's an indie movie coming out that we're not aware of that's gonna be awesome. I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple, but it, I, I agree, man. It, it does feel a little less we've been we've been treated really nicely. We've been taken out to all the good restaurants for the past couple of years of our relationship, and now there's nothing left to eat at but the Applebee's or Waffle House um, at yeah. three in the morning, which is always but, a good uh, time. Don't get me wrong, no, but still nothing wrong with it. Always gonna be an arrest yeah. that happens at 3 a.m. at Waffle House. But what does Loomis think about Ben Dover and Jack Mehoff? He Okay. As a, as a whole. Right, so, what time are you at? Oh, well, I got a couple more to get to. So, I'll okay. Wait uh, Ben Dover and uh, Jack Mihoff. Well, obviously, you're talking about someone bending over and then Jack putting his meat in that asshole. Oh. Um, it's a dumbass question, Dan. Hot pocket. And uh, only a dumbass person like you would ask such a question. Uh, I can't believe that you function in a human society. Uh, listen, you know what's happening right now? They miss you at careerbuilder.com. So, go get you a job. <laughs> And stop asking stupid questions about Ben Dover and Jack Mehoff. Because obviously you're talking about things you like to do in private. No one's judging you. But at the same time, you're not contributing to society. You tax-saluting asshole. Goodbye, Dan. <laughs> Michael Barton also asks, has Dr. Loomis and Chalice ever been on a gay cruise together? And would they go on one with me? Um, you give me enough strawberry daiquiris. And uh, I will go on a cruise with Jay because I, I know... Uh, what his what uh, it, uh, 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 doctor, doctor Loomis will sometimes do this thing on cruises where he'll he'll wave his dingling, he'll open up his his uh his trench coat and uh he'll wave his dingling around, and I can pretend that's a woman, you know, because it mm. just looks kind of like an oversized clip. Uh, Michael Parton, I'm a straight, I'm a straight man, I'm a doctor, all right, I'm a doctor, I have sex with women. All right. Now I may watch men have sex from time to time, and 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 uh, I have a really good imagination, all right. Um, but I'm gonna have to deny your advances. Just don't come around me uh when I'm napping because I have sleep sex. Um, that's actually too close to home for uh that's actually a, it's a real condition. 
Now, clearly, okay. Dr. Chalice, with his fantasies, uh, is in a Zoloft overdose. Uh, he does take it quite a bit because he's a piece of shit father. And I he's stored a goddamn it. cheating uh, human sublime whore. I anyway, so I, 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 yeah, I would definitely go on a cruise, uh, on a gay cruise, because, you know, it's happy. Uh, a gay cruise would be a very happy time, hence the name gay. Uh, sure. So you're all going to have a good time. And, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I'll go with you and uh, get away from Michael would, for a few days would be nice. Uh, Dr. Chalice would be filling up some man or woman, uh, whatever. And that's fine. We'll have, probably have uh, the police waiting us when we board the shore. Uh, because of sexual assault. But anyway, yes, I would do it. I want to get away from Michael for a while, so it's fine. And hopefully mm -hmm. Michael tries to follow me and he drowns in the river. I'll drink the all the Bud Light you got. That doesn't mean I like men. All right? Mm -hmm. Or do I? Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? Of course, ask, yes. your, ask your local congressman. I would call that a big yes. Steve. Christopher Sampson. I would call that a big yes. Christopher Sampson wanted you to know his thoughts were with you, by the way, hmm. um, as well. Thank you, man. I want to Thank throw you, that out there. Appreciate that, bro. And uh, that leaves us to, um, uh, by the way, Chris is also a Canadian living in the United States. Ah, sorry, sorry. Well, I wasn't about talking that. about you, Chris. I was just talking about your country overall. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about both things. I don't uh, even know how that should happen. I mean, you guys in the comments are smarter than us, and you guys follow it closely. Did they just like who the fuck lit the fire? Was it Billy Joel out there? Like we didn't start the yeah. fire. Was Billy Joel singing? And then someone like always took it literally, and then they just start burning the forest. <laughs> it's like Canadian, but in I are smoking pot. I heard like beer. Justin, the prime minister, didn't even apologize. I was like, was he like what happened, or is it just like a freak ass <laughs> accident? I don't know. Um, by the way. We love our Canadian brethren, and we'd love for you to teach us how to play hockey, um, mm. naked with your dicks. Yeah. You also have um, great maple syrup. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Macadamian's where we're at. Eight thirty-four p.m. By the way, and I'll get back. When I get back, we will get fucking hardcore into this list. I promise you guys. Oh, We've we been dicking so, around for too have, long. You know, we have been so fucking idiots tonight. We're sorry. I love men. Um, l love being here. 8.34 p.m., Mr. Macadamian. Yeah, uh, yeah, 8.34 who? Mr. Macadamian. He loves oh, nuts. <laughs> yeah. He loves nuts. Because the Macadamians uh, are nuts. That's a group of nuts. And cookie, the nuts, macadamian nuts. Have you ever had those wasabi almonds? No, wasabi's fucking disgusting. And people yeah, who that, eat no, wasabi it, no, should honestly good. punch no, themselves in the dick. I swear to God, dude, it's good. It's not like you're going to store it like Steve-O. No, dude, when my, when my sushi touches the wasabi, I almost throw up. Wasabi's fucking disgusting. I can't stand it. Don't actually uh, ever look me in the eyes again if you eat that. Eat it Unless... while I'm looking at you. <laughs> eat, it, eat it from the back like real men. That's gross. Be a man. Eat it from the back. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Don't want those right, balls get... getting in the way. Yeah. You can swing them around like one of those like psychology things. <laughs> That's how you know you're telling I don't know truth. what those things are called. You know, like... you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, I got it. I got it. All right, be right back. Mr. Macadamian. Hey, it's Mike. <laughs> it's just going to be a voiceover. <laughs> hey, all right. It's just going to be an empty wall. Oh, there we are. Okay, so Mr. Macadamian uh, says, Love you, beautiful sons of wonderful mothers. Never stop the channel. Without you, my work life would be more horrifying than Jay's ex wife. I don't believe you. Nothing is more horrifying than that tarantula sized bitch that comes from the deepest, darkest parts of your nightmares that sucks the soul right out of your asshole. Uh, but I'm glad to have you along, Mr. Macadamia, and I appreciate you very much. Uh, thank you so much there. Uh, let's go on through. We're cruising, we're cruising, we're cruising, we're cruising. Holy shit! John fucking Winston, dude. Holy shit and fuck. Uh, John, you know, that is quite a large amount of uh, yayo. Uh, that you're that you're displaying there. Holy shit, man! Uh, I'm gonna wait for Mike to come back. That's 8:37. We'll uh, read that together. But thank you so much, John. Holy fucking shit! Um, now you know what? I'll read it right now, and then Mike can get back to it too. He says, uh, "Back in the day when flying, or back in back in the day when flying with team, they had a house of wax, chainsaw beginning, 06, Hitcher, the Notebook, Beauty Shop, Legally Blonde, Million Dollar Baby, Halloween, Rob Zombie, 07. Them some badass movies. We used to put those movies on." in all season on the airplane just fun fact take care jay mike hey that's cool man um i actually like most of those uh, selections um house of wax is fun chainsaw beginning is great hitcher is great the notebook uh it's sad uh beauty shop don't know I, i'm drawing a blank on that legal lawns 
not bad actually. Million Dollar Baby, holy fucking shit. Yes, Clint Eastwood, give me some of that. Halloween Rob Zombie 07, we have you there. Yes, thank you so much. That, that's good. Yeah, um, those that's a great if that's what you were watching on on the plane <clears throat> going from you know place to place, that's not a bad that's not a bad lineup right there. It's a little weird because <laughs> like, you're going from uh House of Wax and Chainsaw, and then you're going um <clears throat> to like beauty shop and legally blonde and million dollar baby and, and then to Halloween, but it's not bad at all, man. That's some good shit right there. I like that. I like that plane ride. A lot of time for tequila. Austin uh, comes in and says, uh, I saw Spider-Verse last night and I was disappointed. I didn't see Jay, the silk shooter, featured more prominently, Evil Beware. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I want to see it, actually. I know that some people are saying that it's not as good as the original one, but I didn't think it was going to be. But I'm still looking forward to watching it at some point. Um, and I like Miles Morales. I first, I yeah, I've come around to Miles Morales. I remember when he was first introduced in Ultimate Spider-Man in the comic books. Uh, I was kind of like, I don't care. I mean, he wasn't really interesting to me. But as I read about him more and kind of got to know his character and what they were doing with him, I actually enjoyed him a lot. So it kind of sucks that people weren't that excited about it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll uh, I hope to check it out. But soon, but thank you, Austin. Uh, Michael says. My favorite models are the ones from uh, Men, Sean Cody, Naked Sword, Bromo, Icon Mail, Falcon Studios, and William William Higgins. What the fuck? Is... Michael, I don't know what this means. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're male models, uh, I assume. Uh, are they like, do they like do like Abercrombie and Fitch and shit? Icon Mail, that's the guy's name. His name is Icon. Holy shit. Talking about, you know, no doubt whatsoever. He's an icon. Like that guy has no problem with his ego. Naked sword. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Well, good stuff right there, man. Uh, I don't have a favorite model, I don't think. Uh, Anthony Fitzgerald says, Damn it, Jay, just admit Stu is alive. Get it up. No, he's not alive, dude. I'm telling you. I'm sorry. I, I know that some of you beautiful bastards want it to be true, and I just cannot get on this train with you and travel to the next station. It's just not possible. Listen, he had a big giant fucking TV. Drop on his fucking head. He was bleeding out from the stab wound already. And then a TV that was plugged in, mind you. And I'm not talking about like a flat screen. I'm talking about them old school ass, like people that grew up in the 90s and early 2000s. Understand those motherfuckers that weighed like 60 fucking pounds dropped on his fucking head. All right. And if he is alive, that motherfucker is brain damaged and walking around like Forrest Gump. There's no fucking way that he is a goddamn threat to society any longer. But I, even uh, Ski Ulrich. Was like, no, nah, man, you're dead, Matt. You're dead. Like they, I watched something on YouTube and they were like bringing up the Stu Lives thing, <laughs> and Ski Ulrich's like, no, nah, man, you're dead. Like, there's no fucking way. But you know, look, it's the movie business. Anything can happen. So we'll see. But I'm not gonna admit it. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it fits in the story. But whatever, dude. I hope it. I hope for your sake, it's good. Uh, Stacy James, just sending love and sending it back to you, Stacy. Thank you, man. Appreciate that with a little heart. I, I appreciate that, man. Appreciate you, Stacy. Um, uh, and we got, uh, Colton Candler, Affleck on the set of Deadpool, Daredevil, let's go. Was he? Dude, that's cool, man. I, you know, here's the thing about, uh, Affleck's Deadpool. I don't think he was a bad, uh, not, not, not Affleck's Deadpool, a Affleck's Daredevil. I don't think he was a bad Daredevil. I feel like the script was weak. I feel like there was a lot of, I feel like, uh, and, and how are you going to misuse Colin Farrell like that, man? Holy shit, dude. He was great as uh, as Bullseye, but the character was written so poorly and so comedic, like, corny. It was just, it didn't work. Bullseye is one of the, like, Daredevil's most iconic villains, right? And then you have Michael Clark Duncan, uh, and, and he was great as Kingpin, but then you have, like, when he's walking around with his, with his diamond-ass staff, and he's like, I'm an outlaw, quick on the draw. Like, I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Hey, by the way, I'm going to let you know, man, John Winston came in here and, and was dropping yes. some fucking body slams and saying, WWE, what? I don't even fucking believe wrestling is real, but I'm going to show you what's real and pile drive your fucking faces with reality. And he, I answered his question, but you can go ahead and answer that question as well. Uh, it wasn't really a question. It was just a statement. And I commented on that statement. He's absolutely right. I, absolutely. And I, I just saw that was the first one I saw when I was scrolling down. I know you've already talked about it, so I won't stay too long on it. But like, dude. First off, fucking thank you, man. Like, oh, so good. is is in fucking insane that and and honest to God, like, like, fucking, 
that's it's crazy dude that you do that and we were so fucking thankful for it thank you so much man and thank everybody in here that that super chats and and that watches like all of you guys fucking this right here it's the reason we're here tonight doing this not to say we're here for the you know for that that kind of amazing super generous super chat but like the reason the show exists and keeps going is because all you who who the john winston's everybody who super chats yeah. everybody who just takes the time to just watch this it's fucking amazing uh cheers to fucking everybody cheers to you guys no. thank you guys so no. fucking much man we are some lucky little boys the support and is great don't say it like you're michael jackson don't ever say it like that again we're what lucky little boys we're lucky little boys no, we're lucky that's not what I meant. <laughs> don't don't make it like that. Just come we're, to my we're, rant. We're lucky men. God damn it. Be a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, honestly, and you're right, dude. I think that's why, like, our generation, John, is like obsessed with remakes, is because we grew up with some fucking bangers, dude. The ones that you mentioned there. And a lot of them came out whenever it was like fucking remakes, are stupid. Hollywood has no ideas. But then movies like you talked about would come out and it'd be like. Damn, we actually did grow up through some good fucking movies, man. Well, I graduated. Like, I graduated high school in 03. Um, and so I was right in the. So I was 18. I was right in the middle of all that, like movie the, those movies coming out. And it's it, well, I think it's the same for anybody. Uh, you don't appreciate the movies when they're coming out while they're coming out. It's not until years later you're like, man, I, I lived through some like good ass music and some good ass movies that were being released. Like you imagine someone that grew up in the eighties, right. That was 18 yeah. or, or 17. That was getting to see nightmare on Elm street and Friday the 13th and all that shit. They probably be like, yeah, whatever, man. I, I saw that movie. And then I was at the laundromat a few hours later drinking <laughs> beer. And I was like, it's all right. It's all right. I was like, dude, yeah. you got to fucking see nightmare on Elm street one, the original in 84. Holy shit. And then, you know, people would be the same way. Like we got to see Spider Man with Tobey Maguire. I know it's not a horror movie, but we got to see Spider Man and Tobey Maguire. Yeah, we saw like, we the saw right the, age. We saw the birth of superhero movies yeah. actually being good, X -Men, and then like X Men and, and Spawn, all that shit. Yeah, yeah, and like these movies that you're talking about, like the horror really? remakes and stuff. At the time, we're all like, "Oh, fucking bullshit!" But like now, you look back and like the 2000s, especially with the remakes, they did them right. They did them yeah. good in a lot of fucking cases. Which gets to, hey, John, we love you, dude. Thank you Thank so you, fucking man. much, man. We really, really appreciate um, you. Yeah, Bill and Ted. It's kind of like the Bill and Ted thing with 2000s. It's like not bad, but it's only afterwards. Like if now that you're a little older, because yeah, everything else, everything else is so clean and corporate looking that's coming out and and so CG. I mean, even though in the early the CG was still present and it was still ugly because there was like, it was still early CG effects yeah. uh, and it was still bad, but it was, but they at least it tried to do a story and but nowadays the, they don't even do that anymore. Yeah. And like the, the, the mid two thousands were, they weren't afraid to be mean. Like they were, they would be fucking gnarly. Speaking of the, the next one we'll go into, um, <clears throat> uh, I was sorry. I was outside smoking inside of the smoke coming from Canada. So it was double getting in my lungs. It's were you smoking the there, Chiba? Dude. Yeah, <laughs> <Chiba, Chiba, Chiba. laughs> Um, but yeah, let's pull up this one. Speaking of that, in honor of John Winston, one of the ones that came out in the mid two thousands that was gnarly was the Hills Have Eyes remake. I, I, I mean, I personally, I put it real awesome. Um, it was Same. one of the when I when I watched it, I, I think I bought this movie on DVD. I had heard about. Um, I had actually never seen the the original with John Carpenter. I mean, or maybe I had, and I just forgot about it. But That's I remember, great. I remember seeing the trailer for this and I was like, Holy shit. It looks so fucking weird and crazy and cool at the same time. And I, I, I bought it on DVD. You had to go to Walmart at Monday night at midnight. <laughs> yeah. to get The unrated. Yeah, I get the fucking TV. thing right away. And that's what I did. I, I used to do that all the time. That was the good old days of Walmart <laughs> before COVID. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so I, I bought the movie and I loved it. I watched it. It's so disgusting and, and so nasty, especially what they do with the baby and there's like a lot of fucked up things in it. And it's like something that you don't want to show your girlfriend. Like you don't want to think you're, you know, you're a freak. The first time it's like, Hey, you want to watch a horror movie? What about this one? I don't <laughs> yeah. don't use this one as a, as a way to express your uh, cinema love, but need, needless to say, as a remake, I think they did fucking awesome, dude. Like they definitely capture the whole, like freaks in the desert and, and, the, and the isolation and the fear and like being hunted, all that stuff is in there. And it's perfectly like captured. So it's a, it's a real awesome movie to me. Yeah. I'm, I go real awesome as well. It's one of those movies where you watch and you go, Oh my God, this movie's mean as fuck. Like I yeah. cannot believe they're doing the things that they're doing, but the cinematography was really cool. Like the characters were well done. It was a well-balanced movie. It wasn't one of those movies. that's like, we're going to be mean for the sake of being mean. It actually had weight to it, yeah. you know, and it had some gnarly shit. And then they came out with the unrated version of it, which was a crazy thing in the two thousands. Cause they always had like, there was always the unrated version of the movie that was already fucking gnarly. And I, I love this 
movie. I love watching. I think the sequel sucked, but I agree with you, man. It's real awesome. Yeah, the sequel's stupid. Um, um, yeah, it's good. <coughs> damn, yeah, it's funny like say if you like it, you like. Oh, I'll bet you like watching goddamn uh, fucking uh, snuff films too. If you like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one was already in there. We already got that one. Uh, speaking of another awesome mid two thousands remake, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I say all fucking timer, Dan. Let's go um, ahead and put it up there and knock the goddamn cows' brains out. And that bitch running up on us. Let's go ahead and do it. Go ahead and get him, father. Get him. Get that chainsaw, cousin. Dude, Put it up look there at in the old timer. Look at his face. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it looks like when you walk out of a when you just dropped a load in your friend's bathroom, and his mom walks by, and you're like, <laughs> it looks like you're it looks like your drunk uncle in Kentucky after you drank the last natural light. Yeah, like, I gotta get some more. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, when you make well, your, I mean, your your wife a quesadilla. <sighs> We we talk about this movie good. at length, man. Uh, it's so good. Yeah. It, it, it's and Jessica Biel's ass is so fucking hot. Oh my lord! Maybe the greatest ass that has ever graced ever. The and, and, yeah, who cares? She's got a dusty butt in the movie. Dusty butt Johnson. Who cares? But yeah, dude, it's great. The only thing that it was missing, they didn't have the. No, they did have the wheelchair guy, didn't they? I think they did. I can't remember. I <laughs> like I in the original one. Uh, I like the, the I like the wheelchair guy. I did. I liked his. I, he kind of reminded me of a World of Warcraft MMO gamer in the seventies. I kind of. I don't know why. I just liked it. He made me comfortable. <laughs> and it was, then I, I, maybe they didn't have that one in this one. It, it had it. It had it all, man. Like I, for some reason, I'm like blanking on whether it was the dude in the wheelchair or not. But that I think the dude in the wheelchair was one of the annoying aspects of the first movie no, for sure. Great. And like I think this movie took out that it 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 took out the really as I think seventy four was definitely scarier and I think it's a superior movie but it's arguable I wouldn't disagree with somebody if they like two thousand three better because it cut out like the dark really annoying like screaming and like the shit that was really scary about yeah. it they kind of took it out but they still made it scary and they they imagined Leatherface as just like a fun slasher movie without all like the the literally that, feeling uh, like you're in a room full of fucking melting animals. So I feel like, Toby, well, I feel like Toby Hooper was the one that was using the well back in the day the camera that he was using and just the way that it was shot and it was a low budget type of movie, which is it, it, it gave it more of that homemade type of horror aspect yeah. to it in the 70s. But this movie, I, I feel like this movie is is the equivalent of what uh Rob Zombie did with Halloween. It brought back a focus to uh Leatherface and the family and 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 the whole mythos of Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a way that no other movie had done before. And I yeah. love it, dude. I wish they had kept on doing things in the same vein as this movie, but unfortunately, they fucked it up and they wanted to go back and do all the stupid, dumb shit. But they, uh, and with the beginning, they did a little bit. But like, yeah, I mean, like, honest to God, man, this movie had the cool ass cinematography for it. it. Had a great opening, great ending. That one shot of the girl who pulls the gun literally out of her hoo ha and kills herself, mm. and then when the way that they take that camera and it goes back through the hole in her head, that fucking cool. gnarly. They weren't afraid to get. That was again a, another thing about the mid 2000s. They weren't afraid to get messy and disgusting and mean. So when you were watching these movies, you knew to expect anything. And they just made Leatherface a scary fucking they also badass. Had, uh, Lee Army was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking amazing, yeah. dude. Really good. Um, the Fly, probably an all timer. I'd say definitely an all timer. God damn, dude. Yeah. It, it's one of the, it's one of the f most fucked up movies i've ever seen but one of those fascinating movies it's like picking a scab on your arm you know you shouldn't do it because you're gonna give yourself a scar but you can't Doesn't help this movie do make it. you cry no it's the second one the second one makes me cry oh okay because okay. they fucking experiment on the dog and it's awful and i hated it and i never i didn't see it coming but uh the fly one dude what an awesome performance by goldblum jeff goldblum yeah. really like uh, like turns it all in in this one and and the, and the girl uh she's um i think it's gina that's no, not, not not gina uh gina davis I think Gina Davis is the uh, girl in this one, the one from yeah, Beetlejuice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She is. she's so fucking good, and there's the chemistry is on point between the two. But the whole idea with an obsessed scientist that he's like, I gotta make this work, and he gets in there and a fucking fly because it's goddamn summer, and I hate the fucking summer because of that mm -hmm. goddamn reason. These maggots become flies. He gets in your transport pod, and then you become a fly, and now you're vomiting on your food and eating it, it just like David Hasselhoff, like a Wendy's burger. No it's one wants worst. to see it. But anyway. It is David Cronenberg's. It's one of his. I think it's his best, in my opinion. Well, it's definitely up there, dude. As far as like a great, the story is paced well. The characters are well defined. The story itself is really interesting and good. And 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 to be honest with you, man, there is a tragic story. It's tragic at the end of the movie. Fuck what yeah. he has to do, has to, what he has to do. 
Dude, mm-hmm. but it's so and it's so fucking gross too. It's so gross when he's pulling off his Dude. fucking fingernails. God damn it! Why did you have to show him pulling <laughs> off his fingernails? Though these, those, these, though these are remakes. There are so many movies in this list that did what movies today so rarely fucking do, and that's practical effects. And this is maybe the king of that. Well, the the thing would be the the king. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, I think uh, so, of yeah. that. But like this is right there with it as far as practical effects. They didn't go CG. They didn't fucking get lazy on it. They knew what horror fans wanted to see, and they delivered it in spades. Yeah, I go all timer. Yeah, dude. Like can you, when, the well, the the transformation scene, the slow transformation scene of uh, Goldberg, Goldberg, Goldblum becoming <laughs> the fly. <laughs> Goldberg. Ooh. Yeah, like remember when he comes out in the fireworks and he breathes the smoke in? That's <laughs> yeah. what happened in the movie. But no, it, it, Goldblum. When Jeff Goldblum do the slow transformation, makes it more horrific. The, yeah. the, you know, because they show him pulling his teeth out, the fucking fingernails, and then his hair. And then remember that one point though, when he's like still kind of like he's still normal, and he gets like this extra like sexual sense, and he goes mm. out and he picks up that hooker and he breaks that dude's arm and arm. Remember, he breaks that fucking dude's arm in half, and then yeah. he fucks this girl with his dirty that's ass fucking fly maggot. Juicy. Why don't? That's why I don't drink tequila anymore. Oh, that's exactly geez. what I do every fucking time. I was like, I've never been to a Louisiana bar, but I'll bet it's like that with all the swamp <laughs> ass going around. Really easy one. We know where this one goes. Down and dirty butt, Dusty. But Dusty, I mean Steve. We're gonna stick this one. We're gonna cram this in 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 Steve's asshole. Yep. Cram it in your cram hole, the floor. Poltergeist is a piece of shit. Yeah, dude, it's weird. I just watched the original one, and they had. First off, I don't think it should have ever been remade. Poltergeist okay. is a is a classic movie for a reason. Um, and it, and it's y'all had perfectly- Sam Rockwell. Yeah, you had Sam Rockwell, one of the best actors ever. But by the way, I don't even think Poltergeist needed to be remade. It was one of the best uh, ghost movies ever done. Ever, I mean, it, you were you talking about legends here. You're talking about Toby Hooper directed Poltergeist, written by Steven Spielberg. Can you get a fucking amen in the house of the church? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But and then you're gonna remake that movie, and you're gonna fuck up with Sam Rockwell. Get they didn't in his asshole and dig me some diamonds. They didn't even try. They didn't even try. And by the way, the new Exorcist movie that's coming out, this is the floor. The floor is that you make a movie like fucking Poltergeist, well, which doesn't even touch the, the, the crust of what First off, I like how they use the clown on, on the cover of the of the poster. Like, that but shit like going to scare you. It looks like garbage. Like, that, yeah. it looks like some fucking shit that your mom would buy you, like, an off-brand thing at the flea market that's supposed to be, like, the actual thing that everybody wants. <laughs> that but, reminds me of Eminem. Here, mama, try it on. Yeah, it, it looks like shit. And the clown <laughs> thing was scary in the original Poltergeist, but it wasn't overdone. Nobody was really scared yeah. of the clown. It was Peace. overall piece of shit oh shit we already did this one sorry sorry i get horny sometimes in the night um oh dude i fucking i think well here's here's where i am on that okay it's it's got ron reynolds sexy beard and his abs so hot he's got like eight abs like when he's chopping wood his abs have abs yeah he could he could he could chop me up any day uh i i mean and he's but it was i'm not gay but i fucked that man yeah it's it's actually a really interesting uh, movie though because um, it here. was one of the first few movies that you saw that Ryan Reynolds wasn't doing a comedy character. He wasn't doing a comedic role. And he does a really good job. Now, don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. The original Amityville Horror is done extremely well. And it's and, and it's shot well. And it looks good. And the pacing is good on that one. But this one does a really good job. I am in the category of real awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's about where I'm at with it. I live there, too. My heart burns there, too. Uh, and I, I'd even consider if, if somebody else said real awesome or, or, or all timer, I'd be I'd be like, I ain't going to argue with you, John. But like, honestly, I mean, Mark I think it's it a stick so bad. <laughs> oh, dude. When it yeah, comes he, out, he, dude, he wish he bought it to his fucking phone company so he could be like, I was touching Ryan Reynolds in. Yeah, spirit. dude, I got Mint Mobile just hoping I could f- butt fuck Ryan Reynolds. But like when he <laughs> when he comes out, dude, with the boathouse scene where he comes out and he's wearing nothing but those like skivvy fucking uh, uh, pajama pants, and he's like, oh, there's something in the boathouse. I was like, God damn it, my wife is never gonna ever find me. That's that why you don't watch it with your lady. Don't watch it with your lady because you know. Oh, Jesus the first thing Christ. you're like, are you looking at him? You looking at how hot it is, and she's like, "No, this, I'm just watching the movies." Like, you shut your whore mouth up. <laughs> this and Blade Trinity, dude, was like at the same time for Ryan Reynolds, and everybody's like, "God damn, dude, you're too hot to breathe. You need to stop breathing because you're too fucking hot." I don't, think, he's that, I don't it, think I don't think his face is that hot. I think his body is like he, he's got a good. Look. I mean, he, and he's he got the out. comedy on top of it. The he's, comedy, he's unstoppable. Well, yeah, it does. But I mean, I think that he's just a, you know he's he's well built and he and he's got a good following. And it's, he's got <laughs> he's got great comedy. The thing about that sells this movie that makes him like really stand out. His fucking beard is on point. 
Dude, he's he got grew, great beard, and, too. And he grew that How shit. How the fuck do you like, get That wasn't like pubic hair that they patched onto his face like a jackass. Yeah. This was his fucking full-on beard. No, dude. It's not fair. It's not fucking fair. He has the perfect beard. But it's crazy because he's the he's the stepdad in all this, right? And he comes in there, and they have that. The movie's actually, like, we're joking around about a lot of Ryan Reynolds stuff, but, like, the movie's actually super underrated. And this movie, yeah. when it came out, everybody just kind of washed it to the side as, like, this Hollywood cheese fest or whatever. But, like, when you go back and watch it, man, it's actually freaky. When he's in the basement, and they, he's cold and he keeps going to get warm and those fucking things in the wall like start yeah. popping out and all that shit's going on and then there's the fucked up stuff going on with the kids like it's well, a he, really good remake like the, it's kind of scary at times the thing i hated the most about it and and i remember this um when i first watched it and i and i it was it wasn't long ago i watched it again um i hated the little girl ghost with a bullet thing in her head i feel like it was unnecessary i didn't like, very 13 ghostish by the way yeah it was but i was like i don't fucking need to see that in this movie like what what was scary about this film was the the uh slow descent into insanity by the main character very much jack nicholson in the shining yes if you yeah. had done that kind That's of sexy. angle and just <laughs> yeah right. it's so hot it's so hot uh if you just kept going with that and then not included because the original amdville didn't do that they didn't need to it was yeah. more of like we're seeing shit and this is happening, but my husband is so distant and and reserved because of all, and he's going insane. Mm. I think that's fucking scarier than the whole, uh, you know, I'm a ghost girl with a bullet hole in my head and I live in the coffin. <laughs> I think it's yeah. so, I think it's so no. cheap. I think it's cheap. Uh, no, I, I I mean that that there was that aspect of it too, but you also like you said you got the shiny aspect of the dad, and he would grab those kids, and the, you're watching Ron Reynolds, who's this beloved fucking species or, or specimen yeah. of a person, yeah. and he's like grabbing little kids by their face, he's like you listen to your fucking mom, <laughs> and like there's so many of us kids who like dealt with the dad that did that. Was uh, like, yeah, I was just like, with, like, oh well, that's familiar. <laughs> yeah, don't don't make me tell your fucking dad. And you're like, yeah. oh shit, dad's yeah. outside chopping wood. He's like, I better not hear that you got fucking detention today. I think it's <laughs> you know, like I, listen. I, I, and I liked it a lot because, again, um, it was the first time I'd ever seen. I mean, Van Wilder was in like 2003 or 04 mm. or something like that. And then this came out like very, very quickly after that. And, and it, like it, it showed his range as an actor. Yeah. But it by did. the way, you got to look at the fact. Yeah, he was great. You got to look at the fact that no one expected him to be that good. I, and, and you look <laughs> at something like Barry, right? With Ron Reynolds, Barry. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Actor. I will say, amazing. I will. I will toot my own fucking horn on this one. Like I, I saw Ryan Reynolds back in the day. And by the way, comedy recommendation for my you guys. Like he fucking discovered him. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at a I'm, club. I'm like, I saw him at I'm a club. Like, and I'm like, yeah. I'm that like, guy's I'm got like, it. I'm like LeBron James when he's like, no, I heard Fetty Wap way back in the day. Yeah. yeah. No, like honest to God though. Like I, from the, from the early beginnings, man, I always really liked Ryan Reynolds and there's a comedy recommendation I have for you guys who miss comedies please watch a movie called buying the cow with him and Jerry O'Connell and Bill Bellamy in it from the nineties. Fucking amazing movie. I promise you'll laugh your ass off. Tell me about it afterwards, but no, like from the beginning of his career, dude, I loved him at Van Wilder. And I always said that guy is going to be a fucking great actor. And I watched it. I even watched the pieces of shit. He shits he put out. Yeah. But this was the only reason I bring that up is actually because like, this was right when everybody still thought like, oh, he's just a pretty face. Yeah. And like he shows off how good of an actor he is. And if you're paying attention, he tells you what a good actor he is. And now the whole world knows it. But like, yeah, he fucking rules. Dude. Real Mike, awesome. act, Mike act like he's Bobby Heenan from WVF. I knew talent <laughs> when I saw Rick Flair the first time. <laughs> I'm Matthew McConaughey. I'm, I'm Matthew. Uh, uh, oh, fuck. What's his name? Um, God damn it. The dude from Air. Matthew Ben Affleck's friend. No, I thought McConaughey too. Uh, the We Bought a Zoo guy, Matt Air. Damon. I'm Matt oh, Damon, Matt Damon in Air. Yeah. I knew Jordan was going to be great before everyone. You know, I heard, I heard, I haven't watched that movie yet. Uh, you got it. Heard, it's I, awesome. No, I heard it. It should have been 45 minutes. They're like, it, it, like it's way too extended. It's way too long, and well, you don't. Get whoever said that out. doesn't know anything about. Well, it was Doctor Disrespect who said that. And nah, fuck him in the ass. Fan. Fuck so, you, Doctor Dis Doctor Dis You can't even say his name right. Cock sucking piece of. Piece of you, you don't even show your face. You don't even show your real face. No, you piece does. of shit. No, he does. Oh well, he has a wig on, but yeah. Fucking nerd. Um, how about this fucking thing? To this me, dude, fucking thing. Uh, I I'm not gonna put it any higher than real awesome. I loved it. I thought it was really good. I actually have this on my list. Uh, I gotta watch that. I I'm gonna watch that tonight because I feel naughty. I'm gonna watch that tonight. On my, uh, <laughs> I feel not I, I, I have it on my Prime list, uh, on my Amazon Prime list. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. I know I do. I I like those fucked up movies for some reason. I don't, maybe I'm psychopathic. I don't know. 
I thought it was I, I really enjoyed it and I was rooting for the bad guys the entire time. What? I like the way yeah, I, I like the what? way they were put together. I like what they were saying. That. I like no, I loved it all. I, I was like, yeah, destroy those fucking rich ass motherfuckers That's and show them what so it's all about. Fucked. Oh yeah, my god! I I, we need to get you in therapy. No, I'm, 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 I'm in therapy. For you I killed right it. now. I killed it. No, I beat. No, I beat. No, I beat but no, I, I, I do. I, I, I just enjoy it. I think it was a really well done movie, and I, I think all the cast in the film was great. Um, I really enjoyed all of them. Um, even well, the guy, and the guy on the right, I felt like he was going to be like that fucking annoying dude from Monster. Uh, you, you guys ever seen that movie Monster? Uh, the guy from Terminator. Three John Connor that you fucking mm -hmm. hate was the in Monster. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I can't name. think of his name, but I know yeah, that, it kind of gave me those kind of weird. Like if <laughs> that movie fucks me up, like, but it's like it's so, it's so good you want to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, I, no, it's kind of like a, the what, what's that one with uh, Antonio Banderas where he makes the guy the skin I live in, dude. Yeah, wow, same. Yeah, amazing wow. fucking movie. And I've watched that movie several times, and it's so fucking good. This oh Nick Stahl, by the way, thank you, Mister Nick Stahl. Yeah, Nick, uh, Nick Stahl. Uh, I, I am putting this to a vote right now because for me, this is an all timer, and the reason I say that is because this oh, movie. You thought you me thought up. I was a psychopath, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of the uh, yes, please. I, I think, dude, uh, like, honest to God, um, I've watched this. I've watched the original. As far as movies that you need a shower after, as far as, like, I don't enjoy watching it. It's very fucking uncomfortable. But I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat honestly say they've never seen this. They don't know anything about Ooh, it. You guys got to check that out. Do what Jay's going to do tonight and watch this fucking movie, you, you guys. This movie will crawl inside of your skin and make you just want to fucking just, like, just jump out of your own goddamn window out of uncomfortableness and and fear. It's one of the scariest, most fucked up, disturbing movies I've no, ever seen. Well, no, no overstep. It's not scary. I think it's just it's scary up. as fuck, dude. It's you scary, scary as shit. It's out fucked of me. up. Ooh, it's, it's it's one of the fucking scariest things. I, I'll put it to a vote though. We'll see. Hey, I don't think we can disagree on this except for the fact all that timer. is it a remake or not? All -timer. It's fucking all time. All time. All time. All -timer. All -timer. Yes, sir. Guess who's on the wrong side of the river? Benny, you asshole. You fucking betrayer Benny. of, of words. Fucking dick. Benny. <laughs> Fuck you, Benny. Yeah, dude. And, and, you know, who doesn't love Brendan Fraser, dude? What a fucking badass. What a what a what a hero. What an iconic man. Uh, and everything he went through and he bounces back and, and he gets the uh, the Academy Award, I think. Awesome dude. And 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 not even just that though, the mummy itself, the, the film. So cool, man. It was very Indiana Jones uh, with um, very lighthearted PG-13 type of horror. Not so super, like, it wasn't intending to be, like, horrific, but it was just enough to keep kids, like, glued to the screen. And even adults, like, <laughs> Brendan Fraser is such a handsome man. I want to see what happens. And, yeah, I, I feel like it was a very Indiana Jones type of movie. And back in the day, I, I feel like Brendan Fraser, especially during this time period, could have played a pretty good Indiana Jones if they'd remade it at that point. Uh, I think it's a great movie. Uh, and by the way, the, the the main bad guy in this movie, uh, I can't uh, I can't remember his name. I, and I don't know why I can't remember his name because I always like quote the, some of the lines. He looked like Billy Zane. I thought Billy Zane for the longest yeah. time was yeah. fucking the bad guy. And I was like, yeah. be like, oh, you like Billy Zane? I was like, yeah, dude, I fucking loved him in The Mummy. I'm like, that's not Billy Zane. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh emotep emotep yeah uh, and, and like the, the whole death is only the beginning Dude, nowadays tell they me, cast him tell as me pit back bull. tell me back <laughs> tell me this do you not think that Brandon Fraser could have been a great Indiana Jones back in the day oh fuck yeah dude he's perfect yeah. this this 100%. movie proves he's perfect yeah I think he would have uh, been great the mummy is an all-timer i think like it's 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 it is the it's just a perfect movie like honestly if it came out in the 80s it would be like our indiana jones like i think it's the 90s version of indiana no, jones no it wouldn't you know overshadow I mean? indiana yeah amazing funny charismatic great has some horror elements to it it's questionable whether or not it's actually a remake but it's close enough you know to have some fun and talk about it uh did you ever see this one dude yeah we i, uh, I, I think we reviewed it uh elijah wood we did the original but not the one with elijah wood uh, I think I, I okay, did no, 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 in like no, 1994. No, you um, may go about you may go upon yourself, man. I will call it solidly fuckable. Uh, and, and to be fair, I need to go back and rewatch it because it was pretty good. It's pretty good. But like Elijah Wood in that role that was played by that dude, I can't remember his fucking name. Joe, uh, Joe fucking shit. What was that guy's name in the original one? Uh, anybody remember the the original Maniac? 
um, Joe Spinell. Joe Spinell, I think was his name. And that's the one you and I reviewed. Oh, yeah, that was a fucked up movie, dude. Nasty. Oh my God. Real yeah. nasty. And that actually, that that movie, the way that it was shot, looked like a snuff. That looked like a mm-hmm. snuff film. This movie kept that spirit alive, but it was a lot cleaner. It was really enjoyable. I'm just going to say fuckable. Um, I don't remember it that well, uh, but I, I do remember enjoying it. Just never feeling the need to go back and watch it again. So maybe it's real awesome, but I'm going to say fuckable for the sake of time. Mm-hmm. And for the sake of my wiener. What? Hey, this isn't technically a remake, right? Like, no, no, I know well, it's not. It, like, well, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. Yeah. It, well, I don't know. It's hard to describe what this is. Um, I, I kind of describe it as a box of shit with a, with a sweet smell. Um, <laughs> it's got a sweet smell to it. And you open it up, you're like, oh, it's a turd. But it has a sweet smell. I think it's fuckable. Um, you know, yeah, they... I'd they say kept more. They kept more in line with what Clyde Barker, I guess, wanted to do with with the original Hellraiser, but I I don't feel like they captured it at all. Uh, and to me, um, Doug Bradley is still superior. They didn't show me anything in this new Pinhead iteration Agreed. that like surpasses it. And not to be, uh, you know, um, misogynist thought, piece of shit. Well, no, I, I no, I'm not even like I don't care. About, no, I'm just I'm joking. Yeah, no, I'm well, just the, the, the the Pinhead girl. <laughs> Um, yeah, not and I know in the original novels it was a pinhead that was a girl, it wasn't even named Pinhead, it was the priestess or whatever the fuck. Yeah, mm-hmm. I get it, but there was something about this movie for me when I watched it, there was something clean about it. It was too clean, it was too like corporate, it was too Hollywood. There was something yep. I just there was something about the original Hellraiser and Hellraiser even two and 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 a lot of them that was something about gritty and dirty and nasty that got down in the dirt and fuck you and come down here and get the juicy garbage with me. And this one was just like made it like it felt you're looking a butt, but you're sober. Yeah. (laughs) That's meant for drunks. Well, no, yeah. Hellraiser, Hellraiser, the remake on Hulu is licking an asshole sober. That's what it is. (laughs) It was very clean. Yeah. I think that like, I enjoyed it. Like I did enjoy it because like, specifically for the reason that hellraiser had 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 such low production quality for so long before this movie you know and they brought in that new character of that dude uh i can't remember well, his well, name not that, well to be fair judgment was great what they did with judgment was awesome right but they had like nine dollars in a snickers but, they, but that guy was great though but no he was no he did a great job i, Paul yeah. Taylor, I can't remember his name. like he, it was but they, they they really um uh i think gary tonicliffe directed yeah they were that. running out a of long money. time they were running special effects money, yeah. he did the best he could and he made a decent yeah. movie with it and i would call that one fuckable too like i think this one's fuckable as well i think that it had I, it was just nice to see my point is it was nice to see a hellraiser movie with some production value behind it for mm. sure I did think it was going to be better than it turned out, but I still enjoy the product. Yeah, with that being said, I n- I've never felt the need to go back and watch it up to this point. Um, yeah. Well, I they, also, dislike- they also they also fucked around with the mythos, and they 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 try to play around with like yeah the mythos of Hellraiser. I'm like, all right, guys, like don't do that. Like, and I, yeah. and I like I know that some people enjoyed that, but I'm like, you can just do the movie where you can have a female pinhead, and that's fine. But don't fuck with the mythos. Yeah, and I, I'm fine with them trying new shit. I just think that, like, it just, at the end of the day, it was just like, hey, that was pretty good, and it was solid. It's like, it kind of forgettable in a weird way. I wish it was better, but yeah, it's fucking You know what? But me. that's why they chose not to put it in theaters. I don't think it would have made a fucking dollar. It may not have, and I wonder if we'll ever get a sequel. I don't know how well it did on Hulu. I do wonder if we'll ever get but that's what makes it so interesting, for sure. Um, fuck, then. This is the Vince Vaughn shot for shot. Now, now talk about remakes. Yeah. Like, at least they tried something different. This, yeah, they a, tried to shot for shot movie, it. Dude. It was the same yeah. movie, shot for shot. They literally didn't change anything. All they did was add color to it and added Vince mm-hmm. Vaughn. <laughs> this, I gotta be honest with you, man. I would put it in fuckable, but it's not. It sucks my butt because you might as well just watch. Yeah, it's pointless. It literally is the definition of a plagiarized movie shot for fucking yeah. shot. There's nothing new. Yeah. It's just a colorized version of Psycho. Now let's look at the opposite version of that. A movie that did that, but actually made it work. Night of Living Dead, 1990. Real awesome. Real awesome. Tom Savini, get on here in this circle, uh, champion jerk, and let's have a good time. Yes, I loved it because here's the thing about Night of the Living Dead, the remake. 1990, it was the first, I remember this was the first Night of the Living Dead movie I ever saw. I didn't even know they had done a remake. Uh, it wasn't until a few years later that I actually saw the Ramiro 
version of, of Night of the Living Dead, the, the OG. But this movie introduced me to the zombies, the Romero universe. And dude, to be honest with you, as t- it was Tom Savini's first movie he ever directed. He was a makeup artist on uh, the the original, I think. And he, and he obviously helped uh, create no, and, and Dawn of the Dead, he helped create like like the blood and stuff they used, like he won him awards. This movie is so solid. Night of the Living Dead 1990 is so fucking solid, dude, because he pays ultimate respect to Romero. He keeps the theme alive there, uh, and then he does his own thing uh, mm-hmm. also with a lot more violence and a lot more uh, fast-paced type of action. I, I, I think Night of the Living Dead 1990 do rivals the original. I just do. I think it's an all-timer. I'm, I'm, I, I, oh, you say all timer? That yeah, I, the more I was talking about, like I think it's an all timer. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Uh, so, so let me jump back real quick for a second uh, to um, the previous vote. As far as Funny Games remake being an all timer or real awesome, the crowd agrees uh, with you with real awesome, seventy five percent to twenty five percent. So that one goes in the real awesome category. You were gone, by the way. The the crowd, I don't know. They they, they did vote Evil Dead to be an all timer. Oh. So. There's that one, and I forgot which one. So Funny Games goes in real awesome. And then I will put a vote right now into fucking Night of Living Dead. I, I say I say real awesome. And the reason I say real awesome is that while it's a great movie, that movie, like for me, I, I couldn't I can't put it into a Tony Todd, the sexy Tony Todd. Right. But it wasn't it wasn't his movie, right? Like it, it was, was great. They did a great job with it. Like they did an amazing job with it, and the movie kicks ass, but like for me, it's not considered a classic because it was just a really good update. It's it's almost the quintessential remake because like it's it's just a really good update of an already awesome fucking movie. Yeah, you know. But it well, was. Well, I, I feel like I feel did. like he corrected a lot of things in that movie um, that Ramiro might not have seen when he made. And again, Ramiro was great. Um, you know, and we miss him. I wish Ramiro was still around. I, that guy deserved to make Resident Evil. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, like the the girl. The, the original uh, girl in Res- uh, in, in uh, Night of the Living Dead was so fucking annoying. Yeah. And and this one, Tom Savini made her like a badass, like Sigourney Weaver, but they didn't like shove it down your fucking throat. Like she was an equal with Tony Todd. And I love yeah. that. I, th- I There was, there, and, and, and and again, don't get me wrong about the guy that played the original OG in, in Night of the Living Dead. He was great. He was awesome. I loved that guy. But there was something about Tony Todd, dude. There's, a, there's an authority. There's a presence yeah. about him. When he comes on screen, dude, you're like you pay attention. I fucking yeah. love that. I and love. I, I, I think there's something to be said for for Romero's Night of Living Dead too, and Savini's as well. You could time in the same thing. I think that is the quintessential like when you bring politics into a horror movie, that's how it should be done. He yeah. did it when it wasn't. Romero cool. was doing it. He well, did it. He did it when it was going to upset people. Yeah. When like there was actually an issue happening, and he took. Uh, a black man and made him his lead and made him the leader and made him the badass of the film when it wasn't fucking cool. Yeah. And I think, and, and, and he didn't bring attention to it. He didn't throw a fucking parade about it. It was just like, it was real and it was authentic mm-hmm. and you felt it. It landed. So I feel like that is like, to me, I always look at that as like, that is somebody who did it because they meant it. And, and in their heart, like they meant like, you know, this is wrong the way we look at this, and I'm going to make this character a badass. Well, that's exactly well, that. That and I literally did uh, what I said in the original review we did for that. And that's exactly what I said. Exactly. Yeah. Because it, the it, idea, it, the idea in the, the 60s, should be. The, the late 60s, the idea that a black man could be yeah. anything more than just a, a background character or a secondary character or somebody that would die off screen that nobody would care about was what Ramiro went against. And again, but it wasn't so obvious. Like, you know, people nowadays browbeat you. Whether it be, uh, right. you know, the whatever community has a fucking active vigilante, vigilante this bullshit fucking, this today. Fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, like it doesn't matter if it's a gay community, the religious community, whatever community that they want to browbeat you over the fucking head about this. There was a there was a thing called subtlety, and you can you can give your message right and, yeah. and tell a great story around it, and then people are like, huh, you know what? I really enjoyed that movie, and I didn't even think once that guy was black. You know, right. back in the late 60s, they were like, it was fucking awesome. I, I didn't yeah. even think about it. And that's, that's what that's Ramiro was trying to do. Savini, there was no political message. Like, Savini just did the remake. Because yeah, in 1990, no, just, it was like at that point. But, yeah, uh, yeah, but dude, he updated uh, the I, don't, I don't think Ramiro gets enough credit. Like, dude, I think that Ramiro was so fucking smart 
in how he got his messages across. And not just in Night of the Living Dead. He did it in Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. He did such a great job of delivering these powerful messages through subtlety. Mm-hmm. But but in a way that you would enjoy the movie. And it wasn't yeah. just browbeating you. And, and, and I feel like it's an art it's an art form that's been lost. But it's awesome. Yeah, a thousand percent. I totally agree. Uh, this is a fucking weird one, dude. Because like this this movie for me, like I have so many people that are constantly like that movie. I can't, fucking I can't, rules. I can't vote on. I don't remember a goddamn thing about it. Okay, so I I will I will I will personally be glad to take the the heat on this one and put this in fuckable. I don't think it deserves real awesome at all. I think it was a fun movie. I think Todd Phillips. I want to say is the is the guy. Uh, one of the, one of the people that had to do with Rob Zombie's original what mm-hmm. was supposed to be Halloween 3D. Uh, did uh, Drive Angry and some shit like that. Knows how to make a a fun movie. movie. Yeah, knows how to make a fun-ass movie for sure. And they did make a fun-ass movie, and I appreciate it, and it's fun or whatever, but like, just never, there's nothing special about it, though. It's like, oh, you made an entertaining movie, and it's sort of like a, it's sort of like a cover band. You go see a cover band, and they play the songs, and like, it is what it is, but it's still a cover band. I would put this in fuckable for sure for me, It's it, but it's a decent enough time. They look like very enthusiastic treasure hunters. (laughs) this is a movie by the way that whoever remade it like it was never that fucking great like my Mm. belly valentine's not that great of a movie if someone wanted to remake it and actually try to make it scary and good they could this movie took a shitty movie not not it's not shitty they took a a, a, A an all right movie movie. and they made it a party and i respect that you You could say a 70s movie is shitty okay fuck those fucking purists (laughs) <laughs> anything that came well, out in the 70s is so no good you're just wrong no i'm sorry guys like movies that came out in the 70s or in the early 80s there there were shitty ones too so well, well, well here i think here's the thing with my bloody valentine as a whole whether it's the original or the remake the idea is uh, the dude who asked earlier what's a movie that had a great idea but bad execution yeah. i think both of these movies fall on that the the outfit was cool the mask was cool the idea of the killer was cool the valentine's day tie-in was cool they had a really good setup but i don't i still don't I, think we've I, seen a my bloody valentine that has really lived up to and like took that cool premise to be honest, and done a really man, good movie I, with I, it. I feel like my bloody valentine is just it, like it was a one-off type of movie that never needed sequels it, it didn't need a remake i mean it's it's like i watched it once and i don't care well i think it's perfect but for let's be honest with because you. it was like, a good idea that just stop been saying because the movie came out at a certain time frame it's somehow a, a fucking classic like get over yourself it's not it, like the movie's okay but people are acting like it's so fucking awesome it's you're fucking stupid like stop acting like like it really changed the game like it was Speaking like of- it was like uh bruce the barber beefcake in wwf it was interesting it was weird mm-hmm. he wore pink pants and he had a fucking barber clipper it was interesting well, but I do think that, I do th- I do think that nostalgia ties into that because so, like well, yes, if you were... I mean, same time, but I'm not I'm but I mean personally I've watched movies before too and I'm like I would consider this an all timer but I'm not dumb enough to think that it really is like I mean it's it's fun for me but I don't think it's an all timer. Well, I mean we put Halloween six in the all timers because that was like our wheel. Yeah, but we're so not I saying understand. that really is though. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. Like so I understand like. Yeah. Like if people see a movie like when this came out, that could have been a party movie that somebody loved to go watch. And they really enjoyed, just but stoners, yeah, just stoners that dropped out of high school. <laughs> did you see this, by the way? I, I only I no, no, I did. I, I actually saw the original one first. I so only I, saw I, the original. I've never seen re- this. Well, see, here's the thing. I remember the original one a lot more, but I did see the uh, the remake. The original one was fucking violent. It was a lot more gory. There was a lot more. Uh, it was good. Yeah, dude, it was really good. Um, and it, yeah, it was subtitled because I think it's Spanish. I don't, I don't remember uh, the original let me in um, or I meant no, the original let the, let, right the, one let the right one in. Yeah. It's the yeah. Spanish version. That's so much better. This one isn't bad. It's not terrible. It's fuckable to me. It's not, it's not okay. a bad movie, but it's, it's, it's a fuckable vampire film uh, at the best. Uh, oh my God. I stretched it. It doesn't it stretch it, doesn't it like suck. my dick when I take pics. Well, here's the thing. It doesn't <laughs> suck. If, it, if you watch that first, you'll probably think it's a lot better than it is. But if you, if you don't go and watch the original, the original is so much fucking better. There's so much more context. There's so much more content uh, and there's so much more development of the characters. So that being said, we are at a point. I'm going to go PP first this time. <laughs> mm. Ha my wiener hurts jay and you're not here to suck it the suck the gas out of it like like mel gibson and lethal i don't three, suck where he's like needles where are you at where are you at uh we are at 
as far as super titties go, we are at Austin at 8.40 p.m. 8.40, okay. No, we're no, we're past Austin. And we're also past Michael Parton. You answered Austin? Yeah. And oh, okay, no, oh, that's right. You were doing the you did the I'm last also, one. So. I'm past Anthony. Uh I'm also past Colton. So I'm, 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 I'm at uh, okay, I'm at 858 with Robin Barker. 858, you fucking hoes. You ready fucking, to get nasty? You sluts. Let's get right, in there. I'll be right back. I got All right, Robin. Pee. We I'll don't need back. a Batman to talk to each other. We'll just talk <laughs> face to face. Robin Barker says, what's your stance on the idea that, quote, no movie should be remade? If there are any movies uh, that should rem be, re I'm assuming, you remain untouched, which ones and why? Well, Robin, uh, thank you so much for your question and your super chat. I would imagine um, there's there's a few. Well, I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna say a movie right off the bat. I don't think should be remade at all. I don't feel like there's any need to do it, and I feel like it would ruin the ma the majestic awesomeness of that cinematic adventure. Is Back to the Future? I know there's a lot of people that would love to see it remade so that we can get to like a back to the future four. but listen, it's going to be shit. I think if you remake back to the future, it's going to be, and I'm going to use this, um, wordage again, a very TikToker ish type of film, very clean, very, you know, uh, trendy ass fucking movie. I mean, at one point there was a consideration to remake this movie and cast Justin bitch ass Bieber, as Marty McFly, can you fucking imagine? Holy shit, right? No, it should never be remade. So my stance right now, the one movie that should never be remade is Marty McFly and Back to the Future. You don't you don't get to recast Marty McFly or Doc Brown. Uh, if you're gonna do anything with uh, with Back to the Future, give us Back to the Future Part Four, uh, and, and then do something. Um, or do sequels or something, or, or do a TV show uh, or something. I don't know. But you don't ever get to remake that fucking movie, okay? That movie is goddamn classic. That or or Ghostbusters, they tried that in 2016, and guess that that was like a wet tampon that someone slapped you with. So no fucking way, all right? So maybe for me, it's Ghostbusters and, and Back to the Future. But for me, Back to the Future is, is, is like walking into a church and being blasphemous if you're talking about remaking it. Um... I'm moving on down here. Brandon Ferguson coming in sexy and hot says, Sup guys, I, re I recently started streaming games. If you guys want, I can help you all with your setup equipment, et cetera, to stream the TCM game. Man, we, we really appreciate that, Brandon. Uh, we need some help. Um, we, we definitely would love your support. And uh, if you have any uh, suggestions for sure, don't hesitate to tell us uh, in the email or, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. Cause we would like to do that. For sure. Um, Tyler Rumfelt says, Bill and I say hi from Illinois, saying hi and are hi. All right. I hope you come back down soon. But hi, Tyler and Bill. Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're in a safe space and you're getting all the weed juice that you can handle in a safe area. Good stuff. Brandon also says, uh, what the fuck? Did you do that twice? Why, why do I have you on here twice, Brandon? Thank you, man. I don't know. I, I don't know if it charged you twice. That sucks. Uh, if it did, I'm sorry. We, I'm going to give you back your five bucks on that extra charge. You shouldn't have that. Oh, Brandon. What the fuck, dude? Listen, I got this new controller or controller um, mouse, and it's being an asshole. Hold on. And now I got to do this old school. I can't even. Uh, okay, I, I can scroll again. I can scroll again. Okay, Cobra Monk 78 says, Hey, Mike and Jay, been watching you guys for years and just wanted to say great job and spread the love. Keep up the laughter. Hey, man, we appreciate that. We really do. It, it always uh, brings a smile to the hearts and farts uh, of myself and Mike that you guys have, have stuck around for uh, years and, and, and supported us. Uh, we really do appreciate that. We're glad that you're having a good time, and we're glad that you're having – Still a smile on your face, even after all the old jokes and the rehashing of certain scenarios that Mike and I constantly talk about. 
We really appreciate that. Thank you. D Ghost says, whoa. I don't know what that was in reference to. I think it was something that I said, probably. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's just keep on moving through here. Uh, Danger Zone with two X's on the end of his, of his name, just so you guys know. That motherfucker is dangerous. I know y'all love to take a deuce, so here's a two. Thank you, man. Yeah, you know. By the way, everybody loves to take a deuce. Come on, Danger. Like, that's your time away from the life. You just take a shit. Uh, Michael Part says, Jay, I was talking about GP models. What the fuck does that mean? What the, what the fuck? What is G, what is GP models? I'm stupid, Michael. I, I don't know what that means. I'm dumb. What does that mean? Oh, my God. General practitioners. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm stupid. GP. I don't know. Uh, Chris's flick file says, y'all, the highlight of my night. Love you guys. Always look forward to your live streams and videos. Man, thank you, Chris. Thank you, man. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys, and we really appreciate you guys. 100% love your interactions. We love that you guys take the time out of your day to talk with us. And uh, thank you, Chris, man. And uh, have a good night. Stuart Waldel or Waldy says, uh, love Faye Aberoth, Scotland. What? <laughs> I don't know why I was going into some. Started watching when you did your Friday reviews around campfires years ago. What is your favorite British horror movie? If you have a chance, check out Dead Men's Shoes. Stuart, I only did that because first of all, I, I I realized that you're you're uh, European, maybe from Scotland. I don't know. And as far as a British horror movie goes, um, my one of my favorite British horror movies, I um, the quarantine. Uh, you know, I in America it was it was quarantine. Um. But I don't think it was Brit. Was it British? I don't fucking know, man. No, it was Spanish. I'm was, I was wrong. Shit, man. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wait. Wait. Hold on. Hold the fucking horses here, Stuart. Okay, calm it down. Hold, hang on a second. What was the movie where they were cave diving? The girls? Uh, what, what, what the fuck was that movie, y'all? The Descent. The Descent. That was British, yeah. right? That was a British horror movie, right? Oh, fuck, I don't think it, I don't think so. They're all. I could thought it was. A, I thought it was a British horror movie. I could be wrong. I don't think so, though. Well, I know that one girl is British. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. I don't know, man. That's a good question. Stuart Waldy at 9:24 p.m. says. Love, uh, I think he's trying to say love from a fr far from Scotland. He says, started watching when you did your Friday reviews around campfires years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, then he says, what is your favorite British horror movie? And I, that's the only one I, I can't think of any, like, specific British horror movies. Oh, man, that's, yeah, that's a tough one. You're right. No, The Descent, no, The Descent is British horror. Shot of the Day! Fucking win, bitch! That's Shaun not horror. That, that's more of comedy. You gotta you gotta get on the horror. 28 days later. Nope, not not true. That's a British horror movie. You nope, know, that's not true. No, that's that takes place in the fucking UK. I, that's I, a I British say that horror movie. I wanted to steal it because that's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's better than mine. All right, I gotta go pee now. So I meant like that was the that, that was the last one. Stuart 924. Okay. All right. Um <laughs> I googled it. Don't don't tell Jay. I fucking googled British horror movies. <laughs> he came out. Don't fucking tell him. All right. It's a secret between us. Like that time that we got drunk in the boathouse. I found myself sozzled in the boathouse, and I saw you standing there, and you were looking handsome in your jinko jeans, and we just did stuff together, and no one needs to know. Nine twenty eight is what Jay said. Um. Thank you guys so fucking much for hanging out with us tonight. This is so cool. I love doing this so much. This is a fucking goddamn. This life is amazing. Thanks to you folks. Um, let me see. I'm trying to catch up to where Jay was. Uh, fuck. I can't find it. I can't find it, Steve. 
Um, okay, here we go. Uh, BA badass is what that stands for. Actually, at the um, before I did this full time, and again, just to say, one of the reasons that I do this full time is because the beautiful people in the chat tonight, uh, super chatting, and and John Winston, and like just all of you guys. It's fucking man. We, I pinch myself on the reg doing this. This is fucking. It's a it's a wonderful life, dude. Between getting to write about horror movies and talk about horror movies, hang out with my best friend, um, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. Like life gets hard, but like, goddamn, we have the coolest fucking jobs in the world. So thank you guys for that because it's because of you. Um, Ba says, my, I, I had a where I was going with that. There was an IT guy at the last job I worked where I was a uh, what the fuck was I a customer log or, or a logistics manager for I won't say the company name. Uh, we had an IT guy named BA and he was a fucking dick. So many people there were fucking dicks. Uh, Mike saw your review for from never heard of it within four minutes was watching the first episode at episode nine. Now Jack Bender lost director and Marvel movies, Russo bros involved and uses some lost music cues. Yeah. Uh, I put up a review for that. Nobody watched it. <laughs> Cause it's one of those things. I mean, it's a show from like two years ago, but I'm telling you guys, if you want to watch, if you enjoyed lost, but got, ticked off at all the dumb irreverent shit they ended up doing watch from find it watch it it's fucking awesome it's lost on horror steroids and it's such a fun show it's so good you guys should totally watch it um but yeah it, it's got lost music cues so there's a lot of lost stuff in that including harold Perrineau, who's an amazing actor such a good show hollywood guy what five things would you put in scream seven all right that's a fucking lot that's a lot. You threw that on me and I'm going to do my fucking best with it. I would put Stu in it. A number one. Um, no, but I would just with scream seven. Um, it just depends on who they use for it, you know, but I do think I, I, I remain true with what I said about scream six. I would like to see a ghost face who was actually classically trained, maybe like a black ops or fucking like, uh, they did this whole thing with scream six where they were like, I'm something different. I would love to see a ghost face that was actually trained to murder. And it would be something different, you know. That would be my number one. Someone who was trained and and like people do not survive him if if they aren't lucky or know what they're doing. Number two, uh, a thing I would put in that movie is uh, I I would I would up the phone calls a little bit. I would I would I put a little bit more emphasis on the Ghostface phone calls because I think Roger Jackson is the greatest thing that series has going for it. Number three, the thing I would put in there, I would add more to the soundtracks. I would definitely go further with the soundtracks they've done a good job with these two movies but i think they could take it a step forward for sure number four with ghostface i would uh i would continue to make the kills mean as shit because the reason ghostface lands in the original scream is the opening scene where he guts somebody and leaves their fucking insides hanging out of them i would continue to make ghostface mean as fuck um, I would also, I would do, I would love to see multiple ghost face, a cult of ghost face. That's the thing I would do. Um, and, um, I would definitely, I think, I think, you know, I, I think that with this, this time around with ghost face, I would like to see a ghost face get away with it to really like heighten up. Like you think that they're going to reveal themselves. I think they should show a reveal. There should be a monologue. We should have the, the classic scream stuff. But I think at the end, one of the ghost face should still be unnamed. Um, you should show one, but not the other. And they should get away with it. Uh, I don't know how many things that was, but those are some things I would definitely put into a scream movie just off the cuff for sure, man. Great question. I love it. And I want to stick my wiener in it. Quasi juice 21, which sounds something you would stick your wiener in. Cause it's juicy, bro. Evening gents. Rovenary here. Oh, it's fucking Rovenary. And by the way, if you guys don't know this Rovenary sounds a lot like to me, the Foo Fighters song where he's like, Rovenary. I can't remember. I think it's, there goes my hero. Yeah. He says, Rovenary. He doesn't really, but it sounds like it. Uh, Amazing dude. Pass my Texas termites exam. Hopefully now I can save money so Brittany and I can come see you too. Hey, drinks and tank tickling as are on me as we, you know, tank tickling's free. Drinks are not, but I plan, I saw some people bringing their own drinks to Scarefest. We paid a lot of money on drinks and I saw other people with coolers and this year we're bringing fucking coolers. So, <laughs> um, but no, thank you, man. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you. You're fucking awesome. I can't wait to meet you. I'm going to hug your fucking face. One J men. I'm currently writing a chapter on TCM Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning 06 for a book. My colleague and I are writing a collection of essays on all the TCM films. That's so dope, dude. Like one of my dreams 
And I've accomplished so much of the things I wanted to doing this and really enjoying it and loving it. But one of my dreams that I've still yet to uncover is I really do want to write a book. So I think it's cool as fuck that you guys are doing that. And uh, a chapter on that is dope as fuck. There's so much in that franchise to delve deep into. That's fucking dope, man. Proud of you, dude. I'm proud of you. That's a great thing to undertake. And that's badass. Ready for fingerprinting? <laughs> Get it on. Okay. Let's Take do it. it in all and right. suck it down jay Yow. um all right all right my dog is really threatening to pull out my microphone cord we've done this one before i just couldn't remember where we put it i'm pretty sure that it's a easy real awesome right i mean maybe then things were different oh you're but i i would put it as an all-timer fucking that's a good thing for a vote then i'll slap it yeah, on i would stick okay. it in i want to i want to put the legendary stamp on this movie i do all right okay. it, it, it deserves respect let me put it to a vote and the only reason i would say it's real awesome instead of all timer is because i feel like they really lost their way it was fucking badass the opening was amazing the way that they just told us the origin story real quick like nothing Derek mears just got great Derek mears is fucking great i feel like I, I love your tits are so juicy, bro. Trent, great bad guy. <laughs> yeah. But I felt like that, he was not so good. Yeah. I think narratively it lost its way about halfway through and got pretty boring and, and kind of stale, but I'll put that to a vote in the well, meantime. Here's the thing about that movie. That movie to me, it, it like it, it was the, the perfect shot of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, like steroid injection to the Jason franchise. I did love that. It really was. I mean, you, you, like up to that point, like you got to remember, like Hell we were on Jason on. X and Freddy versus Jason, Go on. and like he was a joke. Like and they, not, not not a joke necessarily, but just kind of like a throwaway garbage uh, boogeyman. They, they they could throw to theaters like uh, you know like a Saul thing every October. Which don't yeah. get me wrong, I, I still like watching those kind of movies, but this brought a new life or and light to that film, like in a way that it hadn't been done before. And they they also did. And, and people don't give it credit for this. They did an incredible job, very subtly explaining his supernatural abilities. The fact that he dug tunnels and like, that's how he looked like he could appear out of nowhere. I thought it was so fucking smart, dude. So fucking smart. I, I'll, I'll put this to a vote for you guys right now. In the case of night of living dead, 1990, very tight toit toit vote. Uh, the crowd voted real awesome. 53% or 52% to 48%. Ooh, so well, night of living dead in 1990, uh, that just goes to show you that we're both fucking right and we can't be wrong, but it goes into real awesome for now. Um, and I will put the Jason 2009 to a vote as well. In the meantime, <laughs> in, happy in the meantime, lit's a fucking underrated band. This movie right here, House on Haunted Hill, oh, by the way, God this damn. is our, and I want to say something real quick, just real fast. Um, House on Haunted Hill a movie that jay and i both enjoy greatly it's funny it's fun it's irreverent it's fucking it's a good time to be had but this is our patreon we put up every month on our patreon we put up a vote for you guys to vote which movie we're going to do a commentary on this is the one we're going to do we just did evil dead rise and also this saturday night this saturday night at 9 p.m we are doing our monthly patreon live stream where we play music we literally break out a guitar and sing and play music together we do a beer chug with you guys together and all of that is available there's over 50 of those right now in our patreon in the link below that you can get for free for seven days so if you want to join us this saturday at 9 p.m eastern to party our fucking faces off uncensored with nobody telling us what to do dad you can do that and you'll also get this commentary very soon uh while you talk about where you think this one should go i will make the vote for the other one yeah um no, i i it's feel like it's, like your dad's uh, yeah, dick. Uh, i was adopted <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what that's what that guy screams uh at the end of the movie um i that's... love it dude yeah is it corny absolutely is it cheesy yes okay we've got a lot of parmesan going on here but is it fun Fuck yes. Does it fall in the category of the early 2000 movies that we were talking about earlier in that horror, uh, that horror wave that happened in the early 2000s? It does. Uh, it For me, I never remember why. I, I know I've seen it, the original House on Haunted Hill, but this movie was so good, dude. It, it combined comedy 
and and actual horrific things like that girl like getting fucking cut up alive which like those fucking ghosts dude scared the shit out of me and then like chris katan like you give me my goddamn check because you have it i want it and i want it and then he was like fatican fuck like i i like and he's like well we're all probably gonna die tonight i wish i could get laid before i died (laughs) He's like, how you doing? <laughs> and who would not go after Famik uh, Jensen? Oh my gosh, she's so okay. fucking hot. She is yeah. the hottest she's ever. Like people would say, Jean Grey in X Men. No, it's in this movie that she's the hottest that she's ever been. Uh, Where do I, you stick it? Yeah, I, dude, I want to put it in all timer, but I will, I will put it in real loss. I will put I, it in real. By the way, I Marilyn, agree, the, the opening of this movie is fucking insanely good. Where you have the Marilyn Manson sweet dreams are made of this when he's typing out the letter. So yeah. fucking good, dude. I agree. I totally agree. That's where that one should go, man. Uh, another movie. This one's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say last out. Ha- so Wes Craven's original classic, and then they redid it. And this is this is right in our wheelhouse of when we were growing up. And these movies, we were sitting in the audience Friday night when it came out. This movie was fun because they took that that they took that idea and they 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 fucking added some Adderall to it and made it crazy and there was oh. a dad with a microwave and gnarly shit. I still call it fuckable at the end of the day. Cuz it, it, it wasn't that it wasn't that great of a movie but it had some really cool moments. You know? I feel like it's it, I feel like it's it, it, it it's a movie that you watch once and then you don't watch it again. I mean it's Kinda. fuckable. Yeah. Sure. I agree with you on that. We'll stick her right in there. Last house on the left, but that ending with the microwave, pretty fucking dope, man. Mm-hmm. Pretty dope indeed. Looney. Hey, this is a piece of fucking shit. I'd rather fucking, I'd rather. Tom I'd, Welling, I'd, fly your Superman ass right into Steve's butthole <laughs> and dig up some kryptonite because this movie is DOA. Mm-hmm. Dead on arrival. What a fucking piece of garbage. What a hey, piece I of love garbage Selma. I love Selma Blair. I've loved her since that kiss and goddamn cruel intentions, which by the way would be a fucking all timer. It's a great goddamn movie. Mm-hmm. You can stick it anywhere. But <laughs> this is one of the four movies in my entire lifetime I actually could not finish in the theater. So Walked out so, on it. it Walked the shit. fuck out halfway yeah, through. So it's shit. terrible. It's so shit. And and the thing yes. is, uh, I feel like um I don't know why, but when I I had actually been watching Smallville, and I, I do like Tom Willing. Don't get me wrong. I think Tom Willing was a good Clark Kent, and I think he was a, a decent portrayal of Superman, and and, he, and he's a good actor. But there, there, when I watched this movie back in the day, I felt like there was such an obvious push to make him like a leading like stud or something, and, and the movie was just surrounded by the cheapest fucking Marvel effects that you could ever see in a movie, and it was like all CG – the story was like the story just took a dump somewhere and they were trying to write their own fuck like it was terrible it, it, the pacing was awful total the CG asser. was awful it's I, what you call an asser yeah it was a really bad uh piece of stinky uh, crustacean underwear suck my butt steve how about the old hitcher Woo, this is a good one i know a lot of people that, that will put this in real awesome i i'll put it as fuckable the original to me was always like to, to me the original is real awesome this one's fuckable to me. I didn't hate it. I think it was Sean Bean, right? Sean Bean was the... Sean Bean, yeah. Yeah, you know, thank God he lived for the most part, for the majority of the movie. Uh, and then he does die. But I, I think it was I think it was a a decent attempt to remake the film. But I, I just feel like it's fuckable. I don't think it's... I To me, honestly, I would watch the original over, over the remake. That's fair. I, I will. I so I'll throw this one to a vote because I would actually myself put it in real awesome. And the reason I would do that is because you had so many fucking bad. Like Sean Bean was great in it, but also you had that scene with the Nine Inch Nails song and that fucking oh, yeah. crazy that moment that happened. And the original with Rucker Howard was great, but I just think this was a. And when they had that dude ripped apart by the thing, I just that was good. Yeah, yeah, I love this movie so fucking much. Um, so I'll put it real. I'll put it to a vote. In the in the case of the last fucking vote that we did, though, Friday the Thirteenth, two thousand nine, all timer or real awesome? I forget. You, did you say all timer? I said all timer. You fucking won that one, man. Fifty four percent to forty six percent. There's a lot of put smart people in the chat tonight. I like it. Put put some goddamn respect on two thousand nine's motherfucking Friday the Thirteenth. Reach out to Derek Mears and be like, hey man, you did great. Get did up great. there in that fucking get up where you belong and take your fucking cheese cheese it winnings. Um, and then we put this one into the poll. While I'm putting this one into the poll, how do you feel about the crazies? Uh, I love Timothy Oliphant. I think I, you know, he's great um, in anything really he does. I, I think he's an underrated actor. I don't think he gets nearly 
the recognition recognition that he does. And I'm also a little biased because I saw him at Walmart when he was filming his uh, uh, Justified when he was on that show. He was at Walmart in, in Kentucky and I saw him and he was smoking a cigarette. It's fuckable. It's a fuckable movie. It's not good. Don't get me wrong. I would never. I, I think I've watched this movie twice in my life. And each time I watch, I'm like, yeah, it's all right. But I, I feel like there was something. It always feels like when I watch this movie, there was something more that it could have been. And it just doesn't get there. Like, it just doesn't get over the hill. But it's, could, still, it's still a good. When it's leading up to the intrigue or the intrigue is happening, you're like, man, hmm. I'm invested. And then nothing happens. So. I yeah, I think honestly, like I could make an argument for sure if I wanted to. If I wanted to, I could make a real an argument for real awesome. I could because Timothy Oliphant's fucking great, and I love that opening when they're in the baseball field and that thing walks up and he yeah. has to shoot that dude. And then the end with the fucking uh, the the nuclear bomb that goes off. That's mm. so gnarly and crazy. I will go fuckable because it really doesn't like. It's one of those movies you can watch and you could really enjoy, but it doesn't really stand out. No, on its own there's it nothing there. about it that really fucking stands out but it is a really cool movie and i just want to shout out one fucking time santa clarita diet is one of the best shows netflix has ever had they are dumb fucking assholes for canceling it and if you guys are looking for a show to watch if it's not from on mgm it is fucking goddamn santa clarita diet with timothy oliphant and uh drew barrymore you dude you you haven't watched no that, i know no, i've watched the i think i watched the first or one or two episodes of that fucking awesome but no but, but yeah timothy oliphant is such a uh, he's never I, I don't feel like he's appreciated as much as he should be he's so he's so he really is a great actor man he and is. he's got like he's got a, a vibe about him that like he looks like he looks like a really mean qui-gon jinn in a jedi it's, master way it's like, not if you his look fault at, that he looks just like josh duhamel well, no, not his fault. they actually fooled his mom uh apparently mm -hmm. josh Dumel took a picture uh with uh his wife and they sent it to his mom and then and she didn't even mention that it wasn't him yeah like Dude. Timothy Oliphant said that he literally he met Josh which is crazy they were at a, a baseball game Josh Jumel was there and to fuck with his mom he had Josh Jumel take a picture with his wife and they sent that to his mom uh Oliphant's mom as his Christmas card and his mom was like Oh, you look like you've lost a little weight, <laughs> but it was, but she didn't even, and he's like, that's not me. And she's like, yes, it is honey. What? <laughs> I believe it. Honest to God. I really do fucking believe it. How crazy. Well, I was, I was, was. all found dude. The first time I ever saw him in, in uh, what was the movie? Uh, the girl next door. Yeah. Like he's he was good. Actor too. He was great, dude. I was like, yeah, dude, that guy, that guy right there has got it. Neither of them are bad actors, but I would take elephant any fucking day. Like I think he's an underrated times, fucking actor. Yeah, times a year. I think Josh Josh Jamel is great. Uh, like, and I remember when he was up for Batman. That you know, I, see he, I think Oliphant though, not that he could be bad. I don't think Oliphant could be Batman, but Oliphant would be a great villain in a Batman series. I could see either way. While I'm checking on the uh, poll for this one, poll <laughs> my dick. Uh, where do you put old Dawn of the Dead remake, man? Man, uh, well, we already hate it because we have so much dick juice in our mouth from Zack Snyder love. Blah, 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 blah. I, I would put it as an all timer, but I'm gonna be fair. I feel like it's real awesome. I go there I feel with like you. It's real awesome. Uh, I remember uh, the biggest debate when this movie came out, and people were losing their fucking mind. I think this movie came out in 02 or 03. People were like actually being dumb, uh, which is surprising. I know on the internet. But people were like <laughs> raising it. the fucking flag and trying to march on Zack Snyder. Like, how fucking dare he make zombies that run in a George Romero remake? And he's like, it's fucking fantasy, you dumbasses. Fictional like, characters. What makes it scary, it was the fact that these things could run at you, which makes it a little bit more scary. Dude, I had like, they fucking... keep the theme there. They keep the mall thing there. I mean... After, after our last tier list... Um... Uh, I had I had some some people on Twitter and whatever. It was like I can't take you seriously if you actually put Halloween Six above like this or that. And I was like, well, don't. Why? Well, fucking don't, dude. You don't like, have to. if you it's want your opinion. own opinions reverberated back to you, stand in front of the fucking mirror and do your own goddamn YouTube show. I'm not telling you that these movies and how we feel about them should be how you feel about them. We're answering honestly about how we fucking feel about them. So if you want your own opinion fucking shot back into your face like your boyfriend does his fucking load then guess what just stand Damn in front Steven. of the mirror and watch your thing that's what i do i love dudes fucking blowing in my face but yeah i agree with you man i think real awesome 
because the opening was fucking dope as shit. Yep. The opening fucking ruled. I love no, yeah, the one opening, of the, yeah, it was great. Probably one of the top remember, 10 horror you, openings of all time. Do you remember the trailer? They fooled you because they had like a, yeah. a really perfect uh life, a suburban life, and then it gets like that that little girl rips that fucking guy's throat out. And mm-hmm. I'm like, holy shit. Like you can say what you want about Zack Snyder, but Zack Snyder, dude, he's got an eye for like drawing the audience in, in a way that, I mean, not a lot of directors do, man. And he's got, he's got like a dude, dude to me, Zack Snyder is a fucking rock musician, like, or, like a rock star as far as like music videos that knows yeah. how to put it in, in a cinematic form. Much well, like under- Rob Zombie wishes he could be because Rob yeah. Zombie's got a great eye for cinematography but yeah. like i feel like Zack snyder is the refined version of rob zombie well he's uh, Zack snyder's underrated because like he's a showman like he wants to mm. go out and party with you and you're like and i've had people say this to me before too like I've, I've literally had people say to me like you know i think you're actually a lot smarter than you put off you try to act like you're this big party guy or whatever but actually i think you're smarter than that i'm like dude like like there's nothing wrong with having a good fucking time like you can know what the fuck you're talking about, but also have a good time. And I feel yeah. like that's Zack Snyder. I feel like Zack Snyder does cool ass shit, but he he puts the party in it. And like people think that that makes him lesser than, and it's not true. And that's the case with Dawn of the Dead. I think the middle sags a lot. I think when you bring in the security guards and shit like that, the movie does take a dip, it takes a dive, takes a dodge. You could dodge a wrench, you could dodge a ball. But the opening of the movie's fucking dope. The fucking feel of the movie, it's it, it's real awesome. I think yeah, it's a well, strong, I, I really think awesome. that you also have a strong performance by Bing Rames, uh, and Bing. Fuck y'all! I mean, come on, <laughs> goddamn, Bing Rames is badass in that movie. You also have that way. one dude. Uh, I don't remember who he is. I, he's the a guy from. No, I, I I know he was on a TV show, but he was like, it's great. It's great to see that you all bonded through this. Like that guy that was drinking his fucking Starbucks coffee and being an asshole. The I dude love, from uh, Modern Family. Yeah, I I love that guy. There was, but. There was something about how Zack Snyder shot. It was like cozy. You know, the movie was cozy. I don't know. I, I think it was Dude, um, he knew how really to make well done. Movie. Yeah, and yeah. don't get me wrong. The Ramiro Dawn of the Dead is a lot more phonetic, and there's a lot more... Um, it feels a lot more colder. I don't know. It I, also I, I, it broads a... Uh, yeah, uh, it paints a more broad Maybe stroke. I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, but there, yeah, the helicopter, all that stuff seen in, in the Ramiro version of Dawn of the Dead, it is superior yeah. in a lot of ways, and don't get me wrong, but Dawn of the Dead, the remake, dude, you cannot tell me it's not fucking great. And bringing yeah. that to the, a newer audience is amazing. In the case of The Witcher, the crowd the hit, agrees. The Witcher DJ. is is, is, uh, <laughs> is Henry Cavill in this. The Hitcher, the Hitcher, Witcher, Dicker. Yeah, Mike's a lot more Dicker, smarter than he looks. Hunter. But he fucking uh, the Hitcher, the I mean? Witcher. <laughs> you know what I mean? What the? I fuck? know what I'm talking about. I know God what I'm talking damn. about, son. I am the scholar and gentleman. Uh, fuck like an asshole. Fifty five percent fuckable. <laughs> 100 percent asshole <laughs> every day of the week twice on sundays yeah fuckable that's where it goes uh and that is totes magoats fair the ring i think i think mean, we could be pretty quick on this one i think we've talked about it a lot uh, actually fuckable. i'm struggling i uh, no, i'll be fair like this movie did scare the turds out of my asshole the first time i ever watched it like and i'm I was, a twitch like, and i had my awesome pants on so i shit my pants all-timer. uh i can't put it in all-timer not the original the ring the ring goo would be an all-timer. I've uh, never even seen the Ringu. Have you, you seen the Ringu? It? Yes, dude. I did watch it. Spaghetti. I went on. I went on. <laughs> I went. I, I, I went on an adventure, dude. After I watched the Ring, like it scared the fuck out of me. But I, like, it's like, uh, it's like uh, zombie movies for me. Like they scare me, but I want more. I want to see what happens. I, I will, That's... and I'll mute the movies, and I'll, and I'll. Well, for me, the subtitles were already there, but. Um, the Ring for me is a, is a fuckable movie. I could put it in real awesome. I, you know what? I'll put it in real awesome. I don't think it's an all right. all-timer. I go all-timer, so I'm going to put it to a vote because for me, The Ring, dude, and I feel like we talked about it, so I'll be fucking super brief. Like, But like, The Ring is one of the only movies as a fucking adult male homo erectus <laughs> <laughs> not too late. <laughs> that I've ever gone to the theater and seen and walked out and actually been scared and actually yeah. walked away feeling dark and twisted inside. The Ring's one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. And I feel like over rewatch and rewatch and all the copycats, ca- copycats, copycats out there, I think it's been watered down a little bit. But for me, The Ring is one of the all time scariest movies I've ever seen in a theater before. So I'll put that to a vote. Samara was actually a great character. And, and my. So I, back in the day, was not watching 
horror trailers or any of that bullshit. I literally was on a date and I took the girl to go see a horror movie because I was like, oh, I might get blown or something or a hand job because it's going to suck. I thought it was going to be like something like along the lines of, uh, um, what's that movie with the tooth fairy? I like that movie, Darkness Falls. Darkness I Falls. thought it was going to be like Darkness Falls. And then uh, when the first fucking opening sequence, when that bit, when she dies in the closet and the camera goes, and then she's like, ah! <laughs> like I like the way they shot that shit fucking scared me, dude. Because it was something offsetting. It was weird. I never. I didn't even know there was a fucking. This was a remake. And the girl I was with is like, "You okay?" I'm like, "Cause I, I the whole fucking movie I was doing this." No. Look, what was it? <laughs> like, look, I was looking at the ground, and she's like, "What's wrong with you?" I was like, "I'm just tired. This movie sucks." I've been moving to this motherfucker, and I look over, and he's going. I no. If I'm with if I'm with a guy, I don't care. But I was with her, and I was trying to like impress her. So I was like doing this. I was like looking at the ground, like my eyes were really wide, so I couldn't like. I was trying not to see the screen. And then she was like, "What's wrong with you?" I was like, "I don't know. I I got allergies." And then she was like, (laughs) (laughs) and then I was like, and then yeah, dude, I went home that night, and I remember I I dropped her off, and I went home, and Mike and Cody, my brother, and another friend was over, and they fucking. They locked, they, they all, I fell asleep because I wanted to be around people because I was scared. They, I fell asleep on the couch and they fucking left me in the room and left the TV on with the, and they, and they fucking shut the door on me. I remember that shit. There's a lot of people, a lot of conversations going on right now in the chat about this versus this. And while you guys vote on that, the grudge, I'll just say real quick and I'll let you give your opinion. I think this movie sucks my butt, Steve. Oh. I think the grudge is like, uh, literally, I watched this fucking movie and I was like, Sarah Michelle Gellar, horror movie. It feels like the ring. Cool. This little fucking Japanese boy bop, pops out of a fucking shoebox and is going, oh, like I'm like, like I've seen Chevelle live. That's not scary like to me. Like and it, there. Uh, this I can't watch this movie without fucking falling asleep. So I will actually say fuckable. I will say fuckable. But what what say you? Because I know this movie scares your dick off. It does, dude. I know. It's like one of those movies. That, like I remember one time I was I was like uh, shifting. I was like on the cable. Uh, I was like going through channels, and it was on HBO, and I had to stop and watch it. You know, because it was. If you don't watch it, this fucking thing will come back and haunt you. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a death rattle, and I don't like that. Okay, I don't like what they were doing. With sucking they, dick backwards. I remember buying this movie at midnight and watching because I didn't think I thought it was gonna be like kind of like The Ring, and it there was something about this movie that fucking really put me off. Like it scared me. Uh, it really did scare me. I don't know, especially when the the bitch is in the covers and she's like, uh, like I was like, oh my goodness, gush. Is that my, my go- ex wife? My go- yeah, that's how she was when she's like, you need to give me more wine. Um, <laughs> But I'm no, I'm fine. I'm fine with putting it fuckable. I mean, for personally, I don't. I mean, I don't think I'm not stupid enough to be like, what? Why it scared me? I like it's a real awesome movie. I, I don't think it's a real awesome or an all timer. I, I mean, think if a movie scared, if his movie no, scared I, me no, like the, that, I would call it real awesome. No, like I, no my no, because my personal opinion is I can differentiate this between something that scared me and and whether or not the the story was great. The story wasn't great, but it but the the visuals were scary. Fair so I, I put it as fuckable. I think it's a fuckable movie. I don't think it's a all okay. t- uh, you know any of that stuff. But so in the case, the grudge, we will meet in the middle and call it fuckable. Uh, and <laughs> so let me jump real fast to this one because Jay and I watched this together. I was so fucking pumped, you guys. Like I was so fucking pumped to watch this movie in theaters with Jay because I thought I'm gonna watch him fucking come die. and you die. Have, you have a heart attack. I I wanted I, he was gonna come because I was sucking his dick so hard, but then he was also gonna die because he got so scared. Uh, and that was this. That was the actual Grudge remake. Yeah, remake. that movie sucked. That, that, Sam Raimi produced. Uh, no, that's, piece no, that's of it, shit. Now, now, yeah, that's in that's in Steve's asshole deep. <laughs> like I was like, if you can't scare me with that shit, you don't belong in cinema, sir. Because <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much. All you have to do have is a bitch fucking have her hair co- you know covering her face and then be all weird. You couldn't even do that. Like this movie, nothing sucked. happened. No, it's like you went to Golden Crown and they were like, here's some Rice Krispies. <laughs> like, that's all we got. It's we like got me Golden Mike Crown, going to Applebee's I'm at a fucking buffet. At here's like, some yeah, Rice Krispies. <laughs> this one time me and Mike went, uh, we, we saw at, uh, at World's End, went to Applebee's. And like, yeah, we got quarter fucking chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike ate them all. <laughs> hey, that was then, well, but you can't, you can't pass it up. They were no. literally, you can get, 
Mike got like a fucking bucket of chicken wings for a quarter, dude. A this, quarter. No, there's a there's a whole fucking story behind this night, and I'll tell it really fast. But the, back in the day, this was like 20 fucking 14 or some shit. I don't know. It was so long ago. Yeah, it was a while. And Jay was still with his we, ex-wife. No, we, we, how- no, we, we had, no, I was divorced. We just got done seeing At World's End. No, no, dude, dude, I was, I was, I, I stayed in your all's house for like oh, yeah, two days. Right. I was, uh, yeah. yeah, Jay was still with his ex-wife. It was like 2013, point, right? maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was a long fucking time ago. And um, I was, I was actually writing for the website of Smozno. You guys know Smozno, right? Like the YouTube, like the dudes that do Smozno. I was doing written articles for their site because I would wake, I, and I, the reason I remember that is because I would wake up at Jay's house on a fucking air mattress and I would, I, I was writing at the time. Yeah. And then like, we went out to see fucking World's End and we went to see it. By the way, and, like, such a great drinking buddy movie. You got to drink with your buddy to go watch that movie. It's a great fucking movie to go see. But like at the time uh, we go to see it and uh, we go watch the movie and we enjoyed it. And I was supposed to come on the Smoes No podcast that night to talk about like whatever fucking articles or whatever. And that happened to be the night that Ben Affleck was announced as Batman. Oh, yeah. So they were like, they were like, okay, actually we don't have a spot for you tonight because Ben Affleck just got announced as Batman and that's kind of taken over the airwaves or whatever. And I was like, cool. And then me and Jay had been drinking and we just watched world's end. So we were in a drinking <laughs> mood. So we're like, let's go get fucked up. Let's, like, go, All right. let's go to our own pubs. Yeah, yeah. So we went to fucking Applebee's because that was the only thing that was open in the city that we were seeing World's End in. And we sit there, we start fucking drinking the Brutuses. If you guys remember the Brutuses from fucking, and they were like, "Hey, we got a special on our wings tonight." It's like fucking twenty five cent wings. <laughs> I got quarters. <laughs> I got him quarters. I, I ordered a whole goddamn best. I, know, of them. You, you, I, I mean, said you, extra you, hot. You, I said you, you couldn't pass it up. You could no, it was a good deal, but I said extra hot. And you know what this, you know what Applebee's version of fucking extra hot wings is? The motherfuckers just poured pepper. <laughs> 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 like, they got they, they got the they got something worse than Texas Pete for the dollar store. Yeah. That's, that's their hot they just, sauce. Dude, they just I, fucking when they brought all over that it. shit looked like aborted chicken <laughs> eggs. When they brought that shit out to you, like it's like we use aborted chicken eggs. To make these wings, I'm that like, shit was dude, nasty but I, I, but you couldn't, you couldn't blame anybody. It was a fucking quarter, dude. It was a quarter, and you had a fucking platter of oh. chicken wings. Because she was like, it's only, it's only a quarter. Because they were trying to throw them out. I bet they were expired. They were expired, yeah, dude. It was they bad. were like old fucking chicken wings. And my, I probably my, like, yeah, lost dude, a year of my life that night. Yeah, but they were good though when you were eating them. <laughs> I mean, at the time, care. I was like, yo. They, they, they put that shit roll. in the microwave. They're like, hey, we put, a, we put these motherfuckers in there for 30 seconds. It's good to go. <laughs> and then Jay and I hit a deer on the way home, and Katie had to come pick us up from the CVS parking lot because we were eating fucking food because no, we thought was, we were no, going to get left behind. No, two different nights. No, that was the, – the, the, we were at <laughs> a Walgreens, and I popped time. my tires on a fucking uh, – I, I, you know, like the thing that where uh, the, the Pennywise <laughs> clown comes out like a, a drain well? I popped yeah. my fucking tires on that shit. And I, I think we were going to see Ted too or some shit when we that were coming out. back. And then yeah. I was like, I was like, hey man, I just popped both my fucking tires. He goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm a, we're gonna go to jail. He's like, just pull into that Walgreens He's right there, and we'll go get snacks. Yeah. By by the time Katie got there to pick us up, we were both passed out. You're dodging neon with like like sour cream and onion chips, like just draped across our chests. No, the dry- the, the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember this very clear because I knew I could be going to jail. The Dodge Neon was where we hit the fucking deer, and we were in the Jeep that we at CVS or at Walgreens. Because yeah. I remember when that happened, I had to because the car wasn't in my name, and I had to call my dad and be like, "Hey, dad," and he's like, "What?" I was like, you're, "I was like, both your tires just fucking popped." I'm at the fucking parking lot at C or Walgreens, and he's like, "What happened?" I was like, "I don't know." I was like, "I think they were just like old. Your tires were old." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he said, like, what do you mean they're old? I was like, Dad, I was like, you had old air in your tire. So I was like, and then I was driving and I went a little too fast and the air popped out. And he's like, Well, god damn it, where are you? I was like, Dad, I just told you it's at Walgreens. And I, was like, I see uh, some people are questioning whether or not there was actually a deer. I can confirm no, no, we did from the deer. passenger seat of the Dodge no. Neon. There was absolutely a fucking no, deer. Yeah. And- we clipped we his coming, hind, I know, hind we leg. We were coming back from Movie Tavern. We were on <laughs> US 60. We were on Winchester Road. Mike and I were driving back. And then this fucking deer ran out. And I slammed on my brakes because the speed limit on that road is 65. <laughs> and I was doing 55 or 50 or 60 maybe. 
and I slid on my brakes just enough. I I got I think I got down to thirty, and I clipped it on its fucking thigh, and it like it, like it frogged it, and it looked back at me like, "What is that all?" And then it moved on, but it broke my fucking like my neon, you know, the 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 uh, the headlight, and then we were like <laughs> silent. Mike and I didn't even say a fucking word. We just had the music. I think it was like One Republic probably playing. And we were like went down the road for like 15 minutes. And I was like, dude, that was fucking awesome. That was so cool. And I was like, no, oh, no. I know. It was cool. We, we didn't die. I mean, we could have died. We pulled into a Rite Aid. And I think we called Katie or like whatever. No, that, like was we, the, that, was the, that was the Jeep thing. That was the Jeep thing. No, no, no. They were both Rite Aids. It was two separate nights. But like the, we, the Jeep we, thing no, we was drove, I dropped you off after I got with the deer. I, no, I, I dropped know, you off. No, no. It was on the way. We're, we're confused in two nights. We're, 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 we're mixing them in. But like either way, it was a fucking, it was a fucking trip. Was I was like, I'm going to go inside. I was like, we're going to be here for a while. I'm going to go inside and get some snacks. That was the Walgreens. <laughs> then, we both passed that was out. The Walgreens. Yeah, you, no, I know what happened. Because <laughs> the Walgreens, when I popped both the tires on the Jeep, I, you was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm gonna go in. You, Michael's like, I'm gonna go in and get some snacks. And then I was sitting in the car. I was like, Well, fuck that. I want to go get some snacks. <laughs> God so was I, right. I, we were I, there I turned, too late. <laughs> I was like, I turned the car. I was like, I'm gonna go in. And then I was walking past him after he he got his treats and he was going to the register. <laughs> and I saw him. I was like, eh. and he was like, ah. And he's like, yeah. Like I don't know how they didn't call the cops. Like these two assholes. <laughs> Are in my parking lot. I got like beef jerky. Mike got like uh we, we got like beef jerky. We got like some uh some peach uh, rings, peach whatever, rings, whatever. Yeah, lifesaver gummies. And then me and Mike, Those are good. <laughs> then me and Mike in the gayest fucking Brokeback Mountain sequel you've ever seen. Put our seats back. <laughs> we put our seats back and leaned it all the way back and like slept, looking at each other, <laughs> <and> waiting for <laughs> waiting for Mike's wife to show up so she could take us home. Tell me we'll all be okay, Richard. <laughs> That was a fun oh god, <laughs> we just went way the fuck off time. I know. Okay, so this the, the Grudge remake goes to sucks my butt. Steve is is basically where we're going with that, right? Right. Um, and then in the case of the Ring, all timer wins fifty five percent to forty five percent. So the Ring goes to all timer. Um. <laughs> By the way, you guys that are new to this channel, welcome aboard. Yeah, welcome aboard. The Rite Aid, the Rite Aid story. I won't get into it now. Walgreens, really... bitch. You keep on saying Rite no. Aid. That was Walk. That fucking story was Walgreens. But there was a Rite Aid story when it was it was Cody's bachelor party when he picked. Oh this up. yeah, we pulled. I mean, you were passed out, dude. You barely know. No, you're you're confusing stories. The Rite Aid stories was when Cody had his bachelor party, and I thought some dude was hitting my wife, and we jumped out of the jeep, and I almost fought a guy. That's a whole different story, though. I wasn't that's, there. That's... I don't know that one. Oh, you weren't there for that. That's right. Yeah. So I, th anyways, we're getting off topic. You guys should join the Patreon streams because we'll probably talk about all of it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's like a fucking like a life of like uh like a fucking sea captain. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me regale you with some tales. We got we got a we got a semi speed round this because we're getting fucking nuts. Friday right, night remake, go. real awesome. Are you okay real with awesome. that? Because I am ready to go. Ready to go. Colin Farrell did a great Next job seat. in that fucking Next movie. Yacht. Hey, uh, put yeah. the screen back on so we can see it. Oh, did I lose the fucking shit? See, that's what I'm talking about, Jay. We we at some point in the night we get unprofessional. Mike needs to go um, to fucking Walgreens again, some more rings. <laughs> the 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 Fright Night remake, real awesome. Confield awesome. did a great job. Underrated fucking remake for sure. Yep. That was that shit was and, fucking uh, Anton great. Anton Yelchin, amazing. Yeah, dude, I missed that guy. He would have been yep. fucking. Dude, that guy was like career. that guy. That guy had it. Like that, that guy had it for sure. A thousand percent, man. Uh, if you haven't, if you're looking for a movie wreck, uh, green, green room, green room, I, fucking honestly, dude. I, I have a Fright Night uh remake, uh, versus the original, dude. I'll tell you what, they're I'll both tell great. You what they're both great. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jay, neither Jay or I <laughs> saw this movie. <laughs> nope, don't care, don't give a fuck because we like women. No, I'm kidding, but no, like neither of us saw this movie when it came out because neither of us were... we saw the original. Yeah, and neither of us were the biggest fans, so we never went to get back to see it. So I will make this the, the current poll going on right now. You yeah. guys decide. I'll put all fucking four in there. Where does the Suspiria remake belong in your butt? In hell. <laughs> in, in hell. Uh, Where it I know it's not I know it's not an all-timer, right? So no, like real awesome, no effable, way. um, or uh I mean, my base I, of Steve. course some trolls could come in and be like, I'm gonna vote for old timer just because I want to see these yeah. assholes put it there. Well, actually, I'll, I'll put it in there because it made. If me. you guys vote so. this old timer, we're, it's not going to go up there. There's no fucking uh, way. 
The Stepfather is a movie that uh, like, that's got to be fuckable at best. The like man, the original is so good. The original a, Stepfather is real awesome. Who am I here? Uh, yeah, like, I, I yeah, we'll put it as fuckable. I'll, I'll go. I'll go with you. Fuckable's the fair place to go because yeah. they had the dude from Nip Tuck in it, who's a good yeah. actor. It's not bad. Right? Yeah, it's not bad. So it's barely not, fuckable. It's not the original, but yeah, it's barely fuckable. It's not that barely good, fuckable because but... we're nice fucking gentlemen. Mm-hmm. You know, you should ask your moms. About I would the want the director rest. to come on the show one day. So uh, I, I, I don't have know. You ever I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna, nope, I'm gonna let you play that. You, oh, you can play with that oh, toy. Oh my fucking god! You play dude. with that let dildo. Me, let me tell you, this fucking movie is a giant <laughs> goddamn duty diaper in the Texas thunderstorm of rain. It this fucking movie had this dude who was from fucking Vietnam, and his his fucking girlfriend was such a bitch, and she was just yelling at him the whole time. And then like he goes out in the woods, and he has like Vietnam flashback, and he kills a bunch of kids. This is one of the biggest pieces of shits I've ever seen in my fucking life. The in the cover looks like Angus Young. Get ready yeah. to fucking rock our minds out with a fucking corn hat. This is the worst on this entire yeah. list of fucking movies. That movie sucks shit dicks. Uh, and I don't even, like, shitty dicks. Like, dicks that are covered in, you know that what? Dicks that, like, got put in the butthole, and then they pulled it out, and there's poop on it. But, like, dirty buttholes and from, like, homeless yeah, it's really yeah, nasty. people who don't wipe. And that's where, and I've never seen this, so I guess we have to put this to a fucking vote. No, dude, no, no, no. You watch this piece of shit? Yes, dude. You stupid idiot. Get down in that asshole. You're an idiot. You fucking You're beg a for forgiveness from God Almighty for your disgusting <laughs> heathenism, you disgusting piece of trash that dare exist. You're stupid this- asshole. Dude, this sucks ass, dude. It's so fucking bad. <laughs> they might as well call this fucking Roswell. 2.0. This motherfucker could have been <laughs> produced by CW. Get the fuck down there. I hate, you asshole. Because, I hate you just because you watched it. You're stupid. I did, well, I did because it was free. I got a free trial. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking bad, dude. What a oh, terrible God. movie. That's where I expected it to go. That's where I expected it to go. 100%. Okay. Um, Moving right along. Moving right along. We covered that. We covered that. We covered that. We covered that. I think we got oh. everything. Firestar. No, we have not gotten everything. Oh, uh, so I, 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 Fuckable, dude. Fuckable. The very fucking uh, meaning Cody, of the word. Cody Leach? Uh, fuckable. Uh, I, I, you know what? Um, it's fuckable. Yeah, it is fuckable. But I, I right. My initial watch. Uh, Mark Campbell oh. did a phenomenal job with the voice of Chucky. He really did. Uh, and, and I actually like the story a lot. And if they were going to launch a new series based on Child's Play with this movie as the forefather of that series, I am not. I'll put it as fuckable. Okay. I like, I'm just going to put it as fuckable, but I would be fine with being real awesome. Is this fuckable as your dad? Yes. And and he's dying. But (laughs) yeah, it was dark. It was dark I when I said it. It's in dark a general I, sense I, of like I, everyone's I, dad. Generally talking about I didn't mean. It. I think that we all are dying, right? So I meant, no, right. I meant like everyone's dad. I didn't mean, you know what I mean. This is what, this is what beer does. UJ, I didn't mean that. Like that. I'll say fuckable. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> what? I would say fuckable too. Yeah, stop acting like it's such a big deal. You fucking I'm pervert. not fucking I'm fucking old. You're a pervert. You're, You're a pervert, gay. dude. You're you like pervert. guys. You like fucking guys yeah, in the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go and fuck, fuck you, dude. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you for that. Yeah. You fucking dick. You're a fucking asshole. Pervert. I hit your guts. Uh and you're a pervert. Uh did either did you see this fucking remake? Because no, I didn't. I, no, I'll let them decide. I don't know what the yeah, fuck that we'll is. Put this to a uh, chat. By the way, do you guys know that if you want to, like, hey man, call someone a pervert? Like, <laughs> they don't know how to respond to. It. They're like, what? <laughs> you can Suspiria. Add- by the way, Suspiria goes to fuckable according to the oh, audience. Thirty six percent say it. fuckable. Yeah, that's where okay. goes. That that makes sense. That's where I, I guess I would imagine. Um, I think God, that's it, man. man. I, I mean, I think that's everything. It's it's not. You keep saying that as if it is, it and I know be. that like you wish it was, but it, it should <laughs> be all of it. <laughs> it's close. Like we're almost fucking there. Like we we really are almost fucking there. Actually, and maybe you're right. Hang on, you piece of shit. Fuck Always you, dude. doubting me. Fuck you. Fuck you. 
Fuck you. There's one more. There's one more. Sorority Row, <laughs> the remake. Have you ever okay. seen it? Well, sorority, my asshole. No, I don't want it's, to watch it based on the cover. I'll, quick decision. Fuckable. I'll go to fuckable. It's actually not that bad of a time, but it's not great either. I was going to get hated on. <laughs> like, he's like, uh, he likes Sorority Row. <laughs> <laughs> and then i thought we went to the vote but we didn't so here's what we're gonna fucking do we're gonna take turns pee peeing in the toilet and then we're gonna fucking answer y'all hey we filled up fuckable by the way so i think oh, that the all answer right. is good job man and, and we have room makes, we have room are indeed fuckable I oh, except go for okay you go first you go first you okay. go pee first uh i will put this to a chat if you guys have ever seen us go off the rails that's what you're seeing now. <laughs> That's you're witnessing a it's show on camera go off the rails. I know I am too. It's weird. Hey, show us your dick. Okay. <laughs> don't. I can't see you. Please don't show me your dick. Get it until out of here. Promise to hold that. That those are, there's some things that are meant to be between us. Uh, Firestarter, neither Jay or I ever saw it. So Firestarter is, we all know it's not a fucking old timer. Real awesome. Uh, effable or sex my butt, Steve. S my B Steve. Uh, you guys decide. And that's the final one. That's the final one. And then we're just going to answer your super chats. We're going to hang out. We're going to party with our pants off. Because that's the only way to party is when you get naked in a campfire and all your friends are around. Some of them have girlfriends, some of them have guy friends. And they all you wait until everybody passes out. And you wait until the last person they're sitting, they're sitting around the fire, they have their drink, and eventually their eyes finally fall again. They succumb to the darkness and they give in to the, to the darkness. And they, they, they do this. And then when the last person does that, you stand up. You stand up and you take off your shirt. You bend over. And you spread your butt cheeks. And then you just, like Ace Ventura, talk out of your ass. But you read Bible passages. And then wait for someone to wake up. And then when that person wakes up, you stop. And then you go to sleep. And then the next day when they bring it up, be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. And then your friend who saw you spreading your butt cheeks and speaking like Ace Ventura through your ass just goes through a whole thing. And they don't understand. They don't understand what happened to them. And they start to think that maybe it was a sign from God through your ass. And that's how you get your friends back. That's how you do it. <sighs> it's just how it's done. It's just how it's done. I don't know where we were in this fucking super chat. So I'm trying to fucking. Okay, we read that. Trey Film Edit says, Hey, dudes, just come on here to say thanks. You guys have inspired me to make my own channel and merch store recently. Any advice on balancing full time job and a YouTube channel? Much love to you guys. Hey, much love to you, man. Uh, Trey, dude, you're an awesome dude. I'll tell you this. Uh, I'm probably the worst person to ask for that because when I was working full time, uh, it was a weird thing for me because I, I got a job and, and I started to work my way up in that job, but I was also very obsessed with the channel. So I started not sleeping and I was sleeping for like four hours at a time and like going crazy and like doing the best I could and caused me a whole lot of health issues and other stuff like that. But so what I would say to you is take it um, as it comes, man, like just whatever's whatever's enjoy what you're doing because you love doing it so when you're doing the channel on the side or you're doing your youtube thing or whatever like enjoy doing it that's your fun that is your hobby that's what you're doing for fun you don't need it to replace your life or nothing nothing like that. you're doing it for fun because you love doing it and put your heart and soul into it and just do what you would want to see and then on the flip side when it comes to your work and your job or whatever do the best you can to succeed there you know what i mean um that's probably a terrible answer i, I wish that you'd asked me a little bit earlier in the night but like that's that's what i would say man like succeeding on any level whether it's in your work or your hobbies or whatever is special mm. so no neither is more important than the other and um and just do your best man do your best and 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 take what comes as it comes live as life, jay does dudes uh live laugh and fuck there you go that's true that's that that's the new that's the new mantra live it's a fact laugh and fuck 
You can't go wrong if you, you do only that. get one uh, life on this uh, planet. So mm-hmm. enjoy it. Where are we at? Fucking a man. Nine thirty p.m. Mister Clumps. Mr. Clumps. Mr. Clumps at 9 p.m. I had a couple of those PM. afternoon. <laughs> uh, nine... Mr. Clumps. Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. She's probably going to get weird this last uh, hour. Lumis. We love you guys. Hey. <laughs> <He's>, uh... <laughs> All right. I'll be right back, man. All right. All right. Uh, Loomis, I, I went swimming at the community pool and made brown water. Well, you're a disgusting human being. Uh, you obviously never learned to, you know, clench your asshole if you have to go make a duty and you just took a shit in the pool. Poor children were swimming through your goddamn brown lake of desire and disgusting fetish. You're gross, Mr. Clumps. You look like a goddamn Batman villain in your profile picture. Thank you. That's nasty. I've never... <laughs> I know that people are like, oh, I peed in the pool. That's fucking gross, man. Just get out of the fucking pool and go poop or pee or whatever. Sinister Creation says, uh, bought buying the cow on a whim back in 05. So good. Oh, yeah. Like, I've never seen that movie with uh, with the uh, sexiness that is Reynolds. I never saw it. So, um, cool, man. I, I might watch it. I don't know if it's that good. Everybody's talking about it. I want to be part of the cool kids crowd. Uh, moving on down here. Okay. Guys, by the way, I am. I'm not drunk, but I am definitely buzzed. Holy shit. I feel like I could listen to Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Relax. Go to it. When you. Like, I just feel like that, you know. But anyway, moving down, moving down, moving down. I think that was all. Oh, no. There was another. Uh, Austin says, as a kid. You ever grab a buddy, two mirrors, and say Bloody Mary and Candyman at the same time? We set up a ring, and they went 12 rounds. It was sick. Uh, no, uh, as a kid, we were pussies. Um, I, I, I've always been scared of that um, type of situation. I don't want to be a part of that situation where people are like, oh, well, let's go in the, in, into the bathroom and, and do this fucking pagan shit where we're, we're going to, like, you know, summon a dead hoe through the mirror, like Bloody Mary or or an asshole like Candyman. I don't want to do that. Like, if someone was like, I could be the drunkest motherfucker ever. I could be like, again, David Hasselhoff eating burgers off the floor drunk. And if someone's like, I'm going to bring out a Ouija board and we're going to do some crazy shit. I'm like, I'm going to leave. Like, the sober part kicks in. I don't, I don't do that shit. I don't want to play that game. No fucking way. I've, I've never, never played that game. And I, I don't want to play that game. So as a kid, you know, I never did that. I don't want to do that. Uh, Mike don't believe in that shit, so he might do it. I'm not doing that shit. All right, I I believe enough. I'm not gonna do that. Eric Spartan, thank you so much. Says you guys got to review uh, Manboard, a great cult film from Canada, cheesy and hilarious, made for two thousand uh, dollars Canadian. So it's like fifteen bucks U.S. I'm kidding. I don't know. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what Manborg is. It sounds kind of hot. I don't know. But yeah, uh, we, we I would do it. I, I'll watch. I'll watch whatever. I don't care if it's good time. It's a, if it's a good vibe. Mike says, "Did you know Dave McRae is playing Freddy Krueger?" No, that's not true, Dave McRae. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's playing Freddy Krueger. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was all confused with the stupid uh, Mike. Yes, I know that Dave McRae is playing Freddy Krueger uh, in the. Um, fan film that's coming out and and to be honest dave uh looks really good in in the makeup uh and uh based on what we've seen mike and i he you know i I, dave is good choice good choice there daniel torres says uh, the goonies is one i hope they never touch ultimate classic that's my mom's most favorite piece yeah He's like, God damn. <laughs> if uh, uh, the penis, yes, on the penis statue. He's like, if, if God made us like that, we'd be pissing on our faces. Yes, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Yes, uh, the Goonies absolutely should never be touched. Uh, I 
uh, I would definitely agree with you. And Michael says, once again, he says, Jay, I was talking about gay porn models. <laughs> Michael, I don't know. Okay. Uh, gay porn models. Uh, yeah, they're so, they're so sexy. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought you were talking about like, uh, like actual, like mainstream models. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, if they got if they got the balls, obviously they do to show their dicks online and fuck other men in the asshole. Hats off to them. Party, party, party at my house. Yeah, the Tommy Dean <laughs> uh, coming in says, "Stop it, I'm horny." Sups, guys. I I just got here. Now that's how you make an entrance. <laughs> what, what time stamp are you at, by the way? Uh, that was uh, ten eleven. Okay. Um, and by the way, Trey Film Edit, I, I feel like I gave you a totally shitty answer there. So uh <laughs> here, I'm gonna put oh I can't type. Well, we're not fortune cookies. It's okay, man. Balance your life with your ethics. No. Yeah, no, Trey Film Edit, send me an email, man. I want to give you a, a more thoughtful answer than that for sure. Yeah. Uh what time did you Tony say we were at? Tony, uh, Tony, 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 Tony Roberts, Tony Roberts, Roberts. He wants an email, personal correspondence. Also, buy my video Tony, tapes. Tony I, Baskin I Robbins. I told him at 3 a.m. on QVC. <laughs> uh, I was at the Tommy Dean at 10 11. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, all right. Let me, I'm scrolling. And I think I'm we scooting. got through most of the. Uh, 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 didn't we get through all the tears what well, yeah the only the only thing that we had left and I'll, I'll pull it up right now the only thing that we had left was a question of the audience's choice between firestarter uh because you uh, and i have not seen the remake so was no. it real awesome fuckable or sucks my butt steve and the crowd says sucks my butt steve oh it's get her bad. in there yeah i like it when the crowd is like give steve's asshole more work <laughs> <laughs> he's tired it's not filled up enough <laughs> So in, in the realms of we covered every fucking remake. So on that, we almost filled up the whole thing. And honestly, I feel, like, I feel like this is a balanced list, man. I like it. It's a balanced yeah. ass list. I, I really do enjoy it. It's kind of the way it should be, right? Because there's so fuckable is full. Yeah. Fuckable is full. And then like all timer is the, the lowest one, which means that we gave credit to the thing. Evil Dead, mm -hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Fly, The Mummy, Friday the 13th, 09, The Ring. And then uh, sucks my butt. Steve was almost full. This this feels right, doesn't it? From yeah, like it a feels remake. good. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like people would argue about um, and, and they always will be. Uh, you know, like the classics, Evil Dead, Friday the Thirteenth, and the Texas movie. But you got to remember, you got to you got to look at how it changed things, man. Like that, those movies changed things. Yeah, it, it, like they updated things that were great in a way. But yeah. I I love this list. I think this list is. The, oh, mom! I think we. I think it's we a, did good, Jim. Like, do I, I like if we worked at Blockbuster, this would be our list. Like managers <laughs> pick. Like this would be the list that you would look at when you walked into Blockbuster. Like, what am I gonna? What am I gonna rent if it was October yeah. and we would have our list? Oh, dude, that's what it would be in October. Like, when you would have all your horror movies like listed like this, not fuck yeah. horror, sucks my butt. Because we couldn't have that in the blockbuster, but like Jesus Christ, dude, this is the list. There's some great movies in those fucking top two rows, dude. No doubt about it. All mm -hmm. right, so answering your all super chats to close out the show, finish up Iron Samurai. This is a great fucking name, by the way. Mm -hmm. Iron Samurai, Tom Cruise, fucking Samurai, Last Samurai. Sup, Mike and Jay. I don't know if you guys have done this or not, but I would love to see y'all guys top 15 list of your greatest martial arts movies mm -hmm. of all time. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Keep up with the amazing work. Love you guys. Hey, Love you too, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, Iron Samurai. Uh, That's a yeah, great idea. Um, yeah, man. I would love to. I, I mean, of course we would do it. Uh, and maybe we will. Uh, but, you know, it's the weird. It, it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> YouTube is so weird. Uh, you can't just, uh, like, we wish we could do different videos all the time. But it would unfortunately change algorithms and it would fuck us up. But that could be something on uh, on a Patreon stream or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah it'd be that, fun that'd, be, that'd be really great though I, I have a lot of dude, mike and i watched uh, like a wheelhouse uh, the the love of horror movies that we have we have just as much love for the action movies of the 90s and late 80s and 100%. 80s itself uh martial arts movies yeah so yeah great that'd be great great time 
We will one day do that because that'd be a fucking fun video, man. Christopher Sampson, fly me to the moon like that bitch out scramps and says, can we get a wham fest 2023? There could be a John Winston ex-wife dunk tank. <laughs> <laughs> shit. For oh, shit. Uh, for sure. Uh, it, yeah, we'll have to have John sign off on that. But uh, yeah, he, his ex-wife and my ex-wife, you know, uh, actresses could be the, the people that, you, you, you know, you throw balls at the, the bullseye. They d- get dunked into water. Light it up. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. I'm not. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I would do that. I'd throw a fucking fastball, man. That's my friend. Vanessa Katarina says, "Saw you guys were still live, and I was like, great, finally, normal people. Can't wait to meet your faces this October at Scarefest. What did you guys think about Black Mirror with Josh Hartnett and Aaron Paul? Fuck, I didn't even know they're in that. Yeah. Like, uh, to be honest with you, Vanessa, I haven't seen it, so I I can't comment on it. Um, that sounds like a great lineup, though. Josh Hartnett and Aaron Paul. That that sounds like uh, Aaron Paul's like uh, guy that he used to do meth dealing with before he met <laughs> Brian Cranston. I so, watched. Uh, I watched Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. I watched Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible three tonight and aaron paul was in that and he was like the drunk family member or whatever but like yeah dude like i watched like the first season of black mirror and it was fun because but it it was depressing it's one of those shows that's like it's fun to watch and it's wild and crazy kids horror shit but like also it it does not put you in a good mood you know so i think i never really went back to it but yeah i would love to see that josh hartnett episode i'll tell you that but um can't wait to meet you and i'm assuming you're going to be british (laughs) Because you, because uh, the euros, with the euros, yeah, fucking, you might not be, eye. you might be French. <laughs> Eagle eye, David Nangle the third is a dangle. Na- David all Nangle. of the Myers iterations. With no man, <clears throat> I'm not. We can't do Myers. all that. Well, I'm trying to think. What is the Myers uh, iteration? Like all the all all the Michael Myers. Like you had to rank all the Myers, and you had to rank them like the ones that slap, the ones that are badass, to the shitty one. Like that that's would be a, that's a whole fucking video, man. Like you can't do it like right off the bat. I, I yeah I, yeah yeah definitely. I think if you think about how we look at things, you could probably imagine how that would go. But that would be a fun. It's like that wait, I got I got to list. think. Here, take two of these. Little <laughs> yeah. yellow, different. yellow, different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like some people only do things for money anymore, and that's yeah. just sad. Yeah. Uh, Michael Parton says, "I'd love to dance naked with a bunch of dudes." We know, Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah, we man. love that and, about and you. Have George Michael playing freedom, <laughs> freedom, because yeah, I'm free falling. Just dicks wangling out in the world. Brent Ferguson, a wonderful human being, says for sure I'll shoot an email to Mike about how to get things set up for y'all to start streaming hey, man, some games. That. Yeah, I, I told him. Uh, did you tell him? I think I told him, or maybe you did. Uh, he, I wasn't there. Okay, well, he know. said like he knows how to do that. Like for us to do the um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre stuff, so yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, it's it's like been on Jay and mine's to do list for like ten years. We mm-hmm. want to do it. We really do. I think yeah, it'd like, be fun like time. Twitch is uh, Twitch is like the uh, the untapped Wild West. We must be in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just can't figure out exactly yeah, how know, to fit it in. I don't in. know how it works. Uh, Dana Flores, thank you, man. Says I wish I could be like John Winston. No, Dude, you don't we all to. do. Yeah, well, John Winston is is like uh, fucking uh, Doc Holliday from Tombstone. I mean, yeah. we all we all hear his sexy voice and we see what he does with his guns. But you guys are perfect the way that you is. We don't need yeah. eighteen John Winston's. We just need you. So yeah. you be you, Daniel Flores. Goddamn right. Hey, we appreciate you for what you are, man. Yeah, we absolutely do. We appreciate John Winston for what he is. Do that shit fucking matters and it counts. But we appreciate just even the you guys that aren't super chatting like that. You just watch like yeah. that fucking matters. The lurkers. I always feel bad for the lurkers because I know you motherfuckers. Some of you guys are lurkers. You lurk and you watch and you might. I get it. You're like, ah, I want to say something and I won't. We love to hear from all, especially yeah. the lurkers. Hey, man, don't be a weirdo. Express yourself like Madonna. <laughs> Express yourself or yeah. something. Shocker, <laughs> Hell Raider. I like your name. That's fucking dope because you mix the oh, Raiders with Hell Raider. Thumbnail. That's badass. Yeah, that's sick. Do you think we'll ever get to see the alternate endings of Halloween 2018 or ends 2018? Had a knife fight on the lawn of Michael's death. Yeah, dude, that's a big thing. Like from the original Halloween 2018, there's extra footage that we know exists that we've never seen. I I, I just I, dude, think I it don't know. Come out by now, I think it would have already come out. 
I, I don't I don't understand how Blumhouse and David Gordon Green and then like look at all that shit. I really don't. I think like, it's, you would think it would have been on the initial fucking release, right? No, man. Because if they do that, then they're admitting that. I feel like if you look at Halloween Ends, it was so divisive, right? The movie itself was divisive. There was a lot of be like, "What the fuck did you guys do?" They don't want to release a, a bonus ending or an alternate ending or any extra footage because then it would admit that, well, what if they released all that stuff and people were like, well, that was better. Yeah. Why don't you just release that shit? I feel like it's a, a lot of a prideful thing. You know, they don't want to, you know, that again, when you cut things out of a movie, that's a director's choice. You know, it's a creative choice. I feel like the reason why you're never going to see that shit is because if you did see that shit and it was better, look, 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 look at uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? HBO is still like, oh yeah, it's <laughs> that was bullshit. <laughs> and it was fucking way better than what Joss Whedon released. Yeah. yeah I better. think that that whole thing's tainted, but I, I hope to God we do, dude. Maybe one fucking day. Maybe, and, and hopefully they're just like looking at us like, well, in 10 years, we can release it as a special edition and make a Maybe, fuck ton yeah. of money because you know everybody's going to buy it. Hopefully that's it. DJ Graham said, one underrated Adam Sandler movie that never gets talked about and is perfect for Pride Month is Chuck and Larry. Oh, that's Rams great singing movie. in the shower and a half-naked Jessica Biel. Yes, sir! <laughs> dude, uh, yeah, dude. That that movie is incredibly good. Um, I like, I, I, like I, I'm in the middle of watching that movie. I swear to God, I'm in the middle of watching that movie. I'm like, uh, I, I just got to the part where, the, where uh, Rob Schneider, like, he's cross-eyed and he's playing an Asian dude in Canada. He's like, and oh. he was Asian. And he's like, and he's like oh, photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, um, that movie is fucking great because I love it because the fact that, yes, um, being gay, there's nothing wrong with being gay, of course. Uh, but I love it. The, the reason why I love it, it, it's got the I love you, man, kind of vibe to it because – Adam Sandler is the is the, uh, the 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 ultimate bachelor. Like he always gets hot girls, but he's doing something for his friend. In in Kevin James, right? Like he's like I care about your kids. I I, I love you as a friend. I'll I'll do this. There's something really uh, very sweet about the movie. And then yeah. that's how it was with I love you, man. Like I like it's not because uh, it's celebrating one lifestyle or the other. I I feel like it's a friendship movie. At yeah. the end of the day, like these guys are like good friends. They've been through a lot together and they're willing to go the extra mile for one another. And uh, that, Adam, I, I think it's great. I think it's a really cool thing. I, I don't know. And that's the way movies should be, man. It, it shouldn't be about all this. Oh, it's just because it's about gay people or so this. It's about the fucking life experience, you know? Like, I think like sometimes Adam Sandler and them get overlooked because they actually like grown ups for example, was a great yeah. movie about friendship as you get older. Yeah. But everybody just looks at it as this dumbass Adam Sandler movie, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. You know what I mean? Well, um, yeah, like, well, there's a, there, well, there, there's even a part in um, uh, Chuck and Larry where, uh, you know, again, uh, Adam Sandler and Kevin James are pretending to be a homosexual couple and they go to the gay club and uh, Nick Swartzen is trying to be straight and he's not, and he's running a unicorn and he wants to fuck people in the butt. But nobody <laughs> believes it. Uh, but uh, you know, like remember, remember, uh, Kevin James is dressed as an apple, and Adam Sandler is dressed as Dracula because he, you know, bobbing for apples, so it makes sense because they're a gay couple. But that guy, uh, they go outside, and there's these protesters, and they drop the f, you know, the f bomb, and he's like, "What'd you say?" And obviously, Adam Sandler's not gay, right, in the movie. But like, you know, you don't want to hear that shit. Like that's so that's so ignorant. Like people that that still drop the f bomb. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I hate just boy. being for just for being assholes. Like they just want yeah. to say it just to get a reaction. Like, like it's like, are we in a Call of Duty fucking lobby? Like, are you fucking <laughs> yeah. thirteen? You dumbass. Uh, but anyway, we missed we missed Austin's super chat about Scream Eight Ghostface pitch. He's a solo act and has training comparable to Michael Jai White at the beginning of Spawn. Like I, that's what I'm saying, man. What? I want to see. I, I think it would level everything so up. He's a, a military bit. expert that was like let go by the CIA. Well, no, no. Think about it this way: If you had, for some reason, if you could tie in the story and this ghost face, they they promised this a little bit with six, and that's one thing they kind of promised and didn't really do. When he's like, "I'm something different," yeah. like how badass would it be if we got a, a screen movie where Ghostface actually was like Black Ops trained, like he is something different. He he actually he's not going to stumble over top of the fucking uh, the island in the kitchen. Like he's a stone know. cold killer. That's like stone it, cold. Well, I feel like it you know that'd be crazy. That. I mean, I guess, but it kind of removes the whole idea of what, 
like scream is it's a bunch of psychos that are yeah that it's and like if it was a fucking navy seal it's like i watched a bunch of youtube videos and Stu's alive and like and then he became a scream what killer. does it have to do with anything no, I'm I'm saying, no like, but uh, like they could actually use that angle like the the absurdity that that Stu was alive and you have an obsessed fan that's like Stu's alive and then he becomes this fucking killer and he pretends to be you could do something like that. You want to be meta? Get fucking meta. Get get crazy with it. Get crazy with it. I, I just, it, what, regardless of the stew thing or not, like I, I just think that someone who's actually trained that was Ghostface would be pretty scary because we've not seen that before. I actually thought that's what Scream Six was going to do. I really did. I just feel uh, like if you have if you have a trained killer, if it's a fucking Navy SEAL, it removes all believability. Like those guys are trained. I don't know. I'm not saying that they they, they couldn't go insane, but shit dude. did. I don't know if we got to Jeff Hills, but I saw this when I went back for Austin's. He said, thoughts on the casting announcement for Superman Legacy. Do you think James Gunn will be able to salvage the trash heap that DC seems to be in right now? Yeah, I do. I, I, like, um, I didn't, ex like, to be honest, I, I, I thought at first uh, there was no way. But then after watching uh, Guardians 3 and then what he had done with Peacemaker, I feel like uh, James Gunn has got a good idea on how to take the 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 uh the dceu and move it forward um i trust that guy i th i think that james gunn's gonna do very well um yeah i do I, I think he's got what it takes i mean personally mike and i have always said this they made a mistake firing snyder getting rid of the snyder idea and what he was already doing with dc that was fucking stupid i mean you smoked too many dabs from your car your hyundai elantra you, you were you, you motherfuckers were smoking too many of those but yes, I, I definitely feel that James Gunn, uh, he understands what they need, what they want, and what they can deliver. Uh, yes, I, f I feel like he can save the trash heap that DC is going to be in. If they, by the way, and there was a lot of speculation about this, like what's going to, Ezra Miller, they cannot cast Ezra Miller as the Flash. Fuck again. no. Uh, no. And they're like, are they going to do it? No. Fuck they no. They won't. The only thing they're going to keep is that I think they're going to keep Zachary Levi as Captain Marvel or uh, Shazam. I think they're going to keep Zachary Levi and then they might consider Jason Momoa as Aquaman. And that's about it. I think that yeah. that's about it. And it sucks because Gal Gadot. Well, actually, they might keep Gal Gadot. You already have a perfect Wonder Woman. Yeah, I, I think it's weird how, how dude, it's such a mess. That whole thing is such a mess. But I think that, like, in regards to, I do think James Gunn's going to do a good job with it. I do. I do. Yeah. But I think Warner Brothers made the same mistake they always make. Instead of waiting and, and just openly being like, hey, James Gunn's movies start with Superman Legacy. Like, mm -hmm. these are all in the past, from Blue Beetle to The Flash or whatever. They jumped the gun, and they wanted their, their Crothers now. Yeah. And, and they were like, no, this is a James Gunn movie. The Flash is a James Gunn movie, because we wanted to interconnect. And fans are smarter than that. Yeah. So Warner Brothers typically doing the stupidest thing they could possibly do, tied in the Flash failure and what's going to happen with Blue Beetle and all that to James Gunn, rather than making a really fresh start. So, yeah. like, you can always count on Warner Brothers to do the dumbest thing possible, Usually, and that's exactly yeah. what they're doing. But they always you know? have a, they always have a nugget of good times every once in a while. They'll throw a nugget that yeah. works. But I do love the casting, man. That dude, I can't think of his name right now. He was he was the uh, projectionist in Pearl. Um, yeah. Dude, that guy just fucking well, just well, well, I'm, I'm, Superman. He's I'm gonna be a great Superman. I'm moving. I really this think in. so. Yeah, I'm moving this in. I have faith in James Gunn. I feel like James Gunn has got a he he's got enough of um, corporate experience to to implement that and, and, and keep them satisfied, but also originality. Uh, and yeah. I feel like Zack Snyder was one of those guys. And, I, and don't get me wrong, Mike and I love Snyder, but Snyder was always about fuck you. He was fuck you to the studio. I'm going to do my own thing. You got to work, and that is unfortunate. You have to work. Uh, between the, st the studio and the corporate expectations and what your own vision is. And I feel like James Gunn is that guy that's going to lead it forward. Yeah. I think it's going to be great, man. I, I think He's you're going to have a really cool Superman movie uh, to start it off with and then the Batman movie. I think it's going to be great. I agree, man. I think I think James Gunn's going to do a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. uh, Al Ramsey says, luck key grade, lucky grade remake Hitman and actor switch places. What? Luck, I don't... Lucky great 
Lucky well, Gray. I, if you're asking if Hitman should be remade, yes, but I don't think they made a mistake with Timmy Oliphant. Oliphant himself was great. The movie around him it had no, no movie fucking sucked. clue. The movie sucked. Yeah, yeah, it had no clue what to do with the character. But if you did all Oliphant as the Hitman, that mm-hmm. works. Like I agree. That was yeah. Great. yeah. Um, six six six. The devil's fucking god says, "Can't y'all? Uh, can y'all do it? Feeling this, daddies? Yep, we do. Yeah, I don't know what that means, uh, but yeah, we do. No, it I know what time. he's saying. Is like, I got a regret right now. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this. <laughs> what? Let me go in her room. I'm feeling this. Want to take off your clothes? I'm feeling this. Love all things we do. I'm feeling this." faith let go this time your smile fades in the summer that's the best we got but that was fun oh my god <laughs> that's so two crazy weeks, dude. two weeks two yeah, weeks yeah i'm excited Super for you I, I know you've been excited for it for a oh, while i'm yeah, gonna you cry fucking sold your goddamn soul for those tickets 800 so, bucks for three i know tickets, dude. dude i mean you yeah. told me that i was like you dumb son of a bitch faith <laughs> fell short like, you could have done so much time. with that you could have paid off your debts Nothing's better, dude. I'm gonna ball my eyes out. Literally, like my wife and my child are gonna look at me in dismay seats, though, right? as I seats. cry. Yeah, we got decent seats. They're yeah. decent. I'm gonna cry my fucking ass off. I god damn it. I'm so dude, excited. I, wish, about I that. wish I had the same feel for a band. I don't. I, I like I literally don't. Like, I mean, I guess the closest I would have is if I ever get to see Savage Garden, the original Savage Garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I, like I would I, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't cry. I wouldn't. There's nothing I've never seen a band or or been pulled to a band or a music that I'm like I, if I see them I'll actually break down in tears. No. But so, to be fair, but I wouldn't I mean, even do that with a celebrity, dude. I I couldn't I I because at the end of the day I guess my brain is too pragmatic. I'm like these are human beings. They they fucking put on their pants one leg at a time and they write <laughs> things and they do things and they they shit get like we all do and they pee pee in the toilet and they eat sandwiches. Uh, I, I just I, <laughs> I, I got no. I was like, you know, at some point, like one of those guys have had like a bologna sandwich with like no like, mustard. I understand, like, dude. Oh. I'm I. I'm I'm legit like I'm not like that with anything else. It's just Blink One Eight Two. Like I literally I watch every show on YouTube. Like and I honestly like just full frontal male nudity. Like before we do our live streams, I will watch a Blink One Eight Two like live stream, or yeah. like no, it's not a live stream, but I watch their live show and it just it puts me in the good mood, like the fun mood that like you and I I feel like project into the universe yeah. and like it puts up, me yeah. in the right state of mind. So like that and the fact that I've injected that into my kids and my daughters and mm-hmm. like. Dude, when I was fucking like 10 years ago, when I was getting my hair cut, uh, MJ, who's 13 now, was like, you know, uh, uh, super young. And she'd be watching me get my hair cut and she'd be in the waiting room singing, I miss you, dude. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so like, this yeah. is a whole fucking family thing. Ah. So like seeing them together, like in, in concert is going to be such a thing for me. I'm going to be such a wet blanket. I'm going to cry my ass off. And I'm not like that with Film anything yourself. else. Put it on vlog. I will. I'll film, film it. it. Just it's not real if I don't film it, Jay. I got. You I have to film, film it. it. You have to film it and put it yeah. online. I gotta let no people know. Really go. They'll think you're a poser. Yeah, and an asshole. I gotta say that you like Blink One Eight Two now. You they won't really believe don't. it if I'm if I'm telling if I'm lying. They won't believe it. Ed Boy Movie says you guys see Airheads from '94 with Brendan Fraser, Adam Sandler. Dude, that's one of our all time favorites. Yes, we did. She pissed on the tape. She peed <laughs> on the tape. Yeah, I'm gonna cut his head off. No, with your dick. She yeah. didn't do it. The dog peed on the tape, and then she like brings it to the studio. I hated that fucking bitch. I hated that girl, that blonde girl. And she's like, uh, Christina oh, yeah. Applegate, by the way, that was not Christina Applegate. The that blonde was girl, Christina Applegate. No, it was not, dude. I swear to God. I swear to God, it wasn't. I'm telling you the truth. Brendan Fraser's girlfriend in that movie was not Christina Applegate. No, it wasn't. I gotta make sure she was and... hot, but it was not her. I swear to God, it wasn't her. I swear to God, it was. It was not her. Don't you lie to me. That would be great if it was, but it wasn't. It was ah fuck you're right you piece of shit I, I hate know. you I know it wasn't her it was Amy uh, Amy Locaine that's Amy Lo- yeah that's God damn it what I fucking horror. hate it when you're but right. no, um, suck my dick no man uh, I feel like in the same way that you get jealous of me that I can enjoy a horror movie and get scared I don't like I don't like that like I get scared I enjoy like I actually envy you for going to a show and you're that's like. Fair. And you're like, fuck yeah. Like it like it like it imbues you with like Castle Grayskull powers. Like when you watch them live. <laughs> like if That's I fair. 
Like when I go and see a horror movie, Mike's like, dude, I wish I had the same thing where you actually get scared or I get scared. I, get that. I, I get fucking like legit like get scared. And Mike's like, I wish I had that. I wish I had that when you go see a band live. I don't have that. So yeah. No. Like everything dude, pays I'm off you. the end, man. That's all good, man. I, I'm happy for you. I, I hope you I hope you fucking cry. I hope you find Jesus Christ. <laughs> I hope that there's a crucifix that rises up behind you. And you... <laughs> Fuck me, Jesus. Fuck me, Jesus. No, don't say that. Uh... Don't say that. <laughs> No, it's true, man. No, it's true. And that, and that that's legit as fuck. That actually, that's a really good fucking reference because I, I guess I, I I get what you mean. Yeah, it's the yeah, same no. thing. I, I like, and it's not just Mike. My brother is the same way. Like he was like, yeah. I want to go see, like, and I I'm actually fascinated when people that go and they see these bands and they like cry and they get like very emotional into the bands. I'm like, I could never do that. Like I've watched bands before and like I've liked their songs. And like, and I'm like I'm an old man. I, I I look like an old man at a golfing. <laughs> tournament i'm like <laughs> no i get i'm I nodding actually, my head and i wish I, I could be like i'm so involved in that music I, and i can't i totally i totally i actually totally get where you're i, I see exactly what you mean like it, yeah so it's, it's a weird fucking thing for me man like I, honestly like it's not even like being at the live show when like blink came back because it's just I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it except for it's 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 such a it's such a part <laughs> of my personality like it's it's and actually we all grew like up, no, my, we all grew up with the the band i mean i i remember uh you know, but it's your, different your like your poster on the on your bedroom wall that yeah no like two monster. yeah it's just it's just different for me man like that was a, that was a staple of like the first time that like cody discovered blink 182 and i discovered blink 182 with him it was like oh these people are like us they're stupid and they make yeah. ass jokes and they make dumb shit and like i connected with them and they were also cool it was the first time we saw our dumbass personalities reflected to us as something cool and like i put that i projected that with my kids and so like like for instance like when i took mj to see her first concert which was an eve six concert like i bawled miles out then like we're at like some shitty little club watching them and i was crying watching that because just it's i remember my first show and i remember the way it felt and watching your kid experience that and knowing what that feels like it's like the weirdest fucking thing ever man it's the coolest thing ever so i don't know where i'm going all i know is i don't either tonight yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry i made this about me and let's it's get not the, let's get to the end of the road Alan Ramsey says, my my bad luck key is the movie's name. It's a remake. Okay. I don't know what that means. Break that I'll, down for us, Jay. I hope it gets better for you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Alan. I, I don't, don't know, know what that means, you meant, but like, thank you, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that uh, guy, like, you guys want to buy a fucking peach? <laughs> like, if you're, like, leaving a bar, like, and this guy was like, you want to buy a peach? You guys hey, want man, some apples? This has been fun as fuck, though. Yeah, dude. Fun yeah. as fuck. Yes. And again, I, I just I just want to reiterate for one last time that um it's fucking rad as fuck. Um that Jay and I can sit around, talk about movies for three and a half fucking hours, mm -hmm. and you guys all show up to party and hang out. And some of you super chat and some of you are John Winston super chat and like Ooh. but like all of you guys Chat. Without you guys, fucking show wouldn't be happening. This would be a fucking Fugazi, Fugazi, jack off in the bathroom. Wouldn't Love exist. It. So thank you guys. Yeah, we and, love and, this. And if you don't mind, make a little like on the video. If you guys get a chance, just do a little click, click a click. That's all you got to do. A goddamn click. Touch it. Click the goddamn video. <laughs> I right, man, but we really enjoyed ourselves and and really enjoyed interacting with you guys. Thank you guys for giving us a space and a platform to be bullshitting and talk about all this crazy ass dumb shit that nobody, not even a psychologist would listen to without recommending that you need to go on Ritalin and get a life. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you. From yeah. the bottom of our heart. Thank you. Appreciate the time that you give me to hang out with my best friend. Appreciate the time Stop. that you give us to hang out with you guys. Appreciate all this. You guys are the fucking best. Good night, guys. We'll see you guys. We'll see you Patreon Saturday night. Saturday We're night. Even weirder. If you thought this was fucking weird, you wait until Saturday night where I'm going to wrestle. We're gonna, it's going to be uh, like Vanilla Sky. <laughs> and for the rest of you we'll probably see uh uh Wednesday, something next yeah, week. Something but like hey, yeah. fucking love you guys. Thank you all so much. We really see appreciate you, guys. you. Good night. Also, I'm gay. I don't know if anybody knew that, but I want you to know. I want my dog right there. You, Hella. I'm gay. You should know it.